just down the line. Trying to find the section. Big alley -oop. Oh, what a morning it is down here at Merriweather. Day two of the Burton Automotive Pro here at Surfest. 2024 presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. We've also, of course, got the Newcastle Race Course uh, Pro, uh, the women's event. That's going to be fantastic. Haven't seen the women hit the water yet, but there's a good chance that we'll see them out there today. Ronnie Blakey sitting alongside Jess Starling. Jess, what a what an event, firstly. I, I mean, when you think about all the different regions around the world, all those different QS events, the 5,000s, the 3,000s, the, the more minor ones, mm. this is it. This is the biggest of them all. It has the most history. It has the most prestige. And, um, yeah, I think we saw yesterday, you know, the pressure getting to some people yeah. to compete well in this event, but also some people rising up and putting on great performances. I think when it comes to the round one of this event, the jitters are real. You know, it's it's an event that you want to go deep in the drawer and you want to have your name on that wall amongst that list of prestigious surfers who've gone on to win world titles, CT events. So this event has always been the pinnacle QS event. And I think, yeah, this year it's definitely carrying on that legacy. Have you, did you ever get the chance to compete here at, yeah. at Surface? Well, yeah. there you go. And how was it for you? How was that experience? It was amazing. I feel like every heat I had here, I pulled someone who's had CT experience. I think I've had Macy, I had Nikki Van Dyke one year, uh, and Paige Harrop too, actually. So uh, growing up, I watched those girls on tour, so then getting to compete against them here was really cool. So that's huge. And that's what the surfers are, are dealing with again here in 2024. Um, you know, Surface presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. It just still attracts those big names. Obviously, they're, they're all chasing that, that big goal. They want to get themselves to the top end mm. uh, of the QS ranks and get themselves onto those Challenger Series events. But, you know, Jackson Baker competed here the other year when, when he really didn't need to. Um, easy decision for him. It's in his backyard. But mm. uh, the, the victory was the most important win of his life. Yeah, I think if you can win at home, there's nothing quite like that. It's super special and you can definitely tell that. I think last year Jacko won, or no, Joel won last year, the year before. Uh, and it, was, it wasn't just a win for Jacko, it was a win for the community as well. And any time a Novocastrian wins here, you can tell that uh, yeah, it kind of puts energy back throughout the entire community, you know puts a lot of people in the Prince Hotel as well. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, all our competitors out there warming. That looks like Freya Prum out there having a little warm-up session. But let's talk a little bit about yesterday. I, I mean, the conditions were, you know, surprisingly good when we rocked up. Mm. Um, and it was an easy decision to get competition going. Dakota Walters up there. <laughs> rocking some new board artwork. Shout out to Cessna. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, we completed 16 heats in, in the round of 128. Um, we had 32 surfers progressing through to that round of 96. Well, they'll meet those seated surfers. But there were some great little stories uh, and performances unfolding through that opening day of competition, wasn't there? Yeah, there definitely was. Uh, Anna Bay's Eden Hassan actually progressed with 13.83 points, and he had a pretty hard heat. Noah Arkfield, he's looked really dominant through the Filipino uh, Asian QS campaign. So when I saw those two coming up against each other, I knew it was going to be a really stacked heat. But yeah, Eden got the jump on him. Yeah, I love Eden surfing. I mean, he just looks so almost like he was in second gear and he was still, you know, collecting good numbers. Um, but yeah, he's, he's sort of one of those guys, he's, he's not from this particular stretch of coast, but not mm. far away. And uh, I think he, he does, you know, sometimes come down here and compete in those Merriweather club meets, but he, he really does feel at home out here. He um, is actually the reigning Australian junior champion for the under 18 boys too. So I feel like he's found his groove in the last six months or so, and he's really putting some great heats together. This looks like. Macklin Flynn from WA. He's just come off an AVP this weekend too, so everyone just charging to get down here and compete in surface. And, you know, promising signs out there at the moment. Still, you know, head-eye conditions and, and hopefully that, that holds. Um, we've got a pretty promising looking forecast as we, uh, we look forward to uh, what's coming our way this weekend. But, uh, yeah, a fantastic opening day of competitions. Uh, uh, other locals to progress through yesterday. We had uh, Caves Beach, Geordie Liakman, uh, Connor Lee, Walter Hyatt, Felix Burns, and Josh Stretton 
jumping on through to that round of 96. So congratulations to them. Look forward to seeing them compete. But we are going to uh, take a quick break here and we'll be back with the morning show in just a moment. Welcome to Sydney. A place to feel alive. To feel free. Come feel it all and feel new. Adam thought he'd never get Sarah camping. How wrong you were, Adam. Racecourse is not just a place to watch the horses thunder. It brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins. Newcastle Racecourse, home is where the track is. Beautiful morning. A beautiful morning down here at Merriweather, the home of Surfest 2024, presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. Jackson Dorian making his way out of the water there after a nice little uh, warm-up session. And uh, now we can see uh, another one of our competitors just limbering up down here this morning. But yeah, great, great weather, beautiful conditions. And uh, yeah, amazing there to uh, see our competitors out there warming up, Jess. And uh, looking forward to another big day of competition. Uh, but we, we do want to have a look at some of the highlight moments that we witnessed unfold yesterday. I mean, when I think about what we witnessed and all the surfing that we saw, there, there is one person that stands out for me and uh, I think you know who that is. Yeah, definitely. It's Huey Vaughan and it's for this surfing like this yesterday. He got himself an 8.9 for an air and then he just managed to kind of flow his way through this heat, continually finding better and better scores the more he went on. So he got this wave pretty early on in the heat uh, and I don't know, I feel like he's really showing his grommet excitement getting <laughs> hopping all the way to the shore and jumping off on the sand and that one but this is the wave that was amazing running oh man he just he's so on um you can tell competitively he he loves this game um but he, he has amazing talent uh, as well he just there's not really too uh, too much that he can't do he's good in solid conditions but this was the moment that kind of uh, we went wow we're in for a big exciting day of competition and then the uh, the wind kind of picked up, the conditions sort of laid down a little bit and we didn't see anything else like it. We... <laughs> so, yeah. So he built this anticipation up, but um, yeah, he did steal the show. Huey, it's for surfing like that last year that got him a semi-finals in this event. Joel ended up winning, so maybe a little bit of a bittersweet moment there for Huey. So he's looking fired up and ready to take the win this year. Maybe he's going to try and one-up his big brother. Yeah, currently sitting 60th on the, the regional rankings. Um, but yeah, he, his surfing's growing uh, as he is. Mm. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a, another good showing for from him this year here at, at Merriweather Beach. But yeah, just um, just love the, the weapons that he has and, and what he can do. He just explodes out of nothing. Another highlight I want to talk about is 
the amount of talent we're seeing coming from this man here. This is Jackson Dorian, but we're going to come back to that because the Japanese surfers, this is the record number of Japanese surfers we've ever had in the Japanese, uh, in the surf estuary, I should say. And I think it's because of, I mean, the Olympics, Kanoa, Amuro, Japan is kind of taking off at the moment. Yeah, for sure. Look, um, oh, I think it's also, uh, off the, like you said, off the back of the Olympics, but you know, not just here at, at Surfest, you know, there's been a, a lot of uh, Japanese competitors coming out to, to test themselves in the Australian Junior events, mm -hmm. uh, which is fantastic to see. They, our events typically have always had a bit of an international flavour to them. I, I think that, you know, Australia's a good place to be through that um, sort of summer competitive period um, for the, those junior contests. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great place to come and test yourself and, and bring your level up because there's a, yeah. a pretty deep talent pool here in Oz. I think over the years as well, we see a lot of Japanese people even make the move here uh, and finish out some of their schooling years here just to get better uh, at surfing. But here's Jackson Dorian. This guy has come pretty much halfway across the world to surf in this event. Love it. Huge fan of Jackson's. Uh, was you know His dad was one of my favorite surfers growing up. Uh, still absolutely ripping Shane and um, he's traveling with his mum Lisa and he just is you know a, a really well-rounded surfer I mean he looks really comfortable in these beach break conditions but you throw him in the lineup at, at pipe and, and backdoor and he'll put on a show there too. Yeah he's definitely not scared let's just say that he will charge but I think when you your dad is Shane Dorian you know you're gonna charge <laughs> but yeah this performance he put on was amazing. He has pulled a bit of a harder heat going into that next round of 96 with uh, Dane Henry who pretty much set Instagram alight a couple weeks ago with two of the biggest airs we've seen in quite some time coming out of the Australian Junior Region. Yeah, then uh, you know, the, when the conditions kind of get a, a little marginal uh, you do see the scores all compressed in a, a, a pretty tight scale. A lot of four point rides, a lot of five point rides. Yesterday afternoon we had a, a really uh, close one. Um, Lenny Morrell was uh, eliminated from the contest by David Perry and, and Riley Munro. And uh, Ock and I were watching this one unfold. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of sections. And uh, yeah, we saw this one from Lenny, and you know, it was full commitment. He put it up there, but Ock and I were kind of debating where that score was going to go because he didn't really tee off the way he would have liked, probably. Like in a free surf session, you know, you're sort of saying to yourself, that, that's kind of a nothing turn. And I think that's what, you know, the panel saw as well. Um, mm. You know, it was committed. He gave it a go, but like ultimately fell uh, a little bit short of the, I think the 4.3 he was chasing. Yeah, I think I missed that last here of the day, but the turn was amazing in the section. It's a really hard place to land that turn, but you could tell by his body language too. I think he knew it wasn't enough either. It was a really critical turn, but yeah, I think these guys have surfed so many heats now, they know what scores feel like. And yeah, I definitely think he pulled off that way of going. It didn't feel like the 497 I needed. Yeah, I think um, too, you, you know, you, for the most part, you know, when the waves are pretty good, you know, you can kind of almost, a lot of the time you can you know, put a, a point in the differential. And, and then when you've got a lot of similar kind of smaller waves and guys are chipping away at it, mm. you know, it becomes like so, so small yeah. the difference in, in the rides and the judges really have their work cut out but I think ultimately you know they still want to see the commitment they want to see the big turns and uh, yeah if you if you're sort of just chipping away and, and groveling your way through those those smaller rides then you're probably not going to score too big um, real characters in the mix mm. always we spoke to a couple of them yesterday but uh, one of the local groms Kate Kelly youngest surfer in the draw he had a, a great performance yesterday. Kind of started really strong, made, made it sort of nervous for himself and for his family, probably. But um, yeah, he ended up getting the job done, young Kate. Yeah, 12 years old, just goes to school up the road here. And he has to be one of the biggest personalities that we have in this event. He's quite possibly one of the funniest young Groms. If you run into him, you know you're going to have a pretty great chat with Kate. And not only that, he's an incredible young surfer too, and he's looking really comfortable at home here. Yeah, he's been uh, getting some competitive success recently. Won the Sandbar Cadet Cup under 14's division. Uh, his two wave total of 8.83 um, was enough to see him through with uh, Jimmy Wallace. So uh, yeah, 
good performance from Cade and, and he'll want to keep the ball rolling. But, you know, this event for the, uh, the locals, it always inspires a, a good showing. Um, you mentioned it before, you know, to win at home, that's special. And, and even for a 12-year-old to progress through a heat in a major qualifying series event, that's massive. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, he's probably coming into this event thinking all of my idols have surfed in this event and maybe even won this event. So he's just really trying to, I think, build some momentum. But he'll be one of those surfers that will keep coming back each year. And I feel like every time Surf Surfest rolls around, we'll see him as a new surfer better and better each year. He's, he's kind of the kid that you, you want to see get the win when he's progressing so that you can have a chat to him. Oh, afterwards. absolutely. You want, you want the post heat interviews absolutely. with Kelly. Absolutely. Well, uh, it's a beautiful morning here. We are going to take a, a quick break. We've got a, a bit more coming on the morning show, so don't go anywhere. The race course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder. It brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins. Newcastle Racecourse. Home is where the track is. Welcome to Sydney. Upbeat. Downbeat. Feel its heartbeat. Open spaces. Open arms. A place to feel alive. To feel free. Come feel it all. And feel new. Adam has taken a few losses at work this week. A loss out here, a little easier to take. Welcome back. We always love our time here in the city of Newcastle. It's absolutely awesome. And uh, Surfest, it's not just this week. This is uh, really like a festival of surfing, if you will, that's been running for, uh, you know, through February, really, and into March. But if we look back on the competitive schedule, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, given the opportunity to young surfers to test themselves, so that we had the Reflections Cadet Cup up at Bonnie Hills, uh, great performances there from you know, a number of, of rising stars, but uh, in particular, Coco Woolley and, and Marley Adam, um, they look good. Young Maverick McGugan, uh, a grom yeah. from the Northern Beaches, uh, stepping up in a big way. But, you know, I, I like it. It's sort of the, the, the start, if you will, of the Australian surfing competitive season. And we've, you know, obviously had some, some major contests as well. But, you know, if you think... Um, about what else has unfolded. We had the uh, the Burton Automotive Pro Junior at Barubi Beach. Yes, this this was off the back of the Burton Automotive uh, Port Stephens Pro. And uh, I just felt like everyone was fired up for action here. It was Sierra Kerr and Jarvis Earl getting the win here. And Jarvis looked like he was coming in for a bit of redemption because he kind of got pipped by Geordie Lawler in the semi-finals. So, yeah, he came in with a with a point to prove and came away with the win. And Sierra got two wins in one weekend at this event. Yeah, amazing. She's uh, she's on some mad roll at the moment. Just uh, it's gonna have to buy a place just to put some trophies in it. <laughs> uh, but this is, um, you know, just the ultimate warm up. I, I think for for what we have here at Surface this year, a lot of the, the competitors will be uh, on show uh, again this week, and, and you just know that they're. They're sharp, they're ready to go, they'll 
you know, be pretty comfortable with that jersey on and, and hopefully we'll see some surfing like that. Oh, I hope so. I mean, Sierra Kerr has actually won the last five events she's competed in. Unbelievable. So is this six? Yeah. I would love to see this as six. She's going to be hard to stop. Just so much uh, confidence at the moment. And, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, even though she's sort of here competing in these regional events, these pro juniors and whatnot, she's she's with that group of yeah. women on the uh, the CT. She's sort of classed in with them and, and she'll be there at some stage. Yeah, she's already world class without even being there. It's just She's just so good and she's definitely one of my favourite surfers to watch. But... Another event in this festival of surfing was the Sandbar Cadet Cup, uh, which was presented by Ocean and Earth and Poppy O'Reilly won the under 16 girls and she was the first back-to-back -back winner to do so since Macy Callahan. Wow. So, uh, yeah, some, some big performances again. S some repeat performances as well. We mentioned some of the star performers uh, from the Reflections Cadet Cup. Uh, they turned up again and were victorious here at the Sandbar Cadet Cup. Uh, Marley Adam, uh, Maverick McGugan again, Coco Woolley, um, but yeah, Ben Z Zanata Cray, he uh, had a victory in the under 16s, Poppy O'Reilly, um, for yeah, like you said, first back-to-back -back winner, it's so impressive uh, to see, and uh, I think we've got some emerging stars there, no doubt. It's just one of those events where it's really pushing the the future of our surfing but so is this cup too the evolution chattery charity cup uh, which was at merriweather and it kind of looks like a really fun event ronnie it raises money for nominated charities through the team surfing event which anything for charity is going to be a pretty amazing thing for sure and uh this year it was for the uh hope in a suitcase group a volunteer run organization who uh, really do a great work in the, the foster care space setting off young kids, uh, living in foster care, uh, giving them things that they need in life, things that will basically lift their spirits and put a smile on their face. So that's fantastic. The event title was actually won by the uh, Lake Mac Lifeguards. Uh, almost $90,000 was raised. That's going to help 500 children. So a big shout out to the Evolution Charity Cup. And uh, yeah, getting it done for a fantastic cause. And then there's the Surfers Indigenous Classic. Again, here at the amazing Merriweather Beach, and I love this event. It always supports the uh, community of regional New South Wales and the Indigenous community, uh, and uh, it's been a really integral part of Surfest over 26 years. It sure has. Some amazing talent in the mix too, and um, you know, I just feel like there's just always a great energy around these contests, uh, a real positive vibe, and some, you know, look at that. That's a high quality surfing. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how some of these competitors fare in the, the main event. But yeah, it's just been a, a, a great ramp up. It's been warming up. Uh, yesterday, the, the performance levels across some of the heats was, you know, the, the kind of surfing that you could see potentially uh, on a finals day down here at Merriweather. But we've got to find out what's going down here at Surfest 2024, presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. And, and that update's not too far away, so stay with us. craving to feel new again, to see something new that will blow our minds, or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales, a place to feel free, to feel alive, and most of all, to feel new again. Maddie's last night's sleep was spent trying to look up relaxing wave sounds. Tonight's actual wave sounds. Holidays! Iron Man! Outdoors! Iron Man! Whoa! Uber! Suspension! Lights! Room for a camping <laughs> recovery gear! Oh. Oh. Under Iron Man, mate! Hang the Hunter Iron Man! <laughs> can't do two things at once, oh. I Wait!
effortlessly refreshing. Byron Bay Brewery Premium Lager. Go with it. Welcome back, we're loving life. We're a little bit short on sleep. Um, <laughs> there's just so much happening in the surfing world at the moment. Um, the event over there in Portugal, the Championship Tour event was unfolding uh, last night. Uh, some big performances and some shock losses, some big names falling out of the mix. Uh, John John lost out to uh, Jake Marshall. But yeah, it was uh, a lot of fun to watch and they had some pretty quality conditions, but um, you, you needed some rest. Yes. I did need some rest. I, I made the big drive through the night to be here. That's how important this event is. And yeah, came straight from the ABB through the night because I was not passing up the opportunity to be here and talk about the Surfest and commentate this event. But I feel like if you're a surf fan, this is the best time of year. There's so much going on. Mate, there's 24 hours of, of professional surfing that you can watch unfold, starting with Surfest, of course. That's where everyone starts. Um, but then straight into to Portugal through the evening and those you know, last few heats were only wrapping up early this morning. So, you know, you can go all the way. I almost did uh, last night. So <laughs> we'll see how we go today. But we're going to make a, a call and, and see what we get underway. Likely we'll have the women's event kicking off on day two of Surfest 2024 presented by Reflections Holiday Park. So check back in at 8 a.m. and we'll look to get that first heat in the water.
tries down the line. Trying to find the section. Oh. Big alley -oop. Welcome back to the show, day two of Surface 2024, presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. Yesterday, we uh, got the Burton Automotive Pro underway, big performances. No one went bigger than Huey Vaughan. Uh, the women are going to get their chance this morning to, to blow our minds as we step now into the Newcastle Racecourse Pro. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we've much like the, the men's event, there's an incredible honour roll, world champs, multiple winners. Uh, a lot of the winners have gone on, obviously, to, to crack the championship tour, which is fantastic. And uh, who knows, we might reveal one of those young stars in the uh, opening round here, the lower seeds hitting the water in this uh, round of 64. Ronnie Blakey sitting alongside Jess Starling. He's going to be talking through this first heat with us. Uh, Jess, this is going to be fun. This is a, a good little lineup to kick us off. Yeah, I... Um I'm not going to lie to you, when I heard that the women were kicking us off today, I got very excited, very antsy. I love when the women hit the lineup. Uh, but yeah, we're going to start with a really cool heat. I think it's uh, Jade Magni, and she's from France, but she has come to Australia alongside Justin Bacret, and they've com been competing through our entire Australian regional series. And it's been fun having them on board. And uh, I think it's been really challenging for us Australians and now the Asian region as well because we're getting that taste of the European fire and uh, anyone who's going to qualify for the Challenger Series needs to know how to compete against Europeans. So it's a feather in our cap just as much as it is in theirs. So, yeah, yeah I think she's been pretty dominant. So I'm pretty excited to see what she does in this heat for sure. I back that. I mean, we, we tend to come at it from a... A pretty pig-headed point of view. <laughs> We're like, oh, our, our uh, Australia, uh, Australia Oceania region is so strong. People want to come here and test themselves against us. But in actual fact, we saw it through the uh, Asian uh, qualifiers, which you were a, a big part of. Mm. Um, the level uh, of the com uh, competitors, um, you know, uh, for the, from the Philippines and, and Japan, uh, mainly for me, um, has lifted. Mm. Um, so I, I really think we're getting as much from... Uh, their presence in these draws as we are. So this is, you know, a, a big opportunity to test yourself against an, an international field, even though this is a, an event in our region. Um, and, you know, you, you want to wrestle some points away from these people. You want to yeah. you want to keep them here at home because it's important for these youngsters to, to get through some heats, build that seed, mm -hmm. get themselves back in these major qualifying series events next year. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like having these co-sanctioned events has honestly been the best thing that's happened to both the oceanic and asian region i think there's definitely an unspoken rivalry between the two regions 100 percent. when you pull a heat with a japanese surfer an indonesian a filipino all you want to do is get take the win home for your fellow australians or oceanic friends you know from New Zealand, it just feels like, especially if it's in Australia, you want to defend your region yeah, and be. You want like, to defend the points. They're our points. Yes. And we want to keep them right here. Exactly. <laughs> so there's definitely unspoken tension uh, when you pull heats against the other region. And so, Jessica Iken, she is the lone Australian this heat. She's from the Gold Coast, and she's a really talented surfer. We see the boys as Alistair Cooper, look like Joel Marlin and Coral Durant as well. So. Yeah, some of Australia's finest right there. Right, I, I love it. There was a, a real energy in the lineup today. Um, you know, I think conditions are better again than what they were yesterday Definitely. morning. Uh, Kai's King got absolutely barreled, thread, <laughs> threaded a pit on his backhand through the comp zone. So some real promising signs, but a great lineup here. And it looks like we're going to see Isabel Higgs try and get into this one. Doesn't quite get, get over the ledge there. Yeah, I um, I watched that wave of Caius as well, and I was going, "What? You know, you watch. We're watching everyone just belt these beautiful lefts and rights, and then Caius managed to find himself this perfect barrel, and then come and hit this really gnarly end section." I was like, "If that was a heat, that that's a good score. That's definitely a keeper." <laughs> I was just, I think it's going to be a great day of surfing if if Caius King can find one of those. Who else can? Oh. Awesome. I mean, as a commentator, there is those days that you rock up and you, you're like, nah, happy to be sitting in the booth calling this <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
you know, yesterday was a bit like that in the yeah. afternoon. I was, yep. I was pretty comfortable sitting watching other people <laughs> out there trying to chase down waves. And then when you, you see it, you know, absolutely throbbing with swell and it's, you know, dove quadruple overhead. Yeah. They can kind of have those days yep. too. But mornings like this where you're sitting at Merriweather and, you know, you're sipping your morning coffee and you're just watching, you know, the likes of Kai's King getting barreled across mm-hmm. the, the lineup. They're, they're kind of, they're long mornings. They are, especially, this is my first year in not compete, being here and not competing in this event. And But I love talking about surfing, obviously, but I definitely had a bit of FOMO this morning. I was like, wow, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll be back next year. But oh, <laughs> I was yeah. just like, I was watching those waves and watching all the girls just dominate out there as well. I was... Do both. Do both. Yeah. Uh, your sister has in the past. I've yep. worked with her on events that she's competed and done well in and she's like running out of the lineup, you know, getting changed quickly, coming yeah. into the booth, calling the next yep. heat. We don't really let her uh, change up her, her roster too much. No, you know, no. We, we we hold her to account. Yeah, we, we did it through the Asian region last year. We I was so grateful actually that WSL would let us compete because when we got the call up to go to India, I was like, there's no way I'm going to India and not surfing a heat. So... Yeah, I think, um, yeah, maybe I should try and make it happen in the home country. Defend the points a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We're, we're grateful to have you and, and your sister calling uh, events uh, of this size and, and especially through these earlier rounds because um, the two of you are really responsible for shedding a light on women's surfing. Mm-hmm. Um, the evolution of the performance, the features on Murmur are, are incredible. Um, what's some of the, the stuff we can... I know you've been very busy, so very. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if things have maybe slowed down a little bit as far as our uploads go, but what can we look forward to in the coming months? So Murma, as busy as I've been, Murma's been just as busy, but I think busy's better than being bored. Uh, and Murma, I'll write that down. I'm yes. writing that down. Yes. I'm going to stick that to the fridge. We are, we're working on a few different segments, but I kind of... I just want to tell women in the industry stories. So we're working on a segment called Industry Insights where we just want to do sit-down pieces and talk to not only surfers but um, women in the media industry as well because I think these days it's so important to be more than just a surfer. Mm. You have to be so across all the marketing, all the social media. You have to be able to talk to a camera. Uh, So we really want to try and convey that a little bit more in the next coming months because I think if that next generation can get onto stuff like that now, I mean, it's just... The more, the more feathers in your cap, the more your sponsors are going to love you. And, yeah, I think the more, I don't know, work you're going to get done. And surfing's one part of it, but there's a massive other part to it now too. So we're trying to convey that. And maybe a, maybe we're branching out to other sports too. Oh, which that is sounds cool. pretty exciting. Yes, in that the same That sounds really realm. cool. So, um, yeah, skateboarders and snowboarders, watch out. We are, we are coming for you. That's so good. How's the feedback from these uh, young, aspiring women um, to to you and True um, in relation to some of the features that you drop and and just the work that you're doing? Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I've got the opportunity to work for some other brands as well so that my writing can get on a bigger scale. Um, And I think that only benefits Murma and the women who are in the lineup at the moment. But... Yeah, I felt really lucky that I've been able to, not so much me just by myself, but be a, a bit of a voice for the women, um, especially my generation, because there's obviously the stars of the show right now, you know, your Molly Picklands, your Kate oh, Sinners, yeah. Betty Lou's, like they are incredible leading the pack. But like we see today in the surface and all these competitors, there is so many more stars. So trying to be the voice for these guys as well. and. Um, give these guys a platform where they can feel appreciated and seen and heard. Um, you know, there's so many amazing stories. And all these girls who, well, women, I should say, who are competing in this event, they work so hard to get here. And then even in the off season, they're doing full-time uni degrees. And I know I was talking to Sage Goldsbury the other day and she was like, I'm studying communications. I want to awesome. get into commentary, journalism. You know, there's so many amazing women out there so the feedback's been great but i feel like i'm only just scratching the surface to be honest with you it's so cool i've i've used the site to to do homework on competitors myself um when i'm calling heat so i love it because you know that 
there's a, a lot of untold stories in this space and yes. uh, you guys are doing a great job as Thank we you. see now right in this one right through to the inside wow that's a, a committed finish there right onto the dry sand uh, impressive stuff from the surfer in blue Isabel Higgs you know it's you know it's kind of a part of the the completion of your ride nice cutback to get started but you know you, you want to you actually want to finish on the sand if you, you go to the trouble of riding this wave through those dead yeah. sections. I mean, if the opportunity's there, it absolutely has to be capitalised on. And yeah, Isabel did a beautiful job with that. I mean, there was, there was more points on that wave, so you may as well make the most of it and <laughs> capitalise. It's, it's funny because you, um, you know, for me, I've, I've even asked the head judge before, I, I've you know, like at Bells Beach or Margaret River, for example, like really heavy end sections, a shore break at mm. Bells, the, the oh, reef. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're kind of like, if a surfer swung and just did that one turn on that inside section, it wouldn't be really worth anything yeah. um, in the context of, you know, what unfolds on the outside. But it's, it's all about the completion of the ride and, mm. you know, basically leaving nothing on that, that ride. And I thought Isabella did really well there We've, we saw a lot of people committing to that that nothing kind of section on the shore break that's just mm. stepped out and ugly mm. and the reason that they want to get that done is is just to really clean up the the wave start to finish and uh, just adds to the flow but I, I like the way that this board's sitting on the water this morning it's just cutting nicely holding good speed I thought it was a pretty decent ride yeah Isabel representing Okanui as well which I feel like is always been such a relevant brand but in the recent years definitely making an absolute comeback but i mean these guys are performers right and so she wanted to put on the best show for us and the judges and i think they're not usually the sections you probably hit in the free surf but nah. you see everyone level up and uh be a little bit more committed in the comps and uh, as we see kyla rennie's coming up in that next heat so this is exciting. Some names that I haven't seen before. That's cool. We, we, yeah. And you do get that um, in the, the regional QS events because for, for a lot of the competitors, it's their first shot at, at an event of this scale. Mm. Um, You've you got to start somewhere, so yeah. you, you do have to test yourself. I, I think you know, the chances of someone getting through two finals day from the, the first round and actually getting themselves in a position to qualify it's probably unrealistic mm -hmm. um, it's the the seated surfers that have probably gathered just enough points with a win to potentially um, jump up into the, the the qualification pitcher but um, yeah it's it's more about experience building a seed testing yourself against you know more experienced more formidable uh, formidable opponents on the outside here We've got Jessica Eichen up at the moment. Just getting a little hung up there. Trying to hang on for the finish. Yeah. Can't quite do it. A little bit on her back foot. I feel like she committed beautifully to that turn and then maybe second-guessed herself a little bit. But I love the approach to this wave. You know, she was really deep off the bottom but sat too much on that back hip. But Jessica is one of the standouts. I see her out snapper rocks a lot and she's got a really strong backhand. So I'd love to see her trying to maybe use that at, to her advantage out here because in my opinion that is definitely her strong point mm. uh so maybe might go down the beach a little bit try and get a few of those rides we saw plenty of free surfers opting to surf that right rip bowl bank this morning there's definitely waves there um and some you know we spoke about this yesterday sometimes breaking away from the pack it can be a bit of a daunting decision but it can also pay off so much by the end of the heat and in my opinion this heat, this round is the most important round. Of course, when you get to the quarters, semifinals, it means so much to get the extra points. But this is the scariest. This is the most daunting round for sure. So I feel like these are the rounds that you need to be smart and use your strengths, not shy away from them. It's an interesting one too because, um, you know, favourites in the event, established pros... Early rounds are daunting because if you lose out, you, you haven't lived up to people's expectations mm. uh, and your own. Yes. Um, for newcomers, there's a huge opportunity to, to kind of put your, your name up in lights. Yeah. Um, we saw that with Kate Kelly yesterday. Some of those, you know, the, the groms in the mix. Yeah. You know, it's, you make a couple of heats in a major event as a 12-year-old. 
people are going to be talking. Um, so Absolutely. you don't need to go on and win the contest. That's what, what this experience is about for some of these uh, newcomers to the, uh, the draw. I remember my first year in Surfest and I would have been 16 maybe. And at the same time, they had a pro junior on here. And it was one of those events where my dad was said to me, why don't you just throw your, your name in the draw? You're going to be surfing in the pro junior anyway. You'll be down here. Get some experience. Your sister's in it. You can rely on her. Um, you might beat her. Yeah, you might beat her. And I still think that was this beach has been one of the pivotal moments for me to be like, this is what I want to do for a career. And I'm so glad that that year, even though I was a junior and probably didn't do as well as what I wanted, I think I made one round, but it was that experience that gave me the confidence to come back stronger the year after. So... <sighs> I feel like even, you know, Isabel Hicks, she's still a junior, but mm -hmm. the experience in these big events, it's it's priceless. Yeah, I, I would have a guess that probably the average age of competitors in uh, the qualifying series events is, is actually coming down. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're seeing surfers at a younger age take a chance on... on potentially getting themselves onto the Challenger Series. We've mm. seen some real uh, phenoms, especially uh, in the, the women's division uh, the past couple of seasons, tackling the Challenger Series and, and having some real success. This was the French lady that was Jade on that last wave. I feel like she's been a little bit quiet in this heat. She's usually one of those uh, bulldog almost competitors that she just goes out there and gets the job done early on in the heat and then builds from there. So. It's a, a little un, different different heat strategy to what I've seen from Jade in the previous events. Isabel currently holding down first place. She's trying to make her other competitors' lives harder by dropping that 1.57. But yeah, I think no one's no one's built their ribbon rhythm in this heat so far. Mm. Jade's definitely been a lot more quiet than what I was what I've seen from her. Um, so I think she'll definitely start to build as we go on because. Each heat, I've commentated Jade. She's at least had a pair of sixes in her lineup. Okay. Well, uh, you know, we've been talking about just the, the magic of this event. One of the things that I, I love about this contest, and I, I think it's just such a, a unique sort of uh, tact that Warren Smith and the Surface team have had, is the crowdfunding component to the, the women's event. It's, it's genius, and it, it's something that the entire community gets behind. Um, sometimes close to a, a hundred local businesses mm. getting behind this contest and it's really cool how they come up with the, the naming rights sponsor. It's really cool. It's basically, they pull a name out of the hat, if I'm right. Out of the barrel. Out of the barrel, which I think is just amazing. I, I haven't seen an event do it anywhere else in the world, I don't think. And nah. I was lucky enough to go to the, uh, the brand sponsors dinner last night and um, talk to a few people there and they even... Uh, match each brand up with a surfer. So if you've... That's so cool. If you're a part of this event, you get matched to a surfer and as a part of being in partnership with this, if your surfer wins, you actually make money back. So I thought that was really cool. I was looking into that last night. So it's, um, it's called the surfer draw. So say you're... Let's say, for example, Ronnie, you're matched up with Safi Betty and Sappy Betty wins the event, you get to take home $5,000. That is so cool. And your gets to take home $5,000. If she gets second, it's $3,000. And third or fourth is $1,900. So it's, it's almost just as exciting for these brands as well. It is. And a lot of the local businesses here, you know, they, they want to get behind this event, but, but do they have the financial clout to front up the, the money that it takes to sponsor yeah. the women's uh, event as a whole by themselves. No, they don't. So mm. they, they make the contribution that they're, they're able to. As you said, all those names go in a barrel and, and then obviously the, the business that's drawn out is the naming rights sponsor. And this year, it's Newcastle Race Course. Um, the Women's Pro, really glad to have them involved. And if you're down here at Merriweather, visit the Newcastle Race Course stall and check out uh, local artist Mitch Rev's life-size horse artwork and end of the draw to win a race day restaurant voucher. But uh, yeah, Mitch is a great local artist, done a lot of mural work at, around Newcastle. And um, yeah, again, congratulations to them and congratulations to everyone who got behind that crowdfunding effort. It's yeah. huge and it means a lot to these young women. I feel like as role, Ronnie, I don't know about you, but 
for me personally, I feel like the way that Warren and Surfest have structured the event and the partnership sponsorship component of this event, I think it's the future of surfing and surf events. I think local is where it's at. And if, especially with these regional series, I just think it's so cool to include the entire community, all the businesses, because not only does an event coming to your hometown add to the community already, but include all the local businesses. There's going to be so much more, I feel like, love and support around the event too. Yeah. Well, this is a massive sporting city. Um, it is big on sport. It gets behind it. It turns up in droves to get behind the, the Newcastle Knights, for example. Yeah. Finals day down here uh, and, you know, even midweek, you know, it does pull crowds and especially when there's a hometown hero and they have a castrian in the draw, they are, they're down here in force. But yeah, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm with you. I think it's, it's really unique. I think it, you know, potentially it is the future, you know, uh, and it's, uh, it's fantastic that everyone gets an opportunity to mm. potentially be drawn out of that barrel. And, and uh, yeah, the, being assigned to a surfer is just a really smart idea too yeah. because suddenly you've, you've got people kind of going, okay, we've got, uh, you know, we've got one of the top seeds in yeah. the mix. She's a really good chance. You're going to come down here and cheer, cheer them on. Here we go. This is Jessica Eichen on the back end trying to hang on to the finish on this one. Doesn't quite get to that shore break section, but she, uh, she does probably put together her best ride so far. I would call that potentially the best way of the heat too. This is what I was talking about earlier with Jess's backhand. She spends a lot of time on right-hand point breaks, and it's definitely her strong point. This second turn here is beautiful. Timed it really nicely, and then, yeah, almost lost it, but regained. I think that's the best wave I've seen in this heat, and it is. It's a 3.27, so now Jade is in a, a spot that I didn't see her in. She's in third, needing a 2.58. Uh, she has second priority, too, so... Tramie trying to make a little bit of room away from Isabel, but Isabel's just working her way down the lineup right now and paddled pretty hard for that, so maybe a priority change there. Looks looks too like the, the three competitors out there are still kind of trying to work out where this predominant scoring opportunity lies in this lineup. Uh, I think this morning, you know, you, you roughly got around, you know, 60 to 100 competitors without jerseys on jostling for waves and and as a warm-up session you're just out there trying to get anything to kind yeah. of get grounded on your equipment and um hopefully throw down a couple of turns but then when the heat starts and that that lineup's kind of vacated finding your place in it can can kind of be a little bit of a mystery like you go from like looking for any sort of section to suddenly trying to uh, figure out where you're going to plonk yourself during your heat and try and pick up a couple of good scores. I feel like as well yesterday we saw the banks shift throughout the day and throughout the tides so it could be one of those heats as well where maybe it is shifting. Um, we saw you know Huey he went from starting the heat to the left of the screen on the left bank and then made his way down to the right and got that 8.9 so I feel like the surfers have to be really reactive out here to the way the tide changes the banks and changes which one is the predominant bank. Uh, as we see two surfers up, so here we go, Jade needs a 166 to make it through this heat. Beautiful carve. Oh, ran out of steam. Just didn't have the speed to pull that turn down. And uh, then on the outside, Isabel Higgs. Big opportunity for her here. If she can get rid of this 1.93, uh, she is a, a Going to put a little bit more distance between herself and her rivals here. Nice little end section hit. One minute to go here. I liked that last wave from Isabel. That turn was really stylish. Her back knee dropped and was definitely, I feel like, one of the best turns we've seen her do in this heat. And she's not crumbling under pressure, which is the best thing as well. Yeah, so waiting on that number to come through. 2.83. It's one of her best. And uh, now the requirement for Jessica, 2.56. She'd be happy to hang on to second spot at the moment, though. But she's got to watch out for Jade, who doesn't need a whole lot, just a three-point ride. And she's up at the moment. Nice little hit there. Did she do enough work? Tricky there, because you want to like keep surfing and adding extras, but you could see the rocks kind yeah. of starting to come out of the water. You know, a 2.58 isn't a big score, so it's one of those ones where do you push hard and 
potentially fall or do you hold back and make sure you get the score and surf to it? But it's looking like she didn't get it. It was a 1.97. Now needs a 2.48, but I feel like time, yeah, too little too late, unfortunately. Isabel finishing off that right there, but yeah, I feel like the ladies, like you said, just trying to find their feet out there this morning. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think probably one of those heats where you've got you know, your, your support crew on the beach just waving like maniacs trying to guide you around to the, <laughs> the line-up, trying to steer you around because they can see where the, the predominant scoring opportunity is. And, you know, the, the benefactors of all that chaos is usually the surface in the second heat. So I expect that we're going to see some better numbers when we get the second heat underway. But it's uh, an early victory for Isabel Higgs. Uh, stay with us. We're going to bring Oki in next. Welcome to Sydney. A place to feel alive. To feel free. Come feel it all and feel new. Adam thought he'd never get Sarah camping. How wrong you were, Adam. Wait! course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder it brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins Newcastle race course home is where the track is welcome back to the show there's the winner of the first heat of the morning getting a victory in the round of 64 Isabel Higgs congratulations in second spot Jessica Eichen they're going to be marching on through to that next round as we get set for another big one here. And uh, it's well and truly underway. One of the first rides there for the surfer in red, Arabella Wilson. And then we've got Isabella Coldo out there at the moment. And then Kyla Rennies is in the white jersey. Ronnie Blakey sitting alongside one of my mates. Mark Ocalupo. Oc, uh, we've just been talking about how beautiful a morning it is out here at the moment. Um, did you get in the the water for a swim this morning? I didn't, Ronnie. Good morning and good morning, everyone. It's great to be back in Newcastle. Uh, I'm stoked to be commentating with you this week. It's been a while and I did not get in the water. I actually kicked my toe yesterday afternoon oh. for, the, for the probably oh, 500,000th time in my life. <laughs> oh, no, no, I haven't it's counted. It's a big toe. But it, when, like, now that I stub it, it, the skin's about that thick. And it, wow. Um, yeah, it wasn't a good one. Man, uh, so I've sore. got about 20 band-aids on there. So I didn't get in the water, but it looked nice. You know, it looked really Beautiful. nice. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, we were just uh, sitting down there before. Just Starling and I were watching the, the warm-up session. There was a couple of barrels. People it got was. pitted. It was, um, it was looking pretty promising. So, you know, it's a, a great opening day of competition here for the Newcastle Race Course Women's Pro. And, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, well, let's see what these competitors can bring us. Yeah, absolutely. Did you watch Portugal last night? I did. I was, was uh, saying it, yes. I barely slept. This is such a good time if you're a huge fan of competitive surfing. you got, without question, the biggest qualifying series event in the world. Um, talking about all the different regions. You know, they're, they're 
there's events that are equally as important points wise but this one's got the history this is the big celebration of surfing and it always attracts a lot of eyeballs so you've got this and then straight after it you can dive into portugal you, you've pretty much got 24 hours a day competitive surfing coming at you i'm in my element um you know you have a couple hours break and then in between this and portugal but you're so right i could have stayed up all night last night but i went to bed about midnight which is crazy for me i only you know i only usually sleep for about five hours so what i did was i put it on pause and uh slept till five in the morning and put it straight back on perfect uh look at these girls take advantage of these beautiful looking left handers ronnie yeah there's a, there's a couple of decent scores on the way and we kind of had the feeling that was going to happen we talked about you know we, it, it's it was one of those uh you got your your surfers go out in that first heat, they sort of test the conditions, trying to figure out where, where they should sit and the, the benefactors of the surfers in the second heat. They're, out, they're sitting there identifying where there's no opportunity and seeing where the, the waves are, are consistently breaking. We've already seen Arabella Wilson drop a 5.5, 3.07 for Isabella, and uh, that's pretty comparable to, to some of the better numbers we saw in that first heat of the day. And then Kyla's got herself a 2.5, so... Already, I, I think we're seeing things step up a little as Isabella looks to lock in a second score here. Puts a lot into that top turn. Moving nicely across this one. Clean rhythm. Did well to kind of make something of that final section there. Didn't probably tee off the way she would have liked, but made something of it. Definitely gets, a, you know, a mid-range score there. Her arms were moving around a lot, but they seemed like, you know, at the, at the last minute she had them to you know, keep her balanced. She could have hit the lip, but she decided to avoid it. So it won't be big, but you know what? This well is pretty solid this morning. I mean, uh, northeast direction and it looks inviting. I, you know, I'd, I'd love to have a surf on my break, maybe up there at Dixon Park. There must be some waves too, but look at this beautiful left running. Oh, this is a good looking wall. Potential for a barrel here, ducking under the lip. Quick little vision. You call that a pocket ride. Didn't really get behind that curtain. But still, uh, you know, promising signs here on day two of Surfest 2024 presented by Reflections Holiday Parks as uh, Kyla makes her way back out. But the, uh, the big number did drop for Isabella. Six-point ride, three turns. Pretty nice combination of manoeuvres. Yeah, so they liked it. The surfing last night, Ronnie. Oh, yeah. It was excellent over there, like a tallow for It was. Rare, uh, let's, let's dive into it. In let's a not dive too deep. No, we're because, like, oh, no, I, I just, want to. No, I will, no, no, <laughs> because the um, round of 16, I don't want to know about. I still haven't got that far yet. Okay, we won't dive that deep then. <laughs> we'll dive into some of the other it's stories, right. though, in just a moment. But right now, let's hear from the winner of the first heat of the morning. Uh, congratulations, Isabella Higgs. Isabel, well done. Uh, how was it out there? I mean, it looks beautiful, but. The scores sort of suggest that it's kind of tricky to find the magic one. Yeah, out there, like, the waves are pretty, they were really fun today, but definitely a bit tricky out there. Yeah. Uh, where are you from, Isabel? Uh, North Stain. North Stain, so a Northern Beaches surfer. Uh, obviously, you get similar conditions, sand bottom conditions like this uh, at home. It just looks like a, a morning down at Manly. Yeah, it does. And uh, who are you travelling with at the moment? Um, just me and mum. Oh, awesome. What's it like to, to have the support of your, your folks when you're competing at, at events this big? Is this the biggest event you've ever surfed in? Uh, one of, yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, you, you really put together a composed performance out there and I love the commitment on the shore break section. How tricky is that section to read? Yeah, it was so tricky and I was just like trying to go for a turn and then I just saw the sand <laughs> underneath me. Amazing. How old are you, Isabel? Uh, 15. 15. So um, you've earned yourself a couple of days off school this week. Yeah, it's so fun not going to school. Well, I, I believe you've earned yourself another day off by progressing through the heat with a victory. So that's a, a really good thing. Congratulations and all the best as you move through the rounds. Thank you so much. Anyone you want to give a shout out to? A uh, big shout out to my board riders, North Stain, and big shout out to mum for driving me up here. Good on you, Mum. Good on you, Isabel. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, that's, that, that'll bring a big smile to your face. Oh, that's gold. Great energy. Yeah. And 
you know, we were touching on it with Jess. This uh, event is so important for those seated surfers with the opportunity who to get to the top end of the QS ranks and potentially qualify for the Challenger Series. But this is a massive stepping stone pathway event for aspiring young surfers like Isabel who want to test themselves against top seeds, build their uh, their chances of, of potentially getting into these majors again next year. Yeah, wow, she, she's young. And it reminds me of when my mum used to take me up from uh, Sydney at that age. Look at this nice left-hander and some nice backhand turns there. Wow, Isabella. Isabella. Not Isabella. We had Isabella win, Nicola- the, Isabel win the first heat. Isabella win, winning this heat. Um, Isabella on uh, an earlier ride had a six for three turns that were, I think by her standard, just okay. Uh, have a look at it. This is the, the six-point ride. It's clean rhythm. She's got speed. That was the turn we were kind of looking at. She didn't really kind of get on the section, but she still hung on for the finish. Yeah. I yeah. think this next wave's better. Well, I think so. And what are they going to do? Because uh, I think that previous wave was overscored because she, um, you know, she didn't commit to the last turn. And that wave looked more, you know, complete uh, and, you know, she more rhythm. But will they go bigger? They, you know, sometimes they deduct you if they realise they've overscored you in the, in the, on the previous wave. Or they, they calibrate. They calibrate. calibrate the numbers a little bit. But I, I just think they're going to throw a big score at her. That's what I think is going to happen. Calibrate? That's a big word. Yeah. Is that like a collab? That, no, that no, it's just... <laughs> It's sort of just actually sorting it out, if you will. Yeah, yes, okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah, let's well, see what happens. I, I love the second turn here, Rock. I did like it too, and I, I really like the shape of that wave at that point in time. I, you uh, wanted to rip into it? Yeah, well, I did. You, you might be right. <laughs> Look, it came through at a 5.73. So, uh, yeah, I, I kind of thought the second wave was better. I mean, at this point in the competition... I think you know, they did too. Early just, in the day, yeah. I think they realised that they overscored her on the first wave. So yeah. it ha- it's, it's happened in our sport, Ronnie, for, you know, since I can remember. Yeah. You know, because it's a hard sport to judge. And if you they do don't, what... They don't if talk do about it, it, though. No, they don't. Because they don't want to <laughs> admit that they're wrong. But, you know, you're only human. You get it wrong. You know, you overscore a wave. And then you can adjust it on a, you know, a wave that's better. And, you know, it might make a lot of sense to a lot of people you know, on, from the naked eye. But it, it's something that I believe that they should do because you've got to get it right, right? For sure. Ultimately, you want the right person moving through. But yep. it, it was a, a really nice way for Isabella to start this heat. Um, really solid stuff. A couple of decent numbers. She's got the two best waves of the heat now and she's in a position where she can probably get a little defensive. If a, a high-quality wave comes, you know, she can she can really make it count. But what she'll probably want to do is get back to the top end of that priority order and, and get in control uh, of what unfolds, rob opportunities from her rivals and, uh, yeah, potentially close this one down. Yeah, well, it's a bit bigger today, isn't it? And I wonder if that uh, the rocks will break on the higher tide and will that rip go through it? Will it be a right rip bowl because... Maybe a foot or two bigger, you think, Ronnie? Yeah, it's definitely got a foot on it. It's, yeah, um, definitely a foot. There's been some some good size set waves. Not since we we started the competition, I don't think, but but just prior to it. So still waiting for one of those bigger ones to drop. As uh, Isabella just stays busy on the inside here. Yeah, I saw those sets before it started. Yeah, they, they were solid. I, you know, they were in the five foot solid range. So so they we, they are in the ocean and. Uh, we will see them throughout the day. Ok, um, want to talk about it a little bit uh, again because uh, it's it's a really fantastic thing that people can get involved in. Um, Jack McCoy's touring the documentary, 20 years since that um, that was made. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's going to be playing at the event cinema at Katara uh, May 9th. And uh, people can get tickets at jackmccoy.com. And we were touching on it yesterday, just some of the adventures and travels that yourself and Jack had. Um, man, just amazing times, amazing experiences in, in just wild places. So fortunate to, you know, have Jack, and Jack was such an adventurer. And uh, there we go, Red, nice snap there, nice tight snap. The only the one turn, but just taking me to all these exotic, primitive places that... I never thought I'd get to. Would never know how to get there if you were trying to do it on your own. You know, like he's already, you know, done the research and people have done the research and, 
you know, like if it's a, you know, up in the towers, went up, we went up there pretty early too, you know, and Martin Daly, you know, and Jack were good friends and uh, even Doris, you know, they, you know, they're all connected and they were finding waves, you know, like that people, you know, the kids have known about forever now, but these waves, um, they found, you know, and, and it. took me to, and, you know, and the wave um, in Sumba that's now hockey's left, uh, and it's an honour to have that wave named after me, you know, like, we, obviously we didn't find it, but, you know, it, it was, you know, actually kind of found by this guy, Claude, a German guy that built the resort, that started that resort, and I believe, you know, there was probably someone that found it yeah. earlier, but, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, but the wave is unbelievable, and, you know, just... You know, they, you know, they took me to G-Land at a really early um, age and, um, oh, you know, well, actually, even even prior to Jack, I think I went to G-Land and there was um, with a, another guy, Greg Weaver, an American filmer, and that movie Comp was made. And that was way back. I think that was before Jack. Maybe, I don't know. A lot's happened. You know, uh, there's, a been lot's a lot happened. Of mo- there's been a lot of movies and yeah. uh, it's, it's just, it was like a different life because I've actually, you know, I had my competitive life and... Um, and that free surfing life, you know, like, was, you know, big. And, That's like, so cool. it's hard to, you know, say what was better. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, well, it's a, an amazing movie. Of course, Jack had all that archival vision that he could lean into um, that, that is in the documentary. It tells the story of your, um, your, your grommethood, uh, your rise to fame, uh, your hiatus from professional surfing, and ultimately you know the big world title moment which we all celebrated it was huge so yeah. it's a, a magic story an unbelievable soundtrack we touched on that and uh worth checking out yeah. if you haven't seen it yeah. and if you have getting the chance to go see it again <laughs> on the big screen yes i mean yeah it, it's got a you know a happy ending like i mean because you know i put on a lot of weight and um struggled and you know so it's it, it's got that you know jack filmed me when i was quite overweight there's a couple of waves of me when i was massive like yeah so hard to get to your feet when you're, you're that you know, when you're that big you know it's like all about getting to your feet once I was on my feet I could kind of surf but um, the struggle of taking off was wow that was tough yeah I've always um, wondered uh, you know the transformation <laughs> footage in, in the documentary is incredible <laughs> uh, you, you know was that filmed over time or <laughs> that some mirrors. no, yeah, yeah, no, no it that. was it was really filmed over time I mean I went there fat, I went I went I don't, don't like saying that word but I went there quite overweight and uh, Jack filmed me losing a fair bit of that weight um, you know during those couple of months I spent you know in the wilderness really you know way um, behind yelling up in a place called Quindalup uh, and you know no one around just me training in a tracksuit um, running the roads, you know, just kangaroos and um, black boys and, you know, that's about it. <laughs> well, mate, you are well, looking... Well, if you know what a black boy is, it's, yeah. a, it's a plant, you know. Yep. I mean, it's a... You, exp- you can explain what a black yep. boy is. Yeah, yep. no, they're, uh, they're awesome all, all over uh, WA. Yep. Mate, um, obviously now you, you're maintaining this level of fitness. I've seen some photos of you coming out of, from D-Bar recently, free surfing clips as well from uh, Snapper. It looks like you're really enjoying your surfing. Yeah, thoroughly. I finally found the happy place, you know. I mean, not drinking. It's been about four years now, but now it's my diet I'm working on. Or, or just, you know, I've found the perfect diet for me and, you know, and some new crazy good uh, vitamins. And and uh, it's just like surf all day, you know. Obviously kids, but surf as much as I can. Yep. And the water at home has been 28 degrees. So I've been surfing in boardies, which is rare for me. And only boardies for the last month or even more. And uh, then you're in Newcastle losing my tan and, um, and <laughs> missing really good waves. But I'm happy to be in Newcastle. Mate, you can <laughs> still bronze up in Newcastle. Don't worry about that. But uh, no, it's awesome to see you uh, looking so fit, happy, Thanks, surfing your guts out. Yeah. And obviously uh, a full footy team of kids. Uh, yes. charging around you most of the time so you must be sleeping well and uh yeah big shout out to jess yeah shout out to jess she's uh <laughs> making lunches and doing school drop-offs right now but she rubbed it in that she is going surfing and said the waves are pumping in capitals which is yeah you know not just rubbing it in oh good honor uh, but we're gonna have a good day for sure because we're already starting sure to see are. some really solid numbers drop here isabella uh, out there in the blue is looking really sharp. She's got a couple of big numbers. And, and instead of sort of worrying about getting priority, it feels like she's just going, you know what, I'm going to catch some insiders. I'm going to keep pushing my turns and, and just try and build on my lead that way. Yeah. 
And it's it's such a good position to be in. I remember doing that when I used to compete because you can get two scores. You know you're in the lead and you know you're not going to get not. You know you're not going to get eliminated. So you can catch a bunch and it's like practice time without other free servers in the water. You know what I mean? Just... You know, like, it's research practice, you know, getting ready for that next heat. Getting some reps in. Here goes Arabella Wilson in the red. She's going to duck out of that one or jump out of that one. She's at a 5.5, so she's really, she is in a, a, a reasonable position to, to make a charge at that number one spot. Probably won't do it with that wave, though. It'll be pretty similar to her, uh, her second score, which is already logged. It actually didn't uh, improve on a situation, 3.43, and kind of a, a shame, really, for her because it was a pretty decent-looking wave. It was a nice-looking wave. And she's got a similar style to True Starling, I, I think. You know, like I can see definitely some similarities there. Yeah, that's a good point. But, uh, yeah, Kyla's the, the surfer out there with priority and a little bit of work to do at the moment. She actually needs a 6.6 .6 to get herself up in a second place here in the Newcastle Race Course Women's Pro the uh, crowdfunding partner for Surfest 2024, presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. Well, does that mean we get an invite to the races? Are the races on this weekend, and can we go? I, we can definitely go if they're on. <laughs> I'm going to find out for you. Thank you. But uh, there is uh, a big opportunity for folks, if you're down here at Merriweather, to visit the Newcastle Racecourse stall. Check out Mitch Rev's life-size artwork and uh, enter the draw to win a race day restaurant voucher. Maybe we should go over there, Rock, and... Uh, and check that out. I did bring a tie. You did? Well, I, I'm going to go to the op shop because I didn't bring my <laughs> suit. But, like, you know, I love going to see live racing and, you know, it's just embedded in Australian history. You know, I've got a really good friend, Damien Oliver, that retired this year. And, uh, wow. And, and you oh, know, he's one of the most accomplished jockeys yeah, ever. Ever. And he's, he's a, a goat. He's a goat. And I've taken him surfing a few times. Uh, good friend. We've known each other for a long time. Um, and yeah, oh geez, the last day I wasn't actually um, betting on him that day, but he went over to because his last day was in Victoria. He had a couple Group One wins um, on his last um, Victorian meeting, but he went over to West Oz, where he's actually from, and rode there for the very last time. I forgot about it, and he rode like four or five winners that day on his very last day racing. And all I could say was lose money. Um, <laughs> like, that's a Hawaiian <laughs> saying, like Johnny Boy Combs would be saying, lose money. It's a pigeon kind of term. Um, Love it. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Well, but, um, um, but yeah, but anyway, I mean, it's not about me winning money. It's about Damien <laughs> riding, you know, winners. He was a freak. He was a freak. I mean, there was a couple uh, Melbourne Cups that, um, that I was... Uh, on, I think it was media puzzle. Um, it was after his brother unfortunately got killed in a car uh, in a sorry in a horse racing um, accident. It was a tragedy, and uh, and he rang me up going, "I can feel it. I'm going to win on this horse for my brother." And sure enough, he did. Media puzzle came roaring out of the the pack and storm time that year. I was at the Gold Coast track that day. Loving life. Oh, yeah, we stayed at Versace that night. It was on yeah, <laughs> champagne. And, yeah. Nice. Well, uh, mate, you'd be loving the conditions out here, uh, Damien, today. It'd be, you know, five times overhead for him. <laughs> you can't <laughs> say that. <laughs> Two minutes <laughs> remaining here. And Isabella's had a fantastic heat so far, a 6 and a 5.73. <laughs> Arabella Wilson, she's after a 6.23 to get to the lead. But this is one of those situations, like early rounds, you know, everyone wants the win. Everyone wants to get that post-heat interview and, and, you know, really move through the heats in, in dominant fashion. But it's the top two that progress. And as long as you're alive in the draw come finals day, you're going to have a chance to win. So, you know, Arabella's got to be careful not to be too concerned about getting the victory here, defending that second position and, and really probably being more concerned about the surfer in third at the moment is a, a, a smart tactic. Yeah. Definitely. Did you um, you used to think about that stuff uh, a lot in heats when you were competing, or, or were you really focused on just yourself, improving on your numbers, or, or did you, you know, are you way more savvy with that stuff now that you've seen so much surfing? Uh, obviously, surf so many heats. So many, you know, in, it was just so different, man on man, to the uh, four man heats. And when I competed um, in four man heats. There was no priority, so it was a lot different. Yeah, of mm. course. 
Yeah, I remember oh, I some used of those to, stories. Yeah, yeah, no, people used to love to hassle me. And it yeah. really get, my, I, I would, yeah. Get upset. Upset is a great word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I angry. can imagine it would yeah, be Angry is another word, you know, like, yeah, but p- some people just knew it and they knew they could do it and rattle me. And, and it, it seems, well, it's just fact, it, as we see here. Uh, Isabella just doesn't get much out of that wave. This heat's coming to a close, but it seems to me the surfers get hassled the most are generally the most talented, and we've seen that you know happen even even with priority coming into play. Uh, John John Florence, for example, down at Bells with Ezekiel Lau that time, just all over him. That's that's kind of what happens, isn't it? Because people generally go, you know what, I I probably can't out surf this person, so I'm going to try and get in their head and freak them out. Can't, can't answer that one, but yeah. good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, glad I could speak on your behalf. <laughs> yeah. But uh, okay, always a pleasure. Thank uh, you, you're Ronnie. You're going to stay we'll in see- the booth. No, I think Jacko is here. we got Jacko here. So oh, I'm going to step Jacko out Baker. for him. All right, and, let's bring uh, in the big dog. Yeah, let's bring him in and Jess. And we'll be back though, Ronnie. We'll be back in a couple. We sure will. Enjoy a big uh, congratulations there to Isabella with a, a really solid performance here in the second heat of the morning. She's moving on through. We'll take a quick break. More to come from the Newcastle Racecourse Women's Pro right after this. Maddie's last night's sleep was spent trying to look up relaxing wave sounds. Tonight's actual wave sounds. Holidays, Iron Man, outdoors, Iron Man, Whoa. Uber, suspension, lights, roof break, can't be a great recovery gear, oh. under Iron Man, mate, and under Iron Man. <laughs> can't do two things at once. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait! Effortlessly refreshing. Byron Bay Brewery Premium Lager. Go with it. And a good morning. Welcome back to Surfest presented by Reflections Holiday Park. I'm joined by a very special guest, Jacko Baker. Welcome to the booth. Thanks for having me. It feels weird to be um, on this side of the camera, but yeah. something different. No, we're excited to have you on this side of the camera. I feel like People can't really see while you're, while you're in here, but you could throw a little leg up. <laughs> We've unfortunately got an injury. Want yeah. to tell everyone? I've got a broken foot. Um, the whole thing's clearly not broken, but um, unfortunately broke uh, one of the metatarsals, one of the toe metatarsals um, in a pretty tricky spot on the bottom of my foot. So it's not ideal, but I'm doing everything to be back. Of course, I would love to st- be doing this contest. Mm. Um, but um, I'm just doing everything to be back for the first challenger at Snapper. So that's still the goal, but um, just kind of have to wait and see. You can't get ahead of yourself. Like, as soon as you start getting ahead of yourself, then you might take a step backwards. So I'm just doing everything I can, eating healthy and doing anything I can. This happened while we are in the break. This is Taylor Green. Wow. wow. One massive turn. 617 for Taylor Green. So Taylor lives up the coast but represents New Zealand. And uh, she, I'm not sure if you won, she won the 
Burley had Singleton Classic Did against she? Macy and Dimity, like in a really stacked final. Wow. Um, recently got signed by Ruka. Wow. Yeah, second girl in the country to sign with Ruka, which is really cool. That's cool as. Uh, and yeah, she absolutely rips, just like you saw in that last wave. This is the local girl, Jasmine Sampson. She's from up of the bay, I'm pretty sure, and a bay area. So we could kind of class her as a local. She'd be Nova Castrian. Yeah, what is the the perimeter to Nova Castrian? Where does it end? I don't know. It's a bit like the Merriweather suburb where we live. Merriweather, I mean, with the property market keeps moving out and out. <laughs> yeah. So um, everyone's claiming they're in Merriweather. But I'd say the bay, even though they say Port Stephens, I feel like Newcastle's the, the, the whole region. Yeah. I feel like as you go out as far as Maitland into the Hunter Valley, you're probably still, if you were to be overseas and someone go, where are you from? You go Newcastle. Yeah. Right? It's that whole broad area. It's just easier to say that's kind of like I say I'm from Sydney. It's like Sydney. Think yeah. about how big Sydney is. You yeah. can be Cronulla. You can be... Yeah, you can be anywhere in Sydney, so. We're going to cross down to the winner of the last heat. Izzy Caldo, you've just been on fire recently. Another heat win for you. Congratulations. Oh, thanks so much, Jess. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> it feels like this season you've come in with a new outlook. You've looked really on form. And uh, just tell us what's different. What did the off-season look like for you? Yeah, well, last year was like my first year on doing the QS. And obviously just wanted to get that experience. And then this year I didn't do the first half of the QS season. So... I'm just training hard and have no expectations on myself, just all experience, which I think is good. <laughs> and from what I've seen too on the socials, you've been doing a lot of surf specific training. Do you think that that's really added to your competitive fire this year? Yeah, a hundred percent. Cause I'm at uni, so I'm through the um, uni Sunshine Coast sport program through there. So I'm at the gym in there and I've been working with Aaron a lot and he's really focusing me on lots of rotation stuff. So I definitely think that's helped. Talk to me about that more. You get a lot of support from your uni. What are you studying and um, how have they supported you through this career? Yeah, so I'm third year in occupational therapy. So it's a four year degree, so nearly done. <laughs> um, and the high performance program on the sunny coast is so amazing. I actually have like four exams this week, but I've pushed them out for like two weeks time. And they're so supportive down there. So yeah, I really love it. And each round, it gets harder and harder. You definitely pulled one of the harder heats this morning, though. How are you going to take it through moving each heat in the draw? I feel like you've been a really consistent competitor in these events uh, that we've seen you compete in the last few. Do you think you'll just keep things the same? Yeah, I think it's just I have no pressure on myself and no one really expects anything from me because I don't really have much to prove, just prove things to myself. So I think I'll just have that outlook on the next couple of heats, yeah. I feel like that is really working for you. So thanks so much for chatting for us. And uh, yeah, good luck in the next couple of rounds. Thanks heaps, Jessie. <laughs> She's um, an absolute sweetheart. How good is that? Yeah. Doing uni as well as being a professional athlete. I struggle to finish school, let alone going and doing extracurricular yeah. studies. That's not easy. So hats off to her. You'd be surprised. A lot of these girls are... Uh, Wow, I wow. thought that was going to go... I thought she was done for <laughs> yeah, sure. Same. She's thought, proved us wrong. I thought that was going a bit pear-shaped at the end, but Taylor Green getting another strong backside turn. So it's cool to see Taylor go left because she is from the sunny coast as well. So I feel like she goes, you know, you live up yeah. there, you're going right mostly. There's well, not a lot of lefts, but she's well, proving I was going to say wrong. from her backhand, I, was, I think she looks like a Billy Stammen kind of brought up in Raglan if she's flying the NZ flag. Yeah. But um, if she's sunny coast, I know I know Reef Hazelwood finds a few lefts up there, but does kind of find predominantly right. So it's good to see her. She's got a great great backside snap on her. It'd be uh, nice to see her get two together. Yeah, absolutely. I loved that sign that said, go Taylor, so I can have another day off school. <laughs> yeah, how good's that? So cool. The kids around here, we've been, I mean, even goes back to my era as we see Taylor's replay here. Wow. She hit it so late under the lip and still got out in front of it so easy. Yeah, that was a really hard section to be able to ride out of. And with backwash as well, uh, that came through. We're still waiting on the score, actually. It says 0.33, but definitely not the score for <laughs> that one. Here it um, comes. But tell me, tell me about oh, another six-point ride. Wow, Taylor Green. So that's the highest heat total we've seen today so far yep. from the ladies. Um, but you would have been around the surface for so many years, especially as a Grom. Forever. Talk me through what it's been like start to now. Yeah, it's been pretty cool. I mean, even just seeing the sign from the kids there, getting the days off school. I remember I went to the primary school back here, Holy Family. It's just a stone's throw back um, behind, the, behind the pub and retreat takeaway. 
and yeah, I mean, I used to bludge a fair bit of primary school to come down and watch. I mean, I remember one year it was really big, Mary with a third reef, and I remember Travis Lynch and a couple of who I was, Paul Parker in the event. And that's one of the most memorable events for me. That's kind of when I was like, I want to be in this. When I get older, and I've been lucky enough, I mean, through the support from Warren and the local community, I've had a few wild cards when I was younger, and then once I got the points to be a part of it, from the Cadet Cup to the Pro Juniors to now doing the QS, well, now it's a regional QS, so um yeah i've now i'm 27 so i've actually been oh, i think i was saying to warren at the media thing the other week i've probably been in a part of surfest for probably 16 years as, wow. a, as a surfer yeah so it's pretty pretty crazy and probably a part of the main event for was that, 15 so 12 years wow that's insane i feel like surfest and um I guess all the events they put on, it's kind of its own form of that WSL pathway. Yep. You know, they have those Grom events and then this is obviously the pinnacle. I think that's why we see so many talented Novocastrians come out of this region because Warren and the guys behind all these events, it takes a special type of man to be able to put this on. And yep. um, I think, well, do you think actually that he is a massive part of all of the Novocastrians' careers? Well, 100%. I mean, for all of us to have this platform growing up i mean to come from the sandbar cadet cart which his son reese owns sandbar mm, so there's wow. all, all connections within the within the surface banner um but to go from the cadet cup even the school's teams challenge to the evolution cup that's the charity one to raise money to i mean i think there's just an event for everyone i mean the goal is for most juniors around here to either be in the pro junior or, or in the main event but if you're not quite at that level then there mm. is still the school's event and so many other events to be able to do to be a part of it um, I mean, I have a lot to thank. Probably Ryan and Morgan are the same. Jake Sylvester, we have a lot to thank Warren for to have this platform and to be able to showcase our surfing on the highest level at our home break mm. with a bit of a local advantage, even though it took us so long to finally <laughs> get one here. Um, like I was saying here, I've been doing it, the main event for 12 years and I finally was the first person to get my name on the trophy. So it, it, it was almost a curse for a bit for us, but um, hopefully... Hopefully that's opened the floodgates. Um, I mean, I was actually saying to Morgs, I, I picked him up this morning and we had one of our best mates' wedding on the weekend. I was like, I think I think now the floodgates are open. I'd love to see you win it um, or any other locals around. It'd be mm. really nice to keep getting a local name on the trophy. Um, it's a special event for all of us and especially to start getting more locals' names on it. I think Philippa won the women's as well. So we've got yeah. two, but on the men's side, it took us a, a fair while. I feel like, you know, that win brought so much energy into the community it probably brought a lot of people to the prince as well but i yeah, i think the prince yeah I, from what i remember um it was pretty <laughs> packed um i think i might have had about six beers before i'd actually got to the prince i think i had to stay around here and do a bit of media but i was just too excited i was like you can't stop me from doing this no but, way um, i was nice to go celebrate the prince the prince is a supporter of Surfest as well they've got things going on every night i think tonight might be trivia i think i'm hosting the music round oh, so cool. get down there i think it's steak night and schnitty night 15 dollars steak 17 dollars schnitties wow that's so if you're good. looking for a dinner option for you anyone else come on down and i want to talk more about these sponsors you work pretty closely with burton automotive they seem like kind of like another version of warrant they just seem like they're here to give you guys a pathway and make the CT dreams a reality for everyone who lives in Newcastle. I'm kind of jealous that I'm not from Newcastle. Yeah, for sure. Honest. Kim Kim and Janine and the Burton family are some of the most generous people I've, I've ever come across. And I'm super lucky to have seen that firsthand. I mean, I mean, we're very lucky to be able to do what we do. But when we do travel the world, it is quite expensive. Mm. And, and to have that support from Kim and the family. And I mean, I'm lucky enough to drive around a brand new gwm tank around oh, oh, stop so it. i'm pretty lucky to be able to do that but to have this event on and i know there's a few years there where the event may not have run without um kim's support so to still have this here at merriweather our local break and um have such influential people helping out financially to run this contest is is, is amazing so and i know i wouldn't be where i am today without warren's support and kim burton's support and the burton family that's for sure yeah the community that you guys have here is probably one of the best i've seen in the world and i was lucky to travel all through the asian region last year and i've never seen an event like the surface i just think you guys and the community here is incredible and to be a part of that must be just so amazing yeah even goes back to the merriweather border riders the whole yeah the whole community it's 
I think that probably was one of, <laughs> when one of the we- weirdly in a way one of the issues for someone around here trying to win this contest because mm. there was like this weird added pressure that wasn't meant to be pressure but yeah. everyone cared so much yeah. that we felt like there was this weight on our shoulders but um yeah I think now especially now also as well for this being a regional QS it used to be points for us to qualify for the world tour but now it's come back to the region so the year I won it luckily I, the points didn't really matter for me I just kind of wanted to win yeah same with Ryan and especially with Morgan this year like we're kind of this is a practice for the for the challenger series so that could be a different different mentality for Did us to be in you win it the year that Hoggy got second yep yeah Hoggy got second and I thought he was I was the same I heard your story the other day on the webcast I actually did say to him, I thought that him getting second, he made the Challenger Series, and then we got to the beach, and we're like, oh, no, I was all, all bummed out. Yeah, he But had it was to amazing. Win. I see, I remember that event, and I think the semi final, and he's standing on the rock jumping, just being all hot. Yeah, he got like a four on the, I think he beat, so who's in the finals? Myself, Ryan, Billy Stam, and then Hogg. And I'm pretty sure Hog beat Fred or Leo in the semi, like on the buzzer too, yeah. like to keep the dream alive. And it was like late Arvo too, because we had to condense the heats to form. We had to put it to four man, yes, shorten the draw, right. finish it up. So it was like a full miracle day. Yeah, that was a, that was a cool day. But yeah, I thought Hog kind of was chasing me down. I think he might have got one close to the buzzer, like a seven, and got out of combo, but got to second. And we all thought that that was that was done. But I mean, it was still a great. Great knock from Hogg. He's like you said. I mean, everyone was saying up at um up at Burley, he's one of the best tag surfers or contest surfers that we yeah. have, especially in the board riders battles and yes, like the old Jim Beam Surf Classics. I mean, Hog, Hog's a beast. Hog, I I always think that I'm a little biased being from the same club as Hog, but I just don't think you can go past him. He's he's still so relevant in our sport, and he's been in it for a long time. And I think even now when he does the QS events and still has such a drive to make the Challenger Series, he's an icon. And yeah. that year was, yeah, it was, I just thought that was the best thing ever. That semi-final, oh. he's jumping on the rocks, just being hog. It's just hog. It's like what we're saying. Even I think if any club in Australia had a choice of an over 35 to compete with, you'd even pick him as an open nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, I mean, you'd have Parker, you'd have Kersey, but you've got Hogg. Hogg's just got that extra mongrel in him, like, running up that, whatever was it called, Hyundai Hill or yes. whatever. Yes. Mate, I was watching that even with a broken foot. I didn't even want to be there. I was like, I would have needed a runner. It was so funny being at that event because it was the first one that, you know, the Hyundai Hill, I'm pretty sure we ended up calling it Heartbreak Hill by oh. the end because it was just... Well, you could see everyone get to the top so broken. I've even got Mikey Madonna staying in my house today. I think Lee Bar got third. Yes. And lucky enough, I got those um, Norma Tech compression boots on because I reckon he would not be walking without them. He looked so busted up when he got here the other day. I I, I was on the right side of the 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 booth i yep. think yep. i was 100%. i was glad i was talking about it for sure and uh and not doing it because i'h not even the run the rock off obviously you've surfed burley a bunch yep. of times but i don't know about you but i find burley rock off hard it is hard then put it under time pressure and big burley swells and then there was the sweep and yeah i was glad i was talking about it 100%. and not doing yeah. it yeah well, i've even seen stace do a few runs i've seen yeah. stace and vaughn do a few runs so i've seen them getting into it but yeah i think that whole environment from the jump to the run even the run out and end of the jump then to try to get a wave in eight minutes get along the sand and then up that hill and then for power surfers oh, doing it twice duh. every heat i don't even i was actually i mean i shouldn't say i'm happy i was injured but yeah. i was actually happy to watch the first year um and watch it unfold and then hopefully i'm all healthy next year and yeah be a part of it it looked like a really special weekend and hats off to burley they did really really good i mean kind of look like it was meant to be the contest yeah. runs at Burley the first time Burley win you can say that stuff that like I don't know but they beat everyone they smashed everyone in the final they had a running combo before yeah. the last surf even went out so hats off to the team at Burley I mean head honcho bottle would look like he was pretty frothing on oh, that it was so good to watch he was hilarious just trying to you know he was so focused on the team too trying to get words out of him and talking to him during the final it was almost impossible because he was like no we're ahead we're trying to get a win and um yeah he was definitely looking on point here we see taylor green oh, wow. wow she's got a psycho front side too yeah she's she's one of those surfers who didn't compete in these events for quite some time her little sister was actually stella she was a lot more competitive 
Uh, but then she's put her name in the draw the last year or two, and she's kind of come out swinging. This is how she started this heat one. Wow. Wow, really strong turn then. That was huge. Then again with this one, this was the one so under the lip, and I don't even know how she managed to pull her nose up because I was watching that going, oh, no, she's going down. But, yeah, you see it's they rewarded it with those two scores, 6-1-7 and a 6. And um, Maddie Cattle, coach to Narrabeen, and a lot of uh, QS people here, he broke down all of last year's comp results and heat totals on the men's side. And everyone who made the Challenger Series, the average score that they got – through the regional series was in the 12s. Wow. And I said they all consistently got in the 12 point range. And I'm a big believer that you can't argue with the numbers. No and way. so I think if you can cons consistently get in the 12s, well, but it's proven, if you can consistently get in the 12s, you can uh, make the Challenger series. Obviously, not an, it's easier said than done. It's always easier said than done. But I mean, like you said, I mean, it's all well and good to have a 15 point heat total. But then if you're dropping an eight point heat total the next, like you want yeah. that consistency. If yeah. you can kind of get two sixes in a heat even like for any girls that are watching the webcast right now like this is a great heat to be watching taylor's out there she's done two huge one turns and mm. she's got 12 points mm. it's pretty simple find a bigger section get up there once compress get out of it like it's a today's kind of a very it's, it is tricky um i mean i haven't surfed for six weeks and the banks are pretty tricky we're pretty north right now so it is kind of running against Mer the grain at merriweather we're kind of running back towards merriweather we're kind of usually running away from merriweather the right but, um, yeah, two, one big turn on each wave. It's even been the same um, in the men's. I even watched yesterday. I saw a few one-turn fives, one-turn sixes. I feel like the judging's kind of going back to that. Mm. I mean, you had those one-turn big manoeuvres. The airs, they're still getting scored. But I think those big power moves, are, I mean, that excites me. I can't wait yeah. to get back surfing. That's kind of what I love to do. And I think after breaking this foot, I don't think I'll be doing airs for a while. So <laughs> I'll be giving myself a bit of a, a, bit of a ban. Um, but, no... Nah, like this heat, Taylor, two sixes, very good surfing, but also very simple. Yeah. Very achievable surfing. But she's, I mean, that first turn was on the first wave was, was massive. I feel like it almost could have gone higher. But yeah. first wave of the heat, I'm not going to tell the judges what to do. I don't think they listen to us anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but nah, that was, that. Uh, this is a really good heat for her. I feel like as well, that kind of, as someone watching your surfing and has watched you on the tour and the challenger and the QS, I feel like that's kind of your mantra too. You seem to do less, but push harder doing less. And even I feel like that translates so beautifully onto the bigger scales that are the challenger series and the CT. Do you think that you changed a lot? Like change much in your surfing, progressing through the harder rounds? For sure. I think once you kind of make the tour... Um, I kind of even did it on the year on the challenges. I mean, it was such a strong year that year, the the COVID year. We kind of everything was condensed. I mean, you still mm. had Zeke, you had Nat Young, you had a lot of guys that had come back from the tour, and then you had kind of the, the, this new crop coming in. Even though myself and a few of the boys, Jacob, had all kind of been doing it for a few years. Emi, um, yeah, I think once I kind of made the tour, I just knew just kind of you just got to simplify it. Like less is more. Like. You don't, you don't get on the tour and surf for fives. Like, mm. there's not many heats where you're, you're trying to surf for fives. I mean, it is hard. Like, that's one being one thing I've had to, as we see, Taylor, oh, late drop. Um, it has been hard to actually transition back to the challenges because the waves aren't as powerful and mm. as good as the tour. So I had to transition to the tour to get just less is more, big turns, and fight with the big boys. I'm lucky that I got a bit of bit of weight and strength behind me because that's an advantage on tour but then coming back now to the challenges that was a, a tricky one for last year was um having to adjust back to actually having to get grindy get yeah. like, like we say grindy yeah. grindy heat you have to grind them through 10 points there's not many heats on tour you'll make with 10 points but mm. on the challenges it's actually quite common like yeah. you're at huntington it goes flat today so to say there's probably those 10 12 point heat totals which essentially when you at such the height of the sport can almost feel grindy yeah even though you're making it like yeah. you'll come in you'll hear people in interviews go wow that was super grindy so yeah. um i feel Wait. like for taylor though this isn't grindy she's kind of bang two huge turns so yeah this isn't a grindy heat no not at all but even this year i think one of the funniest parts of the tour i've seen this year was con o'leary going yeah that was the grindest hit of my life at pipeline like i was like that is what i was just yeah, you know that it's was not he had the funniest run there he, he made the quarters without getting over 10 points i think or maybe eight points 
I kept messaging him about that. I was like, a good heat's coming. If you can kind of get those ones where you keep sneaking through, they don't... I mean, a heat win's a heat win. They mm. don't feel as good. Mm. But the kind of floodgates open... Like, I mean, I think he made the semis at yeah. Pipe, first event of the year. Like, yeah. that was massive. So, yeah. kind of once you have those grindy ones sometimes, sometimes the floodgates open and then you do get the heat that does have bowels and you're just, like, on dialer bomb. You're just like, how good is this? I can't, I can't miss one. Yeah. So. Even, you know, you've you spent two years on the tour and now... Two years? Three year and years? a half. Year well, and you a could half. say two, but the old cut got me. I mean, I snuck through the first year and then got cut the second year, but that's all right. But oh. back on the Challenger Series... And obviously you've broken your foot, but you were pretty close last year. Missed by one eight. <laughs> oh, that is just heartbreaking. But I love the fact that you've gone onto the biggest scale. You know, this is what we all dream of is to get there. But you've still come back and compete in the surface. And I just think that is maybe one of the most priceless things throughout our industry is, you know, you're so dedicated to coming back to this event and probably shows the depth of this event too. For sure, for sure. And I think... Just coming back and, and doing this event, as we see Taylor on her last wave, she's had surfed a great heat. But I think just coming back, you see a lot of us, myself, Ryan, Philippa, will, even on tour or off tour, we'll still do this contest to show Warren the support and the Burton family to show them that we appreciate everything they've done for us and we're, yeah, we're very thankful for what they do for us. Well, we'll be back with plenty more action for the surface. Women's round of 64, heat four coming up right after this short break. Back home, the Wilsons always use proper dinner etiquette. Out here, the stick will do just fine. Effortlessly refreshing. Byron Bay Brewery Premium Lager. Go with it. The race course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder. It brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins. Newcastle Racecourse. Home is where the track is. <laughs> Welcome back. This is The Surface presented by Reflections Holiday Park. That's Taylor Green. She took out that last heat pretty convincingly. Uh, chatting to another Newcastle local, Logan Dalton. And there's that sign that we love. Go Taylor so I can have another day off school. I'm Jessie Starling, joined with Jacko Baker. And uh, yeah, I feel like we're both watching, but maybe both want to be in this event. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's hard to, um, I mean, it's kind of cool to still be a part of it though. Mm. Um, kind of hence why sitting here, I really, I don't think I could sit at home and not be a part of this event in some way. Yeah. I think I even did the same thing last year. I, I came home from Portugal and didn't enter it. And then I called Warren the day before and said, is there any spots for the old boy? And he, he sorted me out, which was pretty cool. So <laughs> I think once, the, once this, I know you don't even call it a contest, kind of more so a festival. It's such a big yeah. thing here in Newcastle and it goes for so long. I think once... You know, John Parade, this main road here where we block off. Mm. 
you know that it's on and everyone kind of has that feeling about it so it's, it's really really cool yeah I have friends down here at Newcastle who are sending me photos of the scaffold being put up and they're like oh it's, it's happening like yeah. everyone's coming to town so that looks like it's a bit of a New Zealand contingent there's Sappy Betty I also saw Billy Stammond I did talk about Billy in the last I was saying yeah you did the old Raglan backhand so Billy might be down there giving her a bit of bit of coaching I'll Oh, Billy doesn't have too bad a backhand snap himself. Absolutely He's, not. <laughs> you don't really want to draw Billy in a heat on a left at no, any size. At no. Or Billy any time, but if I, would you draw Billy in a left... Um, yeah, I mean, coming from Raglan, he's, mm. he's probably given her a few tips there on those backside snaps. Taylor nailed two huge ones in that last heat. Yeah, she did. She, um, my first experience with Billy actually was when I was younger. He used to come and stay with David Cathals at Narrabeen a lot. Yep. And um, we had pumping Narrabeen one day, and I remember standing on the beach going, who is that? Like, it was incredible, the backhand surfing, paddled out, and he was like, hey, I'm Billy, nice to meet you. I was like, oh, my gosh, you surf so good. <laughs> yeah, fully built. Even Davey's got a good backhand oh, himself yeah. growing up at Narrabeen. Dill Moffat. Dill Moffat. Kai Warner. Kai Warner. He yeah, you good. guys are sport for talent. I mean, it's like any... Think about all the big board, board riders clubs and beaches in, in in Australia where we have ample talent. I mean, I think even like you were saying with the board riders battle last week, I think a, a few teams actually had a tough time picking because you've yeah. got t- you sport for opportunities. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the board clubs around here. Yeah, we definitely, I think Merriweather and Narrabeen are, you're from Merriweather board yep. riders? Yeah, they're pretty in the same boat. The fact that there's so much talent. You could pick anyone. Yeah. You could give anyone a run, so... Yeah, it's um, it's very here we as we see red, looking at pretty solid left here. Yeah, this is Piper Harrison. She is not scared. She loves a big forehand barrel. She's had some pretty cool clips uh, behind the rocket snapper. She's had a win at Nias, which is a yeah. barreling right hander, um, and part of a cool talented family, the Harrisons, brother to Marlon, or sister to Marlon Harrison. Um, and then this is Ruby True. So she's uh, one of my local friends. She's from Narrabeen, and uh is just about to qualify for the Olympics for skateboarding. No way. Yeah, she's, so she's an doing incredible a skateboarder. regional five-star QS and she's a professional skateboarder. Yeah, so she just got back from the world qualifiers in Dubai. She got fifth in the world um, and I believe she's currently sitting seventh in the world and they take top ten to the Olympics. Wow. So there's one more um, one oh. more qualifier to go, but she's looking good to qualify. Wow. Yeah, I'll, I mean, and she I think, I think we'll stick to license. one sport. Like, yeah, we'll stick yeah. to one sport. I don't think I could balance two, like we're saying. Um, yeah, that's that's. <laughs> as we just seen Maddie's first wave there. That was actually, like we said before, with Taylor's heat, Taylor Green, the last one, one big turn. She mm. kind of found a nice little right there. I didn't really expect someone to find a right on a day like today. It is quite a nor'east swell, so it is quite backwards. Yeah. Um, but the rights like this one will pack a bit of punch, and she. Gets up there quite nice. He throws it up there. Perfect start. She um she does a lot of work with Tessa McKenna, I believe. Yep, sure um, does. As well as Logan Dalton, another commentator. She Tessa seems to wear a lot of hats in Newcastle. Tessa does. I don't think there's many things Terry doesn't do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, even yeah, growing up around here, everyone. I mean, even on the east coast of Australia, you'd oh. know Terry. You'd know Terry for. Gold, golden tonsils you hear him at every <laughs> every commentary contest up and down the coast and now I think he's been coaching for a fair while now I think he might even might even be helping Dom Thomas I think from Frenchman's who's another local from the area um, but yeah Terry he can kind of do do anything we're gonna chat to the lady of the hour Taylor Green what a performance you just put on in your last heat thank you there's a couple fun runs out there Jacko and I were pretty much in awe you won that heat by doing two really solid backhand rears, but just one turn waves, managed to get your pair of sixes. Was less, in, uh, in less is more, was your strategy going out there? Um, definitely not. I did like watching the <laughs> heat before. Um, there was just like some sick inside ones coming through that you get a couple turns in, but I couldn't find them, but I managed to get ones with just one turn, which was good. And we could see that you were doing a bit of work with Billy and Safi. What did they tell you before you went out? We need a note. Uh, go have fun. <laughs> yeah, did Billy tell you? Yeah. Did, did Billy give you any tips with those backside snaps? Because we all we know Billy's got a big backside snap, but I reckon, yeah, yours were, yours were massive then. That was, that was really, really good surfing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, definitely. 
um, the support from them guys is good. For sure. Recently signed with Ruka and you won the Burleyhead Single Fin Classic in a pretty stacked final. You've had an amazing year this year. Tell me about how it's all been for you. Um, yeah, it's been good. Getting on Ruka was pretty cool. Massive confidence booster. Um, but just taking it comp by comp and hopefully get a few more results under my belt. You travel quite closely with your little sister, Stella. I know exactly what it's like to travel with a sister. It's so nice to have someone go through this journey with you. Is she here with you at this event or is she going to uh, hold out for another year or so? Um, she's at school at home, um, but I'm traveling with Safi, which is pretty cool. She's like a big sister to me, so yeah. Yeah, you guys from New Zealand seem like you've got a pretty cool little family unit going. That's got to be a bit of a confidence booster as well. Yeah, definitely. Such a good crew. Amazing. Well, thanks so much for your time, Taylor, and uh, best of luck in the next heat. Sweet. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> Zappy on screen. There Zappy too. and Bill on screen, the full crew. That's cool, though. That's the that's coolest part with these contests and even how it goes into the challenges as well. I mean, having a, having a crew to stay with, I mean... I mean, some people do enjoy to do this stuff by themselves, but I think having a crew and a bit of a team together. And, yeah, just having that team aspect of, a, um, of, a, of, a, of, of, of an individual sport. Mm. I mean, we don't really get that. I mean, footy teams, every other team, they have a team aspect mm. for us. We're individual athletes, but to be able to travel around and, and kind of ride the highs and lows of everyone's results and help each other kind of reach their goals, it's pretty, pretty special. That's actually something I wanted to ask you about because... I have always travelled with someone. I have my big sister, True, so I've always known what it's like to have someone with you there. But when I looked at the Challenger Series last year and, I mean, the first year you did it as well, it just looked like the the group of Australians that you travelled with, the those those boys, it just looked like you guys formed almost like a family unit. Well, it's like, I think it all came back to 2021, it must have been, the, 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 the COVID year the first, when we had the the four events overseas um, for the Challenger Series. And I think we all had to get the vaccinations and everything like that mm -hmm. to be able to travel. And the, the travel restrictions were so bad that we weren't able to come home that whole time. So I think we left in late August or September and didn't get home till Christmas. Wow. And you didn't really have a choice regardless of how good or bad you went in those events. So I think that year we had Cooper, Cooper Chapman, Connor O'Leary, Wade Carmichael, a few of the bit older boys just kind of got around we just kind of got around each other and I mean everyone was away from partners family mm. everything like that and we didn't really have I mean people could say like you're traveling the world you're living the dream but mm. that that was very tricky so I mean we kind of had to just get around each other and and have that team aspect even though it was an individual sport men's and women's and I feel like that's just kind of filtered through now and now it's just the kind of common thing we do the last year right uh, unfortunately fell off tour and then jumped back to travel with like Jacob, Morgan, Dill, Moffat, Kalani Ball, Mikey Madonna, George, Alice, the list goes on. So mm. yeah, just to be able to hang with the boys and have that Aussie spirit, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And um, I mean, everyone's got the same goal. Um, but yeah, to, to, to kind of do it with your close friends and kind of spur each other on is really, really special. It even felt like you guys, it didn't miss, you guys didn't miss a heat. You know, you no. if it panned back mid heat, um, to the support, all of you were there for each and every one Aussie of your heats. Aussie flag, you can hear, you can hear, the, it's like years ago, you'd hear the Brazilians in the background, you'd hear Philippe's old boy, you'd hear, you'd hear them and I think now, I feel like on the Challenger Series especially, we're probably the loudest, I think. Yeah, I think nice. people actually don't enjoy when we're in the contest area, we're, we're, we're pretty loud, we're finding a table to bang or something metal or the chairs or something like to make as much noise because I mean, We'll do anything to try influence the judges. I mean, yeah, there is mics yeah. around the athlete area, and um, yeah, I mean, we want the best for each other. And like I said, it is an individual sport, mm -hmm. but if you can, I don't know, try to help a mate or spur a mate on to achieve their dreams, um, it's pretty, it's pretty special. Yeah, I just think there's, I don't know, it just seems like there's no other country that's really doing that. You know, I mean, the Americans they had a pretty cool little posse last yep. year, and they all did really well pretty much all of them qualified by yeah. jet and then jet went on to win the world junior title yeah, it so worked like it worked i mean that's what we were trying to do like we were doing that same thing i mean unfortunately last year i think it was only jacob that that got on and my, myself and morgan were like a heat away or mm. something um so but i mean that doesn't mean we're going to stop what we're doing i mean we're going to have i mean at the end of this event we'll have a bit of a better idea of i mean 
of, 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 of who's going to qualify. But from what I've had a look at the rankings, there's definitely a few fresh names within that top seven in our region. Mm -hmm. um, so it will be cool. It'll be a few fresh kind of guys coming along to kind of hang with the crew and um, kind of show them what it's all about. I think when we were younger, when we were doing, when it wasn't regional based, I mean, everyone kind of was able to travel. Um, so we kind of got to learn about all that and stuff. And then now it's kind of like, I don't really see myself that old, but I'm probably one of the elder boys <laughs> in the crew of, of what we're doing. So now it'll be exciting to show the boys around and show the boys what the Challenger Series is about and, yeah. and kind of blood them in and, and, and show them, yeah, this is what we, this is what we do. And I know start that precedent that if you're, on, if you're able to be there to watch someone's heat, that goes a long way. Like if you come in from a heat or, or go out for a heat and all the boys are there, it, 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 it gives you that bit of extra, extra go as we see Ruby. The, the Olympic skateboarder. Yeah, so <laughs> Ruby, she's just, she's so impressive. I don't even think she's 16 yet, but she loves skating and obviously loves surfing too. But you know when you get the bug for surfing and yep. your whole life just becomes surfing? She's one of the best skaters in the world, but she was darting it back home to make sure she could compete in this that's event. That's crazy. Oh, that's so cool to hear because, I mean, yeah, skating. I mean, they're very, they're very kind of simpler sports in a weird way. Yeah. Like, but I mean, I think, like, I mean, I think if I was a skater, I'd have a lot more feet and knee injuries than this. Um, <laughs> you fall a lot harder. But um, no, nah, it's cool that she can come back from such a big event like that, like an Olympic qualifier, and still make it here to surf fest, the QS five thousand, and and surf. I mean, that's that's cool as. Yeah, she's one of two women in the world trying to balance both. Sky Brown is the other. And uh, Sky Brown serves for Great Britain but has elected Asia to be her qualifying oh, wow. uh, region. So she spends a lot of time living in Bali, uh, Japan. I spent a bit of time with her last year throughout the Asian region. She's definitely one of the dominant competitors uh, coming out of Asia. But... Similar to Annie DeSantos, represents Brazil yep. but elects Australia as her region to qualify as we see the Novocastri and Maddie Poole. Wow, she must have been watching the conditions pre this heat. She's found these little right runners. Unfortunately, a little fall there at the end. I think as she kind of came in the screen, she had a nice nice carve there. I feel like she probably would have got a first turn out the back. But a bit of local knowledge potentially coming into play here. I mean, as we've seen in the last few heats, she ha everyone kind of has been going um, left. But she's managed to find a few little rights here. Yeah, this I love this first turn. It's a really nice carver. She patiently waits for it and then just pushes really hard, drives all the way through and split the peak on this one with Piper Harrison. This is where she accidentally hit a bit of bump of water. But yeah, she's finding some rights that we haven't seen too many ladies do this morning. Um, but, you know, you're touching on before how it's a Nori swell. Uh, so it's more of the lefts coming through. And it's not typical, Meriwether? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I love home, I love Meriwether, but on a day like today, without a broken foot, I probably wouldn't be surfing the bank that we're surfing. Yeah. Um, I'd probably go look elsewhere. There's a, a few other places around here in Norris as well that would probably just be a bit more a bit more opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, we are very lucky um, today to have the bank we have out there where we are surfing. We're kind of off, as you can kind of see behind the competitor on the beach, there's a drain there. Mm -hmm. So that kind of forms a bank so we get a bit of rain. So we're lucky to have this bank. I mean... A Norris, well, if you if you are here in New, in Merriweather and you are not watching it on the webcast, you can probably see the rocks getting quite filled up, mm. which is kind of where we're predominantly surfing. Um, but yeah, we're a little bit up the beach, but we're getting some good conditions, great winds. I mean, I think we look like we have fun waves all week, and then looks like the weekend gets a bit trickier. But I mean, that gets down to the nitty gritty of the draw, and yeah. there's some big swell coming, so that that's kind of exciting. And looking at the forecast, is there any day in particular that you go, wow, we're going to see great merry weather? I haven't looked too much. I'll, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll have a look after this heat. I mean, up. you haven't been surfing, so nah. I wouldn't look at the forecast nah, either. I haven't, really been, I haven't really been able to. There's not much, not much ocean action. I mean, I go up for a coffee every morning and, and, and watch the conditions. But, yeah, the, we're looking at the forecast in advance. I don't really, unless I can look six weeks down the track when I might be able to surf. <laughs> yeah. But, um, nah. I'd say, but I mean, I think it's nor'east all week until till the weekend. Um, I mean, the weather patterns look good, so the wind should be pretty good. We will mostly kind of get a nor'east wind like yesterday. Every afternoon, will be mm -hmm. offshore, and then as the hotter it gets, it kind of will blow nor'east, which 
we'll make it more north, but I actually came up and watched it last night. I finished gym training and I watched Dakota Walters get this right um, on this bank that we're on. He did the biggest three turn. I think it was three or two, two or three turn combo with a huge air at the end. I was tripping. So <laughs> it shows that when the wind does come up, there is some some sections to be had. But this morning we've got nice, clean offshore conditions and the girls are getting some scores. This heat's a little bit slower than yeah. the last, but you kind of see a couple sets on the horizon here. So, Well, even this morning I was watching the free surf and... Caius King opted to surf this left bank and managed to thread a barrel from no start way. to finish. No way. got barrel today. All right. And then got and then on the that gnarly little inside section did the biggest backside Rio and rode out on the sand. I was like, wow. and then paddled back out. I was like, why are you paddling back out? Yeah, when I was Come I, in. I would have told you you were tripping if you said someone was going to get barrel today. There you go, Maddie. Nice first turn. See if she can get a second. Nice little second. She might look for the. There is an occasional nice little inside link if you. Kind of in a weird way, he's kind of got a bit of a Huntington link today. Like you yeah. can kind of find a weird little, weird little bit of foam, and it'll kind of bring you to the shorey. But I watched a few of the men's heats yesterday, and I did see a few of the boys get detonated on that little yeah. shorey. So um, yeah, there was a bit going on. Yeah, it felt like it was either your best friend or your worst enemy that shorey yesterday. If you could time it, it was great. But this wave from Maddie, I love how she didn't give up on this wave and made sure she got more points on the board because she has momentarily moved down to second she needed a three five four on the back of this way but this was a pretty meaty section for ruby i love how she went for it unfortunately couldn't bring it back around but yeah i feel like she's probably still adjusting from the time zones ruby she's yeah. <laughs> i think she might have done the bottom turn on dubai time and hit the lip in newcastle time that's yeah. why she kind of had a bit of bit of a gap in between but yeah coming back from dubai you definitely wouldn't be definitely in the australian time zone yet i wouldn't think i mean traveling with jet lag and stuff yeah. it's definitely not that fun and when you i don't know i mean any sport wouldn't be fun but especially when you're battling the ocean and mm. and the feeling of the water and everything like that that definitely doesn't make it very easy yeah especially from not surfing for a few weeks as well and purely just skating and uh doing her runs she's honestly if you get a chance she's incredible to watch yeah, i'll have to go have a look in my little break here yeah and hopefully she makes the olympics um we will all be so proud of her. North Melbourne Board Riders gets behind her a lot, um, even in her skating career too, which yeah, I that's think cool is as. really cool. But, you know, this is a co-sanctioned event too, Jacko, and I think this year the level of the Asian region competitors has just skyrocketed. Yeah, I've actually seen a lot of... Um, I mean, like I said, I haven't been in this regional series for a, for, for a little while, so, I mean, I was actually wondering why we had such a huge Asian contingent in this event, but now that kind of makes sense with yeah. the co-sanction. So, I mean, that yep. that necessarily means that they can generate points from this region. Yeah, so, so, I've kind of seen Kian get third at... Avoca. Avoca, which yeah. he represents the Asian region. Yes. Correct? So, that helps with his points. That's really cool. I mean, that's... I mean, one of the first events I ever won in Japan was a was a co-sanctioned event too. No so way. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, that's that's really cool. I mean, and that heaps... I mean, we have... I mean, you'd probably fill this event with just Australians anyway, but it's really cool to have it. Still have that international feel. I yeah. mean, that's what Surf Fest has always been about. Like, it was before we've gone to this regional series, it was international. Mm -hmm. So to still have internationals here is really, really, really cool. I think it's so important as well to compete against an international field because once you get on the Challenger Series, it's... I think it's good to know how different people from different regions actually compete. Yep. Um, because I feel like Australians will compete differently to Brazilians. Brazilians will compete differently to the Europeans. So I think it's really cool to get some reps in against an international field. Uh, but yeah, so we get to go to Krui and Nias oh, and sick. Taiwan. Yep. So they're all co-sanctioned events and we get to go and compete in Asia. Um, and then to return the favour, they get to come here and compete in our two that's biggest so events. That's so cool. I mean, that's, that's that kind of... Because it, and especially the younger guys that are starting the regional series, it does give them that mm. bit of practice for traveling before um, jetting off when they do crack the challenger series. You're not kind of going there kind of blind and going, whoa, I haven't really done much travel yeah. yet. Um, that's great. So, so you got Krui, what was it, Krui, Nias, and Taiwan. Taiwan. Uh, but that might change soon because, yeah, I was lucky to go to India last year, which was really cool. and. Yeah, all the Indians there were so keen to get some Australians over That's there. That's sick. And yeah, that'd be cool. Draw. I did. See, I, I did see that. Was, yeah. So that was a. Was that an Asian? 
That was an yep. Asian yep. event, yep. and yep. it was a 3,000 or 5,000. I, I can't remember. Did Hiroto win that one? Was it? Uh, Tenshi Awami won that one. Tenshi's a, he's a hammer. Yeah. Well, as we see, a hammer there. Fortunately, kind of just let her board get away from her there on the backside rotation, only needing a 2.66 with a minute 40 left. I feel like she'll be able to break away and still maybe potentially yeah. get a wider one. That's not a massive score. So really low scoring affair in this one. A lot of one turns. No one turns that we've seen as powerful as Taylor Green's in that last heat. But we've got a lady coming up in the next heat called Oceana Rogers. And she is one of those surfers who from last season to this season, I would have to say is probably the most improved in the no women's way. division. She is looking so on point. And uh, I always nod her backside. She's a goofy footer and I think her backside, uh, I nod it towards Oki. She's yep. got a really cool I have heard that. School. She's got a really cool little wind up on her back end. Yeah, I've actually does. seen a little bit of her surfing. So I'll have to watch the next heat as we see Maddie using priority strategically at the end. Bit of a bumpy one there. Let's yeah. see if Piper can kind of get away or Ruby's out the back with priority. And paddle. So you think that would be a priority change? That's probably, yep, it's a priority change. So Piper does have a chance here with 30 seconds on the clock to... Doesn't look like there's much. There is a set on the horizon, but it is moving super slow today. Yeah, I'm not sure it'll get there in time. You can see Maddie Cattle and there's Ruby's dad supporting Got the on vantage the beach. point. Yeah. So they're more down the Merriweather end. So they're kind of looking up into it, like more looking north. Um, so, of course, it is the less running down the beach. They're in a very good spot to be watching it. You'd almost be wanting to be watching it there because it's coming down. Today, I wouldn't be watching it from up the beach straight on. You'd get, yeah. a, bit, you'd get a bit lost preheat, I, I, I feel. There we have it. Unfortunately, the time was the enemy for Piper Harrison. So Ruby True, the skater surfer, taking the win and uh, Maddie Poole doing it for Newcastle. So we will be back for more action. Jacko and I are stepping out, but uh, you'll hear back from us pretty soon. So come back after this short break. Welcome to Sydney. A place to feel alive. To feel free. Come feel it all and feel new. Adam thought he'd never get Sarah camping. How wrong you were, Adam. Wait! course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder it brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins newcastle race course home is where the track is so. welcome back as you can see we've got a very happy competitor on screen there ruby true getting the victory here in the round of 64 the newcastle race course women's pro getting underway on day two of Surfest 2024, presented by Reflections Holiday Parks here in the booth. Ronnie Blakey sitting alongside none other than Matt Hoy. Hoyer, beautiful day, mate. 
Merriweather delivers once again. Newcastle delivers. Thank you, Sir Fest. It's good to be back. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no worries. Morning, Ronnie. It looks good out there, actually. Like three, maybe four foot sets. Full Norris swell, though. But, yeah, there's a heap of closeouts. But if you get on the end of one, it looks pretty fun. It does, yeah. And ultimately, you know, any time, um, you know, you're, you're competing in an event or you rock up as a spectator, you know, you'll take what you can get. And, and right now we've got clean conditions, beautiful morning. Yes, there is the odd closeout out there, but there's some good sections too and, and the odd corner. So we're seeing some reasonable scores laid down out there in the lineup at the moment. We've got Oceana Rogers out there in the red. Giselle Sinclair is going to be in the blue. She's already got a two-point ride to her name. And from Japan, we've got Kanon Takahashi in the white. And uh, we've both been over in Japan recently. Oh, a little, little snow mission. Let's see nice what uh, she can do here, Takahashi. Nice big snap there on a bit of a closeout. But that's there's a couple of rights where they're sitting, actually. The rip's going out down there. And I watch it for a bit. There's a couple of, like, a rip bowl right, but... It's only on the in-between as the sets are sort of closed out as well. But if you get on the end of a left, it's pretty fun. Record, nice and clean. Record number of Japanese competitors yeah, in the draw here that. at Surfest yeah. this year. And um, we've been, you know, obviously that is a, a result of, you know, the regions uh, allowing uh, Australia, Oceania, allowing the uh, surfers trying to qualify via the Asian regional QSs the opportunity to come here and compete. Same goes for surfers in our region they can go collect points over there but it's cool it, it gives this event the international flavor that it's always had yeah uh, it's always attracted an international field and uh yeah i think it's it's really off the back of you know obviously some some great representatives on the ct uh, representing japan in conor o'leary and uh of course kanoa igarashi but also i think the olympics had yeah, a, a lot olympics to do sure. with with driving surfing uh well, that used Surfing to be huge. Surfing numbers through the Japan. roof. Yeah, big time. There was CT stops in yeah, Japan. Yeah, two every yeah. year. Maybe yeah. three, maybe the first You used year. to love your time over oh, there. Oh, yeah. I used yeah. to get last every, and, every and time. And you'd compete in the contest, too. <laughs> exactly. That was, the, that was the offset thing I did over there. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, no, it's a, it's, a great, <laughs> it's a great place. Really, you know, strong surfing culture and good to see it kind of reignited. Uh, and on show for us here at Surfest. Yeah, for sure. They just, well, it said that there was a million surfers back then, so I can't imagine how many there are now. Yeah. So good. Good for the sport and good for Japanese surfing, for sure. And a good start for the Japanese competitor in this heat. 3.83, so... For that, that one big snap. Yeah, just the, the one turn. So uh, let's see how uh, Kanon Takahashi uh, goes yeah. here. Let's have here another look at it. Good clean wave and just attacks the lip and sort of free falls out of it. So Mitchell was saying that yesterday that when he was coaching, um, especially the women, I mean, and Caruso, he would just say, mate, just go out there and do one huge turn and they're going to give you the score. Yeah. Or, or give you a good score, yep. which is a good thing, like, as everyone's looking at now. So good for the, good for the women. Yeah. And, uh, one yeah. huge turn. It's, it's the, really the big story of the uh the season at the moment is is the continued evolution of, of women's performance um you know it does start at, at the top on the championship tour and then it, it trickles down and and there's a new benchmark i, I don't think the sport's ever going to be the same after what we saw at and pipe and, uh, sunset. and sunset yeah you I know agree. both venues it, it was kind of groundbreaking stuff um, there's always been those trailblazers who like big waves, who go out and throw themselves over the ledge. But I think what we've seen in these first two events yeah. is, you know, it, it's going to open the eyes of, of these youngsters campaigning at the moment. They're going to be like, oh, that's that's, that's what level. you need to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, inspirational. You really, watch, I think, around, when the, the next big swell uh, thunders in here on the, uh, the east coast and probably in this region too when you think about where Molly Picklum's from on the central coast yeah, not too far away um, I'd well. say a lineups are going to be choked with uh, young stars absolutely having a, a crazy dig at it and as you said that just like lifted the level and inspired all these young girls to, to lift their level as well so good that was awesome to watch that was a that part that was a mad day of surfing yeah. That last day. Oh, it was so entertaining. Yeah. And, and I, I kind of found it more compelling than uh, the men's event in a lot of ways, just Whoa, how strong it was. So we were talking about individual turns and the uh, 
This the opportunity beauty. that the competitors have to, to turn in those those strong numbers. And this is uh, Taylor Green. So, Or was that in the last heat? She, yeah, a couple of heats so. ago. She, um, she really sort of, I think, put a, all the competitors on notice and said, hey, you know, this is achievable if you've got the commitment in your surfing. So uh, look out for that. But uh, it looks like a nice little corner here for Takahashi, who's looking to back up that 3.83, multiple moves. It was a bit of a sleeper, that ride. Bit of a flat one, but I think the in-betweeners are the ones to get today because the sets look like they're just really lined up. The bank is not, it's not really a proper bank. Mm. It's just a straight bit of sand, really. There's, I think when the tide drops off, the wind stays offshore, there's going to be some really fun lefts up a bit further. Yeah. But it's a really straight bank. For sure. So, so yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun conversation, uh, the, the evolution of the, the performance for the women and, and just, you know, oh. the, the gap's closing quite a bit now. And, you know, it's just uh, amazing to see in those uh, treacherous conditions just how well they surf. But, uh, you know, we've seen that that progressive approach really, like, coming on uh, as well. This oh. ne next wave of, of youngsters are throwing it above the lip. Well, they've seen the level, like you just said before. They've seen the level that they had to get to now. Yeah. And it's gone up a notch. Yeah. Especially in waves of consequence, like in Hawaii. That's like, you know, the surfing's always been there when the waves have been good and perfect. He's a great wave for Red. Her first wave, look at that. She found that right rip bowl. Snap, two big snaps. Yeah, clean style. Mm, little cut down at the end. That was a good wave. Oceana Rogers there, just uh, finishing that one off nicely. Kind of composed in the opening stages here. Even though she was the last surfer to get a ride, she's banked the bit best number so far, 5.5. It. Yeah, it's good, so good. Like we keep saying that that, that day in Hawaii, both and and sunset too, it was just crazy how good the women were. And, and I think I think the two were needed it because yeah. you know um, Carissa Moore, Stephanie Gilmore, both so deserving of taking some time out. You think of the fact that they've you know basically been in title contention the both of them for the the last sort of almost fifteen yeah. years. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a lot. It takes hey. a lot of focus. Carissa actually has never finished outside the top three. Re ever? Ever. <laughs> that's crazy. She's yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. So, uh, yeah, she's... And a, imagine if they didn't have just the last thing at this, she would have probably won more. Yeah. If she has, like, it's like once, but she's, uh, you know, right up the top end wow. all the time. But she, uh, you know, both of them taking some time out. Yes, Carissa was in that event, but Steph wasn't there and for the, that next wave to step up performance wise and, and, and probably do things that even Carissa and Stephanie haven't done at those oh, locations no chance they've done it um, then you know it's just a, it's a remarkable so uh, it's going to be a fun year to watch it all unfold and, and you kind of just get the feeling that they're all, all right. kind of on the edge of their seats going there's a little bit of space at the top end no, here. No, there's a, a huge amount of space <laughs> at the top end here. That's exactly, exactly. what they've done. It's so good. Uh, so just under 14 minutes to go here. And Takahashi hanging on to the lead. A couple of low scores for her. Oceana Rogers is actually the uh, the danger surfer at the moment with the 5.5. The but let's take some uh, time. We've got a wave approaching, but we can also check in with Ruby True, who got the victory in that last heat. How are you, Ruby? Good, thank you. Good to be back at Newcastle. Yeah, I love it here. The waves are super fun and, yeah, just having fun, having the day of school. Oh, my God. That, <laughs> Lucky you. I mean, at your age, that's the dream, isn't it? You want to get through heats and stay alive in the draw because you've guaranteed yourself another day off school. <laughs> yeah, for sure. How awesome. Uh, how was it out there? I mean, it looks beautiful, but, you know, from a, a competition point of view, how, how is it? Is it tricky out there? Yeah, it's a little bit tricky, but it's pretty fun, like, just fun surfing with all the girls and only having three people out there, so, yeah, I can't wait for the next eight. It's been a, a busy, competitive schedule for, for all of you, your surfers who've been travelling around. Uh, how, how have you fared in, in some of the events in the lead-up to, to Surfest? I've only done, I think, one or two events. I did the Urban Surf one and uh, trying to balance out with skating as well, so... Just doing comps when I can and, yeah, just enjoying it and not taking it, like, super seriously. So, yeah. And are you you're doing some skateboarding events as well? Yeah, I actually just came back from Dubai for the um, 
last competition of phase one of the Olympic qualifiers and I got fifth, so put me in a good spot to qualify for Paris. Oh, amazing. Wow. And what's the, I mean, like we know what the venue is for the surfing and, you know, that's going to be a massive challenge for a lot of the competitors, but what's the, the setup going to be like for the skateboarding? Have you even got any insights on that yet? Uh, no, there's actually nothing up for what the park's going to look like. They'll just build it probably a few weeks before and then we'll just have to go in and skate it and compete. I know uh, as surfers, every time we visit a town, uh, obviously we're looking at the lineups, but you've got your kind of focus on a couple of things. My, uh, my eldest son was a skateboarder and we, we couldn't go to any town without him going, we've got to go see the park. Um, have you skated here in Newcastle a bunch of times? Yeah, I've skated um, Newcastle Bowl just um, across the road. It's super fun. It's been there for ages and I knew a few of the skate and surf crew up here, so try to come up here a bit, but yeah, it's good. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, talk to us about just the, the standard of um, surfing. Uh, we've been talking about the evolution of performance from the women. Did you watch the start of the championship tour this year and what did you make of the performances from the likes of Betty Lou, Molly and Katie Simmers? Yeah, I mean, they're amazing. Like, such an inspiration to all of us young girls coming up and wanting to, like, push ourselves and go out at those waves that are, like, super heavy and, like, try and push women surfing and yeah Katie Simmons she was ripping out at pipe and same as Betty at sunset like yeah it was great to watch. It sure was and do you think um, it, it kind of gets you thinking about when the next swell arrives and, and inspires you to, to tackle some of those more treacherous conditions does it does it inspire you to go a little bit harder? Yeah for sure it makes me want to do like oh they can do that so can I so yeah I think everyone gets a bit inspired and be cool to go overseas and like have the opportunity to surf some of those breaks. And is is water a little bit easier to wipe out on than concrete? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love it. Well, <laughs> Ruby, uh, an amazing start to the event for you. Congratulations on earning yourself not just uh, one day off school, but, but a second day off school. Good start. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Uh, and, yeah, all the best in this event, but also in your quest to qualify for the for Olympics. Skateboarding. I That's love so it. That's so cool. She's doing both sports too and not stopping. Yeah. A lot of people stop one and go, oh, I don't want to ruin that one to ruin that one or either or. Well, when, you know, I think it'll work well for, for Ruby. You think about those um, those surfers that we were mentioning before, uh, you know, Sierra Kerr in particular, great skateboarder, yeah. uh, unbelievable, and uh, probably could have chosen to go pro and, and was sponsored as a skateboarder yeah. uh, as well. But uh, also uh, young Aaron Brooks, can skateboard as well uh, that's a lot of a big part of her her training for that that progressive element of her surfing and we, we've seen how well that works so there's a picture of the bowl and, there it uh, is yeah iconic she'd, there the she'd never get to lay day then <laughs> there's yeah. no chance lay days for her she's going i'm going skating then it's perfect it's iconic right they reckon it's really hard to ride you posted up there a few times no, I've had a go. i got so hammered i was oh. like i'm never doing that again yeah what, the, I the thought I was rock killing in it. the trucks? A little, <laughs> little screechy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I got, yeah, I was hopeless at it, but that's good. Yeah, it's, it's good to say. They need right a couple there more. Right on the coast, too. Yeah. It's so cool. Uh, they should be having, like, they should have a uh, street track there, too, and a, and a, I don't know what you call it, snake track, snake track, Oh, too. the pump track. The pump track. They should have it all there, I reckon. Do, they're do a lot a little of fun. skate zone. Well, Oceana Rogers, during the interview, she started to really build... Um, Hoy, she's got a really nice technique, great style. I, I mean, I, I'm thinking of all the amazing goofy footers from this region that uh, that I've seen over the years, and you can draw some comparisons there to say Simon Robinson or a Craig Anderson. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, even Chatty Edza. Chatty Edza. Then um, past from the past for sure. But uh, yeah, Oceana's like building nicely here. Five point five on a first wave, six point one seven on a second. Yeah, that was in the interview. It was a good one too. And that's better, I think. Yeah, that one might even go better. So, yeah. you know, she's kind of standing up. and Here it is again. Look, good looking left. Oh, gets a bit stuck. Nice turn, though. Waits for it. Nice turn here. Good little carve. And it finishes perfectly. You know wow. who I, I didn't she's mention then? Whose style kind of I, I saw in there for a second was Ryan Callum. Oh, Callahooney. Yeah. Calzoni. True. Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he's uh, unfortunately yeah. had a, an early loss over there in Portugal, but he'll be back. 
the big dog. He has got that big finish, uh, of course, from Sunset. So yeah, this should be sweet when you uh, start thinking about the cut. You th- yeah, that's, I was wondering about that. Is that big finish there? And then, but is that is that going to? I mean, it's sure it's going to help, but it's a, is it consolidating? Yeah. Well, it hasn't Don't consolidated know. him yet, but there's a couple of people that had an absolute barry through those first yeah, few events yeah. of the season. So yeah. they've got he's ahead of them. But there's going to be a big shift up. Um, just thinking about the men's event for a second over there in Portugal, because there's a lot of surfers in the top ten that got absolutely punted yeah. out of the event yesterday yeah, early. Right. So there's going to be a big shift up. I tell you, who's still going? Ethan Ewing. Uh, so. That's going to uh, help his chances of getting right up there in, in that top five pitcher again with a strong result, but he's into the quarters. Well, oh, look at the end of that one. It just, it just got to be right on the spot. That was a good wave in the end. Such a uh, great time of year, though, for, for fans of competitive surfing, Hoy. Yeah. Like, you can get 24 hours of this <laughs> stuff at the moment. Straight from uh, the uh, Surfest presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. You get home. You only get an hour or two of yeah. reprieve. Your eyeballs only get a little rest, and then you're straight into Portugal. And then, uh, obviously, there's a lot more other sport going on. Uh, Footy's the, back. Footy's back. The rugby league's back. How's your boy going? He's Still all right. Over there? In, yeah. uh, he's in Hull. In he's, Hull. Uh, played good on the weekend, actually. He's, uh, he's, a bit, he's a bit homesick, I think, but he's oh, going mate, good. How yeah. can you not be, especially with Surfest on? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, was, here's the first replay. Wave. Oceana, she did drop a, another 6.07. These are the highlights of, of her top rides. That might have been a, f- a f- best one. Oh, I know that was about. That was in the break when, when the interview was on. And then this one. Nice couple of cutties. This turn. And then the finishing turn. Great. Throws a tail. Perfect. Great combination. I thought the first one was just as good as all of them. Yeah. Well, it wasn't too far yeah, off. Not too far off, but half a point in it. But uh, yeah, really strong stuff. And uh, Takahashi still hanging on to that second spot. Giselle Sinclair's the surfer with some work to do at the moment. Needs a four to jump up into second, and priorities working against her at the moment. But yeah, Tex, uh, what's the go with the season over there? Does it run concurrently? Yeah, same. same they're in four games in. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so early season, yep. and, and how's the team? How are their chances this year? They're really average, are they? <laughs> yeah. and what other yeah. Aussies is he playing with over there? Um, I don't think there's any other Aussies. Oh no, Okenbar's just gone out. The Jade Okenbar's okay. playing the team, but there's all the other, there's a few Kiwi boys in there, but no other Aussies. How was your trip over there? I know you went and uh, spent so some good. time and watched they, a few they, games. They call it hell, but I had a hell time. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It was so good. Met some really good people. Just like same sort of people as Newcastle, you know. Love just it. into their footy and love having a beer. And, yeah, it was good. Oh, had a ball. Surprised you came back. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't afford to stay there. That was the problem. Oh, for <laughs> sure. But uh, I always love getting caught up on how uh, Tex is going. Yeah. He's going good. Oh, that's good to hear. Good game on the weekend, if you're right. Perfect, mate. Four minutes remaining here. And uh, yeah, let's see what Giselle can do. Pressure's on. These are, you know, the numbers, especially for uh, Oceana, are, are really strong just compared to what we saw through the first few heats of the day. We saw a lot of low scoring heats. You know, 12.24 is a healthy it number. Is. That's that's even good for yesterday's heats. There was not many people getting over a 10 yesterday and still getting through. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, let's see what oh, Takahashi can do with there. With priority, so, too. Yeah. Gives that priority now to Oceana, who probably doesn't need no, it. That's what I was going to say. She doesn't need it. Maybe she's she'll. fine. And we'll see if Giselle can. So stay. consistent too. Giselle's got a, an opportunity here in these final three minutes to really capitalise on that mistake. Well, he, this one looks like it's going to double up. This it, first one. Yeah, it might like have a, a bit, bit of a, a corner. Yeah, does have a bit of a corner. Oh, yeah. I didn't look at it. Nah, it didn't really kind of stand up. But have a look on the outside here. Three minutes to go. And, you know, it does look like uh, the young Japanese competitor is going to get back into this lineup. So uh, she's not going to uh, miss the opportunity to potentially capitalise on one of these ways. But this set might be almost too big. Yeah. Oh, Oceana's going to swing and have a look at this section. She's going to draw off the bottom straight up into the lip. Nice hit there. 
clean oh. form oh. and she hammers the lip again. That's a big combination on the outside. That's a huge combo. That and was sick. She could have nearly got barreled at the start. She doesn't make it through to the inside, but I doubt it's going to nah. matter. I think the uh, the 6.07 is going to be out the door. Something big is going to drop there, and it is a dominant first round effort here wow. from rips. Rogers. Yeah, she's strong. Yeah. I mean, to... to Watch this. Really made the most it's of this first barrel. section. Read it well. Oh, attacked it. And this turn, too. Straight into the lip. Wow, that was sick. Yeah, that was great surfing. How old is she? Do you know? About. I don't know. Wow. Well, we'll find out in the interview after, yeah. for sure. Oh. Mate, she attacked that wave. And nearly goes Good. excellent. 7.83. Oh. Just the two turns. I think that's underscored. Ah, just for me. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> by today's standards. But yeah. if we see a few more waves like that, you know, we, we might see a couple of scores go into that excellent range. But great surfing, really clean. Love the style. Solid and wave too. Exactly, yeah. And attacked One of the it. She didn't hold back. Like some people would, like, would tap that and just to get the score, but she attacked it. Yeah. One of, the, uh, one of the bigger waves we've seen in the, uh, the opening days of competition here. But this is the surfer that has the opportunity to, to save herself and get a place in that next round. Giselle Sinclair needs to stick this. Tricky section. And she just gets knocked off there. She didn't need a whole lot, just a four. So potentially riding out of that manoeuvre was going to get her over the line. But let's have a look and see what the first turn's like here. Hoy. Nice step. Gets a bit caught up on the foamy bit and then hits the lip and gets, gets a little caught up again. She needed a... She needed a clean four, combo. Oh, yeah, that would have been nearly it if she had a rode out of that second one. Yeah, so 50 she seconds to go. stuck on both turns. Though. And now she's on the inside. So, Kanon uh, Takahashi is up at the moment. And uh, she might just uh, be okay here. She's going to hang on for second spot by the looks of things. Uh, unless Giselle can quickly scramble back into position. She's kind of just beyond the, where the waves are breaking at the moment. So she might get a shot here with 20 seconds to go. Doesn't look like there's much on the horizon, though, when she was paddling. Look. No. Nah. And she's not in a... This, in the this next spot. little lump, potentially. This is, she's got to go this one. She, uh, like, she's even looking. If it's, even though it looks like a uh, straight closeout, it's backing off now. Yeah. And that's going to be it for Giselle. So uh, Takahashi there hanging on for second spot. But what a magic performance from Oceana Rogers, the, uh, the standout performance so far today in the opening round of the Newcastle Race Course Women's Pro. Great style. Killed Great it. technique. Looking forward to uh, having a chat with her. We're going to take a quick break. More coming your way in just a moment. Maddie's last night's sleep was spent trying to look up relaxing wave sounds. Tonight's actual wave sounds. Holidays, Iron Man, outdoors, Iron Man, whoa, all bars, suspension, lights, roof rack, can't be a quick recovery man. gear, oh. the light. under Iron Man, mate, and under Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do two things at once. Oh, no. <laughs>
effortlessly refreshing. Byron Bay Brewery Premium Lager. Go with it. Welcome back. Well, Oceana Rogers getting some big hugs on the beach and she deserves them, hoy. Exactly. How good's that from the fellow competitors too? Like, good sportsmanship. Yeah. Love it. And, uh, yeah, that, that's that's the performance of the day so far. But the day's young and uh, we've still got to mow through quite a, a few heats, another 10 heats. 11 if you count this one uh, of the, the round of 64. But that was uh, impressive stuff. Looking forward to having a chat to Oceana. But right now, let's uh, introduce our next players. Sage Goldsbury's out there in the red. Sarah Baum is out there in the green. She's had great success in this event before. Uh, Anri Matsunu is in the blue. And Urara oh. Saito is going to be in the white. That so a, a couple, of, a couple more Japanese jump. competitors in the mix. Bit of an awkward wipe out there, as we see now. Saito taking this one, and uh, it's starting to stand up a little bit for her here. If she get a big major turn done, she might make this one count. Just sort of backed off toward the end there. Just went into the channel, didn't it? Off the bank into the channel. Looked like it was going to stand up for her, and then just went flat and foamy. How's that wipeout? She jumped right like where the lift was, and a board looks like it nearly hit her in the back of the head. Yeah, a little awkward. Let's see what our Sage was able to do during the break. Look at these waves. Oh, oh, that was a shame. Just couldn't set that rail. But you, uh, we've seen a lot of Sages surfing over the years. You know, one of the standouts, Sarah too, just with a bit of well, shoe, shoe foot there. <laughs> what happened then? Just uh, oh, slipped off her tail pad a little bit. Oh, this is that flat one that goes a bit foamy. And that wipeout was... She jumped in a really awkward spot. This. Tries to get around the section and then jumps. Look where a board goes. Oh. oh, man, that was dangerous. Look at the waves that just came come on, though. It looks really fun right now. Yeah, awesome. I, I love the, uh, the, the morning little uh, ritual here at Surface, all the competitors out there. I mean, it's all, uh, the same at every surf event. You get that warm-up session, but here you've got... The surf club and the cafe right out the front and everyone just stands there just just loading the fuel in Loaded. and um yeah just there was a great show this morning the free surfing was solid the conditions look nice and and they're maintaining at the moment as we see sarah she's this seen one that through she's seen that right rip ball yeah. oh that was a good wave finaled here before and um wants to to go one better she's a newcastle resident yep and, uh, yeah, she always has a lot of support when she's competing here. Uh, originally from South Africa, though, Durban. Uh, but, yeah, she's a great surfer. Unbelievable. Surf City SA. Yeah. Really? Well, it's moved down, though, hasn't it? It used to be. Crazy. So that right's just to the left, on the left-hand side of the screen. There's a r little rip bowl there where they've all been paddling out. And there's actually a couple of fun waves in, on the in-betweeners. Hoya, are you a uh, like a surf line guy, a uh, bomb weather guru? Are you constantly checking no. um, the forecasting sites, or are you more like me and you you go down and you look at it? Yeah, and go it down. Looks and good. Look. You go for a surf. Yeah. Or you, Willy weather. You hear whispers. Yeah, I hear whispers. I get my mate to tell me. Yeah. Simon, he, uh, I've got a few people I rely on. <laughs> <laughs> and just go, mate, what it's going to be like. Because I look at it and say, think I know what it's going to be like, and I never get it right. It's always a day later I get there and go, oh, it's not that good. So what's Simon's prediction on what's going to come our well, way I'll towards the end of the week? Not the law, different Simon. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I'll get on to him. <laughs> I'll ring him tonight. He actually it. rang me yesterday, so I'll ring him. Yeah, because I'm hearing good things. I'm yeah. hearing Fridays might be a, a little challenger, but it's looking pretty good. What, yeah. what I always love at surf events, you know, I, I can... I can deal with a couple of onshore days, but yeah. when it gets really small, I find oh, it a little frustrating. That's the I, worst. I find it frustrating for the competitors. So this is a gift today. You know, you've got quality conditions. It's really clean out there. No shortage of opportunity, even with four surfers in the lineup. Yeah, I think tomorrow looks exactly the same as well as today. Just a little bit smaller tomorrow, but I don't think it is if it's this size today. That's just my prediction. I like it. <laughs> I'm going to go with it. It's a vibe. Look at this one. Here we go, Sarah. Oh, oh. 
Someone else had priority. Yeah, she, she surrenders and gets out of there. And uh, Henry is trying to work this one over. Hit it. Wow. Oh, almost kind of uh, had a, a decent recovery after a wobbly start to that ride. But you've got to remember, too, what's on the line. I, I mentioned it earlier today, Hoy, and you can speak to it. I, I mean, back in the day, even... Um, come back to that point Sage Goldsbury here and she does well to hang on to the finish there nice big so turn. didn't get too tangled up in the lip but but almost kind of placed that board in such a critical section of the wave that it was difficult to ride out of so she's done well look at these waves oh, oh Sarah tucking what? into the barrel finding some cover still locked in gunning can she punch through the curtain oh no that was oh, so close but a hell of a lot of travel time she got the view Got the view. It was a wow. good read on that first section Wasn't too. It? She really strong. Got around the next one maybe. Instead of, I don't know. Look, like, look. pitted, comes out. No, she had to. Oh wow. Oh, Tony just didn't make it. Wow, that would have been mental. Yeah, really. Uh, it's sort of a really nice start to that ride. It's a pity because she came through a, a pretty good bit. She should get some sort of a little score for that. Yeah, I think she'll. Uh, I think she will. Um, we're waiting on the number to come through. Sixteen and a half minutes to go. While we uh, we wait to get that number and see some replays, let's check in with the uh, star performer of that last heat, Oceana Rogers. What a what a morning for you! That looks so fun out there. Um, yeah, it was pretty fun. <laughs> Talk to me uh, uh, about. Just uh, what your goals are for, for this event. Uh, obviously, when you, you look at the, the regional qualifying series and, and you look at all of the, the regional qualifying series uh, happening around the world, this is, this is probably the biggest of all the QSs. It's got the most history, the most prestige. Um, is that in the, the back of your mind when you're, you're pulling the Rashi on here? Definitely. Um, I haven't really had a good result here before. I think I've been here like twice now. Um, but the past two events I've been in, the Voca and the Port Stevens, I've had the best results I've had in the, the QS League so far for myself. So I'm hoping this event I can better it. How hard is it, uh, you know, starting in the, the, the very first round and, and just, you know, when you have that big mountain to climb and it must be good to just take those first couple of steps up that, that huge hill? Yeah, definitely. Um, I know starting in the first round, everyone's a little bit kind of anxious with it all but I just think of it as more heats to surf more practice into it and um, no, I'm just happy that the waves are really fun <laughs> oh awesome your equipment looked uh, so sharp out there Oceana it just looks so fast and ready to do whatever you wanted to, to do with it uh, what are you riding I'm riding a CI Fever um, it's just my normal shortboard and it's brand new <laughs> it's going good so far Beautiful, yeah, it looked fantastic. Um, that one quality set wave that you tapped into, I, I mean, getting a wave like that on a, a day that's kind of shifty is, get, it, it, you know, there's got to be some nerves when you paddle into a wave with so much potential in it. You, you must have been happy with the way you surfed it. Uh, definitely. Um, I looked up at the tower and saw that I had priority over, I think it was blue, and I thought I might as well take it. I think I had two all right scores to start with, but... Yeah, I thought I could maybe better my advantage with it and it ended up being a really fun wave. Awesome. Yeah, there, there must be those heats where you you find yourself moving on through and, you know, it's a, a little bit more of a grind, but putting up such solid scores, a, a heat score total of 14, um, that's the way you want to get it done. It must build a lot of confidence for you. No, it definitely did, but um, we'll see how the rest of the event plans out and hopefully I can get a few more of those waves come through. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity to be, give a shout out to uh, any of the people that have helped you get to this point. Uh, um, go for it. Thank Dad. He's the one that's travelling with me. We drove back from the Goldie last night, so he did most of the travelling for me while I slept. <laughs> but um, I want to thank O'Neill and all of my sponsors for helping me get the equipment for today. Uh, well done and uh, best of luck in that next round. Uh, we loved your performance. Matt Hoy was just absolutely eating it up. It was Ripping. fantastic. So <laughs> good to see. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good on you, Oceana. Good and, luck. Uh, yeah, I think she's going to have a fun Mate. week down here at Newcastle if she keeps laying down turns like that, Hoy. And the, what, the conditions are going to suit her if he's running left, that's for sure. Oh, so, so good. Yeah, it's going to be good till. And she, she got a good one on the first one on the back end, so she's got a good week ahead. 
Just keep getting waves. While we're in the interview, Sarah Baum got going again. Look at these waves. Oh, ducks under this one. There's just... There's something in Sarah Baum's approach, even though she didn't even do anything on that wave. You could tell. The, the depth of her rail turns, the, the amount of face that she covers, even just looking for the opportunities on a ride. You know, she has a, a really good read, a lot of experience yeah, too. a lot of experience. How come she's in round one? I've got no <laughs> idea. <laughs> she must have put an entry in like, look, oh, that was so well read. But she didn't come out. She got a 3.83 for it, which is I like because she sort of, she navigated the first section, didn't come out of the next one, but she sort of got a little score for it, a backup score. Sometimes that's a one, which yeah. I don't think it should be. Lise Cooper on screen there, gearing up for heat seven, limbering up. Yeah, I wouldn't think Sarah would be in round one. Yeah, Sarah's, um, yeah, I mean, she she's so accomplished. She didn't qualify last year. Yeah, she's, she's always, you know, a star performer in any event that she competes in. Yeah. She's a real surfer surfer. I just, I just feel like, um, you know, even away from competition, she's she's yeah. a competitor. You look at the lines that she draws and you're like, wow, that's that's kind of clean. That's classic stuff. Wow, oh, the girls are ripping in this. They've come right on. I think they saw the performance in the last segment. Right, oh, we have to step it up here. Yeah, some pretty good numbers from... Uh, Sage Goldsbury here, 5.17. That one will probably be okay too. Sarah's, you know, looked fantastic, been on some big waves, but hasn't really converted them into big numbers just yet. But, yeah. I mean, she looks to be in good form. She's just got to let go of some of those those big turns. Just get a wave that doesn't close out. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Hoy, always fun diving into the history of this event, mate. Uh, I mean, you've played host here to so many uh, travelling surfers over the years, but that was a you know, what, what was your best result at oh, Surfest? Oh, it's hopeless. I don't think I could, maybe in was ninth. It, was, it, was it the pressure oh, of no. the hometown crowd, or did you just always get swept away in the festivities? Yeah, festivities, and then um, it used to be at Newcastle, so we weren't even like you know, at Merriweather. Someone would have won it, I reckon, earlier than Jacko did. Yeah, but if it was at Newcastle every year, so we'd sort of go, oh, we don't really know the beach and. Didn't surf yeah, in there that much. How no, often are you surfing over there? Twice a year, maybe. Yeah. Still now. It's really funny, um, you know, just uh, probably to compare a, a different location of that is, um, say, Taj Burrow and Main Break Margaret River. Yeah. He's never surfed it without a jersey on. Ever. Never. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? And he's won it, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah, is <mate>. it. <laughs> wow, ever. <laughs> Something like that. I think he's... Surfed across the bay a few times. Yeah, but, yeah, for sure. But no, I don't think you spent a whole lot of time in that lineup. Well, but it's just one of those things. Yeah. Your, your locals, your local. Yeah, exactly right. But uh, no, it's uh, so much history though, and, and obviously you, you know, as a grom, you would have turned up to the uh, the I, event. I surfed in it since day dot. Since day yeah, dot. Yeah. So the very first yeah. uh, edition, you were uh, you were part of it. How old were you? Trials, uh, fifteen. How good. Yeah. And did you come up against any of the big dogs back then? No, I had. I got a double interference with Robbie Page first heat. <laughs> yeah, he's a big dog. <laughs> I know. He would have been. Well, maybe second. I might have got through one heat the first time. And he goes, don't worry, Hoy, you'll be world champ one day. <laughs> and I was like, so That's so good. Oh, yeah, so Pagey, good. what a legend. Yeah, what a legend. That's so cool. Yeah. But, yeah, so you, you've witnessed amazing things. Um, I was talking to... Jess Starling uh, about her favourite surface moment. Have, have you got one that, that sort of sticks out? I reckon um, when Ock beat Curran in the final that one year when he knew the subtly was coming up. Oh, that's that, that was amazing, yeah. Had the call from yeah. down the coast yeah. that it was coming, yeah. like a, a yeah. full buster. Yeah, it's coming. Someone from Cronulla rang, he's just hit. He's like got two ways off the bat when it was offshore. Then the subtly just hit and then he was done. It genius. was sick. It's genius. It's one of yeah. the best things ever. Yeah. And Ock in his prime too, just on fire. Yeah. It was sick. That's probably my favourite one. But there's been a lot. The waves, a couple of years here, the waves got really good and Meredith was pumping. And a couple of years back, it was Pogos. That, I don't know. Yeah. Remember that? It was pumping. Yeah. And one year, Meredith was really good too. But I think the ones at Newey when it first started at the main beach were the ones I remember the most because it was packed. You get 100,000, well, I don't know if 100, but 50,000 people probably packed. Yeah, it was huge. And it was one of the, it was the biggest comp of the whole year. It, it's probably the, you know, 
we love that it's so accessible, especially for these young traveling surfers that their families can tune in from around the world. But yeah. back in the day, if it wasn't on free to air TV, the only way to see it was to come down. Yeah, so be there. Um, inevitably, right. you had these monster Massive crowds. crowds yeah. NBN used to put it live on the Sunday, I maybe Saturday and Sunday. But they not. used to put a, a crane off yeah. the bars and, <laughs> yeah, and get crazy, that was man. the only way to get the drone view before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that was fantastic. Yeah, it was an epic event. It, Huge. It always is, and uh, I think this year is going to be a special is an epic one. Event, yeah. it, it builds so so beautifully this week because you end up with youngsters who, who maybe don't have a chance of cracking the top end of the, the regional QS ranks to get onto the Challenger Series in, in these early stages, but... You do have a big opportunity as a, a newcomer to this draw to make a name for yourself. And, yeah. um, you know, surfers like Oceana Rogers in that last heat, you know, uh, they're going to be marked. They're going to be like, oh, I remember that performance. Yeah, you know, exactly. Because it's, it, it is such a big event. But, you know, taking you- nothing away from the uh, other events on, on all the different regional uh, schedules. This this event just has the the history yeah. and it's Prestige, it's yeah. got the honour roll. So yeah. it, it's it is the most important qualifying series event in the world. Yeah, for sure, I agree. And it's the last one here too before everyone you know gets a qualifier. That's what I was talking about yesterday. So we're going to get some scenarios of who can make it, who can't make it later. And mm. like if we go deeper into the contest, get scenarios of people who can or can't make the. Yeah. The, They've become a, a pretty apparent. I've got to have a look at the numbers on the women's side, but um, I know that sort of seventh place um, on on the men's ratings at, at the moment, you know, you, you, you need around 6,000, probably 6,000 or one oh, okay, points. Sweet. That's what you've got to get to, um, which is just a basically an indicator in these early stages. That might grow uh, yeah, depending yeah. on the success oh, oh, of the top do. seeds. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, everyone is probably going to be uh, improving their points tally because this is only the second QS5000 that these competitors have had the opportunity to surf in. So there'll be a shift up, even if you only make one, Where two the heats. First one? Uh, the big uh, event over in Taiwan. That, uh, oh, was that f- yeah, yep. this region? Yeah, right. The, f- the one oh, that, that Dakota Walga. Walters won. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's uh, he's going to be fun to watch in this event. But, I'm, yeah, he's, he's shored up his position already yeah. with uh, a good run. Over there on the, uh, so the, there's been a five, the Asian qualifiers. 5,000 and two 1,000, is that correct? And then this is a 5,000. Yeah, there's, and there was a couple more events, obviously, uh, on that Asian regional oh, qualifiers. Yeah. Uh, they had the event over in Nias. Um, the, they had a wave pool event in Korea. Oh, Car- that's Korea. right. Yeah, and then a wave pool here too. Yep. That's but right. uh, this is, you know, you can make up so much ground with some success in this one. So... Uh, it's going to be fun to watch it play out. Five minutes to go here. Sage is out in front. Sarah's hanging on to that second spot. And Sarah's kind of lucky because she's certainly one of the favourites and a surfer capable of going from the first round of the event all the way through to the final and challenging for the win. Um, but she hasn't put it together in this one, but she's put it together a little more than her Japanese opponents. Yeah, she just got that. Like the 383 was that long, long tube she got, so comes out of that she's well in the box seat then that other that one turn with a flick out too was the four or five so she's done pretty well but she's been on the bomb waves but they just haven't panned out for her no that's right so sage uh, on screen there love taking in the uh the the drone vision just seeing the Being water good, clarity yeah, I know. and how good the beach looks yeah it looks amazing could be anywhere we have some beautiful beaches in this town that's for sure yeah I know. I mean, the focus is really Merriweather. This is where all the action happens this week. But some good sandbanks around too. Yeah. Um, at some of the other spots. Yeah. Knew it's pumping. <laughs> There'll be ways in town too, and nobbies and stuff. And then down the coast will be good. Up the coast today will be fiery. I know that. If anyone's got a chance to get up there. Yeah, I was there. Uh, there's really good waves on the points. Yeah, it looks real good up there. Up too. north too. Yeah. Oh, Hockey's freaking out. Yeah. So uh, just down to three and a half minutes to go. And you'd think at this point, you know, we've seen some pretty good surfing from Sage and she's only managed to 5.17 as her best wave. So for our Japanese surfers, like, they may need to, to bite these requirements, uh, take two bites at the yeah. requirements. Oh, so they, they need to get a wave pretty soon. 
the uh, real soon. The tough thing is they're also sitting below Sarah and Sage in priority, so it's going to be it's going to be difficult to dig themselves out of the, their situation at the moment. Right, he, here's one right here. What she got? Good looking wave. Big first snap. Fits yeah. The ball. Not bad at all, oh. Urara Saito. That that might been have been the move that she needed to make in order to chip away at the requirement. She might have a chance in the final stages here. She mightn't get back out either with this rising swell. Tide's still coming in. Watch this. Good looking wave. The first bit anyway. Good first section. Big snap. Comes in out of the lip and then the wave just closes out. She pencils out of it. Yeah, that was a. Uh you know, a, a pretty solid hit, considering it was only really a, a one-turn wave. But uh, in order to get a, a six out of it, she would have had to go yeah, upside huge. down. Exactly. So she's dropped her best number, 3.67. The requirement now, 4.66. It's attainable with two minutes to go. But She uh, needs to get two of those turns in. Anri Matsuno is, um, is right up against it at the moment. She needs to get two of those turns. And that wave didn't really allow it. It looked so good when she took off. She did a good snap and then it just closed straight out. I said that bank is so straight down the end there. So hard to get on the end of one with a, with a wall. Yeah. And some of them go so flat, they go straight into the channel. It hits the bank and then straight into the channel, the smaller one. So it's really hard to pick. The conditions are awesome, but it's just really hard to get a good one. Big shout out to... The, uh, the crowdfunding partners behind Surfest 2024 presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. Congratulations to Newcastle Racecourse and uh, their involvement in the Women's Pro this year. And uh, they do have a stall down here at the event, which you can go and check out. All the, uh, the, the big names too in the mix, uh, a lot of the surfers have, are representing uh, businesses that took part yep. in the, uh, the surfers draw and uh, they can potentially win some, some money back too yeah. if their surfer goes all the way and, and makes those finals. So How good's that? look forward to watching that unfold. But here we go. Uh, a chance here for Unri Matsuno, and she needed to go really big. She was chasing a mid-range six to get herself in front. Sarah, again, hasn't had luck connecting with quality waves in this lineup, but still is in a position to progress through this heat. 35 seconds to go. That's blue. That was a good wave for Blue. She did take a couple of good turns and then just didn't get to finish it on the closeout. But first two turns are good. Wait, and then Sarah looks like she's going for those real hollow, yeah, she's throaty ones. Just keeps know? getting those bigger waves, but yeah. they haven't really sort of uh, given her the opportunity to truly open up with one of her, her high-quality turns just yet. But, you know, she'll look at this heat as a, a bit of a shocker, yet she's still progressing. That's, yeah. you know... That's the stand of her, of her surfing. She hasn't really done anything. <laughs> and she's still going to get through this one by the looks of things. So uh, the heat is a wrap. Sage Goldsbury breaking through for the uh, the win, moving on through to the next round, along with a former finalist in, in Sarah Bond. We're going to take a quick break here. More action coming your way from Surfest right after this. Back home, the Wilsons always use proper dinner etiquette. Out here, the stick will do just fine. Effortlessly refreshing. Byron Bay Brewery Premium Lager. Go with it. The race course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder. It brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins. Newcastle Racecourse. Home is where the track is.
open spaces. Open arms. A place to feel alive. To feel free. Come feel it all. And feel new. Holidays. Iron Man. Outdoors. Iron Man. Whoa. Uber. Suspension. Lights. <laughs> Roof for a camp. Recovery man. gear. Oh. The light. Hunter Iron Man, mate. And Hunter Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> can't do two things at once. Oh. Oh. Welcome back to the Surfest, presented by Reflections Holiday Park 2024 Surfest. I'm excited. I'm Jesse Starling, joined by Mitch Ross. I'm kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Yeah, really good. Thanks. We're um, into another great heat. Here we go, Elise Cooper. I actually grew up surfing with Elise. She is from the Northern Beaches region. And that was beautiful. Yeah, it was a massive turn there. From um, the, the Manly area, is yes, that right? Yes. Yeah. I believe Queenscliff. Yep. But I don't want to bite my tongue yep. because of the little rivalry that goes yep. between North, not little, the it. big rivalry. <laughs> I did some years at North Narrabeen. Oh, yeah. And uh, I remember I'd always see her in the lineup, and I thought she was from North Narrabeen, but that's a definite no no. No, it's a definite no no. Yeah. She does train with Maddie Cattle, yeah. though, who is the coach of North Narrabeen. That's Sage Goldsby on the screen. She took out that last heat, so we'll talk to her soon. But uh, yeah, Elise has been working with Maddie for. Four years now, I want to say. That is an OG, right? He's an OG. He's he's one of the best coaches I've worked with because, first of all, he deals with the facts, mm -hmm. which is cool. He deals with the numbers and he, he'll give it to you straight. And um, growing up in Narrabeen, that's all I've ever been used to is people giving it to me straight. And um, I love how he'll just tell you how it is. And if you're not doing it, he goes, mate, I, you're not doing it. Like, why even bother paddle back out? Like, just either go out there and do it or don't go out and try again tomorrow. Like, I just love his approach to coaching. And, um, yeah, he's definitely one of the best ones going around at the moment. Good look away here for uh, the white. Gosh, that's a really good wave. First carve was huge. Nice little carve here, hoping to get something steep down the end. Moving and shaking. Perfect conditions for uh, day two of competition. Waves are actually cooking. Now, as you know, I am from here, so this, this is actually, I know you're from Narrabeen, right? Yes, yep. Okay, <laughs> so an analogy, right? Everyone far and wide, they think Narrabeen's a perfect left-hander, right? Okay? <laughs> yeah, yep. So it's nearly like what we're seeing today is probably, because we're, we're used to a near right-hand point break. It's not a point yeah. break. There's two sections of reef, but it's not a left-hander. No. But it's doing a really good job. It's doing a great <laughs> job. It was yeah. so funny you say that. I was sitting up with one of the judges, Todd, and he was like, it's almost doing what Narrabeen does yeah. out there. And I was like, it kind of does look like Narrabeen a little bit out there. And it's a nor'east swell. And I was saying Narrabeen it would be absolutely mm -hmm. pumping today. So if I do disappear for a few hours, <laughs> you know where I've gone. Uh, but I remember surfing this wave. I was doing the Pro Junior at Redhead maybe two years mm -hmm. ago or two or three years ago. And um, it was, I got knocked out, but heard that it was pumping here and yep. it came and it was the first time I'd seen it like this, similar to this, the left hand kind of three or four turn left. And yep. I was like, oh my God, I love this wave. <laughs> it's just like, felt like I was at home because I'm so used to surfing the right hand. Ripoff. I have a feeling you're, you're pretty stoked to surf anything regardless, good yeah, or bad. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I get the impression that you're easily entertained. I am. Um, yeah. I'm quite easily amused. And, uh, you don't live at Narrabeen anymore? No, right? no. So I moved to Cabarita uh, mate, three years ago this year. Oh, my gosh. You happy? I love it. It's so good. Um, and then, but I was just talking to Shields, actually. I was going, how's the swell up the coast? Because all I'm hearing is in the afternoons, it's just pumping. And mm -hmm. it's kind of all of my Instagram at the moment. It's just oh, perfect gosh. snapper. And I saw Stace getting barreled at Corumban, I think. And mm. Why the post code change? Why did you move up there? Uh, so my sister and I moved up for... Uh, so it's just the girls? Yeah, it's just true. Oh, wow. You've grown yeah. up. Yeah, it's just us. Um, oh, it, well, it's changed now. But the first six months, it was just us. Mm -hmm. And um, we moved up to train at the HPC. Yeah. And uh, about two weeks in, I gave Dad a call. And I was like, Dad, I'm, I'm not coming home. Wow. Because winter was warm. It pumps all year round. They're not tempted to move up? Uh, well, then they eventually did. Oh, so they're up yeah, there full time too? Yeah, they're up there okay. too. Yeah, so oh, so, but you guys were the... We you, were the... You were busting down the door. Yeah, we were the starters. Yep. And then, then the week we moved up, the week after Sydney went into that 
like five month lockdown. Yeah. So True and I, we couldn't go home anyway if we wanted to, um, but I just fell in love with the area. And if you think about it, a big chunk of the surf industry is up there. Mm-hmm. And so when you're paddling out and Steph Gilmore, Macy, mm. Mick, they're all out there. It's pretty hard to run away from that. Yep. Um, even though there's so many amazing surfers at Narrabeen too, um, but the warm winter definitely was the convincing point for mm-hmm. me because sometimes that Narrabeen lake water is icy. Yeah. And even in, like, up the coast, there's a little bit more sort of consistency with the South yeah. Rolls down at the northern beaches. It gets a little bit frustrating. There's nowhere. I mean, Narrabeen is, like I said, it loves a Norris swell. Mm-hmm. You can get the car park right on a South yep. Swell or maybe the alley right, yep. but... It just all depends on the lagoon and the sand yep. and there was not very good waves for I think eight months I heard at Narrabeen. Um, but then I keep an eye on the forecast and the last two good swells I've gone home for. Uh huh, so awesome. I still go down. And, and you'll go for the challenger? Is that what Yeah, yeah, yep. I'll go down and be there and um, support and I'm in the trials actually Unreal. for it, so I'd love to get in that and um, yeah, represent Northy. That'd be amazing. What's more important for you? Here's a question. Yeah. Okay. So Narrabeen's on, you can be in the event or you can commentate it, but you have to choose one. What are you going to do? I think I would commentate it. Okay. Yeah. There you I, go. Um, so all those um, organisers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up. Uh, <laughs> That's epic. That's cool. Yeah, no, I, um, I love talking about surfing. Mm-hmm. And um, if you ask my mum and dad, I could probably talk to a brick wall if I wanted to, just for fun. Wow. So yeah, talking... Um, isn't an issue for me <laughs> but um and then throw surfing in there it's a good enough topic for you to yeah absolutely help. it's my entire life and my into my sister's entire life too and um yeah this is the first year we're both not in the draw so it's weird to be sitting on the other side of the fence mm-hmm. i think um but i didn't have fomo until it started pumping out there and now I have full FOMO. Yeah, it's not meant to be this good right now. So that's Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm surprised too. So everyone's happy rather other than you. No, I'm still happy <laughs> sitting here talking, but um yeah, I was I didn't expect it to be this good and I was sitting uh, on top of the balcony before eating my breakfast and I was like, Wow, these lefts look yeah. incredible right now. So pretty big score for Elise Cooper, five point five. That was one manoeuvre mm. wave too. Mm. Elise is taking a similar approach to what we saw Taylor Green do. I'm not sure if you got to see mm-hmm. her heat, but she got two sixes for one turn waves and they were so incredible. And I was sitting here uh, talking about it with Jacko and Jacko was like, that translates so well onto every level, the Challenger mm-hmm. Series, the CT, the fact that if you can find a steeper, bigger wave and just give that 110%, the scores translate all the way through oh. the rounds, which you would know as well. Being it's a, a pretty simple theory though, right? You just got to... You know, these days, big wave, even if it is a closeout all of a sudden, you don't have to do an air reverse. You can just yeah. do a big turn and the judges will, they'll go huge. Yesterday, it was um, it was pretty consistent scoring. We saw some of the biggest scores from one turn, a lot, you know, and old school surfing. I know um, the natural footer from the Central Coast, he surfed yesterday, he got a six and a, what's his name? But it doesn't matter. It was just one big turn of wave. And it yeah. was a, yeah, 11 and a half point total, which was, you know, that was probably like a top 10 score yesterday. Yeah, that was de- that would have been one of the highest. Ryan Haggerty. No, Ryan, gosh, Slattery. Oh. There you go. Gosh. <laughs> just R- going through the files. Yeah, yeah which there one it is. is. It? it popped up in my brain. But yeah, yesterday it was like that. Today it's going to be like that. And every event nowadays feels a lot like that. You know, there was a period maybe, I don't know, if you just go over the last decade or so, it feels as though the judges look for something different every, you know, every few years or whatever. Like you don't necessarily, ha- you ha- didn't need to be on the biggest wave, but if you did three dynamic turns, you get a big score. But now it's kind of sort of going back to bigger wave, big turn. You're going to get rewarded. I don't know. Um, it's interesting to see how it always sort of goes through phases. The yeah. whole um, the judging criteria. Well, mm. speaking of someone who. Uh, got the big waves did the big turn sage goldsbury took out that last heat sage congratulations that felt like you kind of had that power from start to finish ah uh, yeah it was felt good out there um it's pretty ideal waves for a comp so yeah um wish i got another i wish i got another wave it was so much fun out there but yeah no felt good sage i surfed with you yesterday out in newcastle and i feel like it was good practice because we were going left uh, all afternoon. Was that the plan to go left and then come here today and uh, use that as an advantage? Um, oh, 
I wasn't really sure what to expect because when we were surfing, I actually hadn't checked here yet. But um, no, I was pretty excited to see it was lefts today. Um, I love my back end, but it's pretty <laughs> exciting to get to surf with left, especially we've had a lot of rights um, through the QS season this year. So yeah, um, pretty fun getting some lefts out there. So yeah, to the surf- lefts are definitely best out there today. To surf this type of way, where does this kind of rank on the on the regional? Um, series is this sort of top tier if we're saying you know three to four foot left handers perfect conditions yeah yeah definitely yeah pretty pretty great conditions yeah it's um, really fun out here today at Merriweather so yeah it's good and um, <laughs> once, the, once the event's done for the day what do you get up to um, I don't know check out local cafes yeah, yeah the library <laughs> yeah go get some coffee Check out Newcastle, maybe a bit of vintage shopping. Oh, yeah, nice. Uh, bit of that. I don't know, then probably have another surf. It's pretty fun out there today. And Sage, from Phillip Island, you're travelling with fellow Islander Sophie Fletcher. How's van life going? Uh, it's been good. It's been long. <laughs> this is like our last week in the van, but it's a, it's a big van. It's like a, um, I don't know, you can stand up, big bed in the back. So it's pretty ideal. I'm surprised how well I've done, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so long in the van, a lot of cold showers, but um, have you been no, I'm the, loving it. <laughs> have you been in the event for a few events in a row? Uh, this event. Is it just this event you're in the van, or has it uh, been no, a few? No, no, like the whole, like, Aussie QS. Wow. Like. <laughs> yeah, they've been travelling <laughs> so together up and down. Since um, Burley, we've been in the big van. <laughs> and you're still yeah. best mates. Yes, we are. No, Sophie's real chill. So you deserve an <laughs> <Best> award. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Sage, and best of luck in the next one. And you yeah, might see out Newcastle for a couple more laps yeah. this afternoon. <laughs> See, thank you so much. So how was Newcastle? Was it fun? It was so fun. Really? And you know what? I was driving here this morning and I saw this perfect left roll through. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going there this afternoon. And now I'm spilling all my secrets on live broadcast. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people... Um, are there regardless of you spilling Yeah, secrets. yeah, that's a good Gets point. I'm busy. not the only one to know no. about Newcastle Beach. I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, Sage and Sophie Fletcher have been doing van life for a while now. And um, I just think that is the pinnacle of the QS, you know? If you've yep. got to travel in a van at least once doing the QS. It seems old school. That's really cool. As we see Holly Wishart there, nice little wave. A couple of uh, replays. This is the current heat leader, Lisa Spencer. That was big. This wave will more than likely sort of go into the, the sort of channel there. The right's over at that section of the peak. Mm. They do sort of fade away into deep water, but uh, a nice opening manoeuvre there. And it looks like it's a 4.17 for the last of red. Looking pretty good. 9.67, that's going to get you through the majority of heats today. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think, Elise, it was, yes, unfortunate that she didn't make that second turn, but the bulk of that score was already done on that first one. I love how... She's so patient off the bottom. I feel like she times her backhand really well. Um, And her forehand too, with that one turn being the 5-5. She's been doing this for a while too, you know. She's had a few uh, contest results. I remember she took out the Curry Pro maybe three or four years ago Mm -hmm. in some pretty solid conditions too. Uh, And she's had plenty of uh, wild cards into the Manly Challenger when it was there and made a few rounds. So Elise has just been one of those competitors who's always put up a fight on the QS. Not to put you on the spot, but is she in a position that she can make the challenges? I don't think so. So uh-huh. she needs uh, a pretty big result here. The The ladies' side for our region has been yeah, pretty much dominated by our veterans, um, mm-hmm. I would call them, Philippa and Paige. And I was talking to them last night and Paige just took the lead off Philippa coming mm-hmm. into this event. and. I was, and they're staying together. And I said, so Philzy, are we going to see a little rivalry between you two guys here? Is it maybe no talking at dinner time? Um, but they were like, no, no, we're just friends out of the water. Just so they're in a position it. that they've pretty much made they've it? They've pretty much made it. And then sitting in third is Ellie Harrison. But mm-hmm. uh, we're pretty sure she's confirmed onto the Challenger Series already. Uh-huh. Um, with Soph McCulloch and Luana already being on tour, they'll then take, if they fall off, they'll take tour spots uh-huh. and so then it goes down the rankings um, and Ellie was two spots out of the top ten. Gotcha. Um, Ellie must be one of the girls that we're sort of, you know, is she going to be like the next Molly or something? Yes. She's really yep. good. Ellie is really good and not only is she an amazing surfer, she's a really savvy competitor. Uh-huh. She, I don't, she just has one of those, you come across competitors 
and she's one of those competitors that always seems to make it happen. Yep. Even it could be two foot howling on shore closeouts and she'll manage to find a three turn right. Yep. And yep. She's just got that thing. Yeah, she she um I feel like we you see it in Zali Kelly too. I feel like Zali Kelly has that competitive mm -hmm. ability to create that. Uh, but Ellie, even on the biggest stages, I feel like doesn't crumble and she takes a cool approach to competitive surfing. I feel like she only ever surfs heat against herself. Mm -hmm. She doesn't really compare herself to the other women in the water and very um, mature. Yeah, I think. Mm. You think she'll make it this year, the CT? Uh, yeah. yeah, I think if she she got pretty close last year. She mm. got a few quarterfinals on the challenges. And um, I was talking to her on the weekend at the ABB and she's already training really hard to come back better this year. And I think if you're making some ground your first year on the Challenger Series, you take yeah. so much and So that was the first that. time she went yeah. away full time. Mm. Yeah, and she did well. And I feel like the first year is quite daunting. It's, it must be hard to do well the first year so I feel like she's probably going to soak in all that time and experience and then I remember I saw her um, create some moments in Portugal yes that event yes. yeah she was I thought she looked like she could win that but um, yeah she's super powerful and she just reminds it it might have something to do with the rip curl thing and the blonde hair but yeah but she reminds me of a Molly Picklum like yeah. just sort of the next coming she's yeah. definitely likened to Molly a lot um, and even on the weekend she represents Torquay board riders and there's, I feel like in every team in a board riders in a tag team event, you know, you've got your two guys who, or two or three surfers mm -hmm. who you rely on to get those sevens and eights. And then you might have your five and six surfers who need, you need to add to the total, but they're not going to be those guys who consistently get those scores. And out of all of Torquay's team, Ellie was one of the people who they relied on to get their eights, you know, which is, wow. I think is a massive role. And she dropped an eight, a seven. Like she was consistently getting high scores for Torquay, and they ended up making the final for the first time ever, and uh, got fifth or sixth, I believe. Wow! And uh, yeah, it was her and Tully. They Tully were the Wiley. big dogs. Yeah. Big dogs. Big turn there for uh, Wishart. One maneuver wave, not huge. More than likely, will probably re replace the three point two. Put a little bit more pressure on Bonnie Hills in the blue. Six minutes remaining in this one. Pretty tight for uh, second and third spot, as we see another little paddle there. Heat seven, the round of 64. Incredibly fun waves today. Sounds as though it's going to be like this. Bit of Groundhog Day, as we see replay, nice snap. Yeah, the waves are going to be similar for the next few days, and it sounds like it's going to swing around to the south. Mm -hmm. Maybe see the swell go from nor'east to south. Uh, it's going to be completely different. So when the swell swings from north to south, is that when we see the right-hand rip bolt yep. off those rocks come in? Yeah, but it, it is. Um, the, the issue we've got at the moment is it's, there's too much sand built up in the corner. Yeah, right. So it uh, depends how powerful and uh, the direction of the, the south swell when it does change. But it will, right now, obviously, it seems like a left sort of, looks like you know a consistent left peak just rolling down the beach. It will not be that when the south kicks in it'll be yeah somewhere behind the rocks should be really fun uh maybe a week ago 10 days ago there was a south swell and offshore wind is about six foot mm -hmm. and it was really good so yeah. that's a that is something that's um pretty exciting because it does go through patches when the when the the corner is full of sand it can be really bad the sand can be you know really uh just a, a deterrent but mm -hmm. um I think with the, the sand built up the way it is at the moment, it should be really fun. I think the beauty of Newcastle as well, taking obviously Merriweather into consideration, we do have to run the event here, but even just as a whole, Newcastle to me feels like one of those places that no matter what the wind is doing, the swell is doing, there's always somewhere to surf. I feel like there's mm. always a corner, there's always a clean wave somewhere. I've never come here and not had waves. Yeah, it's, it's pretty consistent. Yeah, there's... You know what, like we live in a, a place here, like Merrither is essentially protected a little bit by the south. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the to the right of the screen right now, up towards there, there's more sort of uh, waves you can surf that are protected by a south. Then you go around the corner where you surfed yesterday at Newcastle Beach. That's nearly offshore with a nor'easter. Yeah. Um, and then there's nobbies that's completely uh, protected from a, a southerly wind. So we're really lucky. We can hide from the wind, but uh, out here, the middle of the beach definitely prefer a westerly breeze yeah and uh you know bingo voila this is what we're seeing now it's pretty fun yeah it's extremely fun it's it's cool to see the women in pumping conditions you know we didn't think this is what we were going to get today um and yeah 
Newcastle, Merriweather, it's just absolutely turned on. And you guys have so many events up and down this coastline. Even you have a bunch of junior events at Dixon Park. Mm -hmm. um, so I just feel like... Even like sitting here, it's Mirror the Surfball Club. But if you go up halfway through the beach, mm -hmm. they've got a Malibu Club there. There's events there. I think it's Steel City Malibu Club. Then you go up Cliff. have got a really sort of boutique-y sort of board riders thing happening. Then at the end, there's Bar Beach and they've got the Reef Rats. So along one stretch of beach is about four sort of clubs, which is, uh, yeah, pretty cool and keeps things super competitive. That was a huge turn there from Holly Wishart and pretty hard section to make. It was one turn, but um, we've seen the theme of one turns being rewarded today. Here we go, Bonnie Hills from that Port Macquarie region. Strong first turn there. And I just, it feels like it, we haven't seen a lot of consistent I'm going to say two to three turn waves but a lot of really strong one turn waves and maybe on that last one from Bonnie's maybe she should have squared up a little bit more and focused on that one mm. manoeuvre um, because it seemed like that wave was one of those ones where you just had to capitalise on exactly what's in front of you. How annoying is it when you do that and you obviously surf heats mm. and you make that mistake you know how you go you know what I'm going to do one turn I'm going to get to yep. the next then sort of halfway as you're pumping towards what you thought there was another, there's nothing there. Yeah. And you go, oh, if I just rode that out and sort of, you know, stood tall, I think the judges would re yeah. reward a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. I just think, I think even living now basically on the Gold Coast, almost Queensland is what I call it, uh, and I'm surfing point breaks all the time. It's interesting to see how I have to now adjust from surfing a point break to a beach break mm -hmm. because it, Sometimes I'll go to a beach break and surf it like it's a point break and I'll, I've just rode through two turn sections because you expect to be more walled down the line and go, hang on a minute, yep. the sand's just here. I'm, I'm not at, I don't know, the alley or snapper anymore. So I think as well for anyone who surfs point breaks out here, you can definitely tell. I've never noticed it before, but now I have. You can definitely tell the, the point break surfers apart from the beach break ones. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking it might be time to go back to Narrabeen for a week or so and you surf can do beach it. breaks. Yeah, blocks. <laughs> yeah. Two weeks on, two weeks off. Yeah. Two weeks on. <laughs> yeah. We've got a minute remaining this one. Really tight. So a decent number there that for uh, surfer in white, Holly Wishart. You said it was good surfing. Yep, 4.57. So top score for the surfer in white. Bonnie Hill's now looking for a pretty decent number. That's where you've got to get really critical. A 5.34 today is uh, a tall order. Mm. Third priority too. So, yeah, a bit of a pickle for the surfer in blue with 30 seconds remaining in this one. Yeah, this is not the situation you want to be in if you are Bonnie Hill's because Holly Wishart has uh, just become her best friend. She's, I think personally, that is one of the worst feelings in competitive surfing. Mm when you need a score and uh, second place is sitting right next to you, not giving you an inch. And uh, they're the moments where you go, do I just sit and wait and hopefully two waves come through or do I scratch to get away? Um, I remember doing priority drills with Bo Mitchell actually and he would make us paddle up and down the beach um, trying to get away from the other person. But that is all she wrote for this heat. So congratulations, Elise Cooper. We'll be chatting to her very soon, right after this short break. Welcome to Sydney. A place to feel alive. To feel free. Come feel it all and feel new. Adam thought he'd never get Sarah camping. How wrong you were, Adam. Wait!
race course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder. It brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins. Newcastle Racecourse, home is where the track is. Surfest 2024 presented by Reflections Holiday Park. And we're in action. It's day two, round of 64, heat number eight. And I guess we started with three years by Mitch Ross, super coach. <laughs> Multiple time world champion. One of the goats. The goats. One of the goats. Chris Moore. Who's your goats? My goats. In, in women's first, then mm -hmm. males. Okay. Who are they? In women's, Carissa and Steph, you cannot go past them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a, also a massive Wendy Botha fan. Yep. I really am. Um, but a massive goat for me is actually Malia Manuel. Really? Yeah. I, I, she's she's probably my favorite surfer. Wow. Yeah. I know that's strange. Is that not just the surfing? Or I think the way she holds herself in and out yep. of the water is amazing. Wow. Yeah. And Molly. Molly's one she's of my mates, so I'll give her goat. a shout out. <laughs> she's a new young little goat. Yes. She's definitely... Well, actually, her win at Sunset... Um, I made her a goat technically in um, <laughs> the books because she was the second ever woman to win back to back at Sunset. The only other woman to do so was Lane Beachley. So she's not a little goat. No, she's a getting bigger goat. She's she's maybe a teenage goat yeah, now. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, teenage goat yeah. could possibly be a big, strong goat. Yeah, when it's all done. And then but for right the now men's, it's Steph. yeah, right now it's Steph. Mm -hmm. But for the men's, I don't think I think the best surfing athlete of all time is Mick Fanning. You're Mick. Yeah. He, the way he holds himself out of the water as well, Yep, mate, he's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Big turn there for Gabby Spake. That was nice. Big strong turn, 5.17. And why Mick Fanning for you? I, um, I just think not only is he an incredible surfer and competitor, mm -hmm. but he'll go on land and he gets the job done for his sponsors. He was kind of the first person, I think, in my eyes. I mean, I obviously haven't. I've been surfing since I was 13, but from all the time that I've seen, I think Mick was the first person for me who really made my eyes uh, aware to the fact that it, you need to be more than just a surfer. Mm -hmm. And I think he does that job so well and that he'll be relevant forever, I think. You know, a lot of people drop off tour and you slowly stop hearing about them, but Mick Fanning, I think the, because of who he is on land, he'll be spoken about forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really cool. And uh, so, are you the type of girl that goes home tonight and watches Portugal? Like, I am a massive surf yeah, fan. So you're watching yeah. it all. Yeah, yeah. I'll. I was actually just mesmerised and talking to um, even Shieldsy just before, going, "What's the swell like up the coast?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm. I'm a surf enthusiast for sure. <laughs> what about you? Who are your goats? Um, maybe Andy Irons. Oh um, yeah, he's amazing. John John Felipe, and then probably. Steph, Carissa, mm -hmm. and who's my little young goat? Um, I don't know. That's about it at the moment, I think. Okay. Top of my head. I love it. Um, I love him, Mark Richards, too. I should say him. Sorry. That's bad. Oh, yeah. Mark Richards is... He's king goat for me. Yeah. 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 In this heat, we have Gabby Spake. So Gabby's from the Northern Beaches region, so that's for Long Reef. And I've represented the club at the ABB over the weekend, so she's had a massive couple of days. Are her legs still burning? I'm sure they are. Mm. I feel like my Achilles and my calves, I don't think I'd be able to walk if I did that run multiple times. Um, and then Sophie Fletcher is actually van life buddy to Sage Goldsby. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, so another Phillip Island girl. And she has her own uh, company called Sophie Fletcher Designs where it started out her making stickers to go on surfboards. These, So her designs, her drawings, she turned into stickers. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it kind of started out and it's it's taken off and now she does clothes. Really? Uh, she does massive stickers to go on vans. Uh, she's one very creative and talented lady. And Is it called so Sophie Fletcher? Designs. Uh -huh. Yeah, Fletcher. and she travels up and down the coast, goes to markets. And yeah, she's um, it's really taken off and people are loving it. I actually, my water bottle is not here, but I have one on my water bottle. Wow. Yeah, she's a really just lovely human too. I feel like everyone from Phillip Island is just amazing. And then uh, Jada Thomas, she's from down south. So she's kind of from the Shell Harbour region. Surfs for DP Surfboard, so a local mm -hmm. shaper down there. And uh, she is still a junior and not someone we've consistently seen in events like this. Um, so I feel like this could be potentially maybe even her first 5,000. Gotcha. Big opportunity, big moment. 
We saw a lot of that yesterday. Uh, you know, we only had the males yesterday, but there was a couple of, there was a couple of, you know, groms. You yeah. Know? I know Felix Byrne was in it. Cade. Um, Kelly? Yes. Cade Kelly was in it. I think he was the youngest maybe ever. Yeah, he's 12. 12. So he's the youngest. I saw some stat that he was, yeah, maybe the youngest ever or one of, but, um, and he got through his heat. So, yeah. Yeah, he's, um, he's actually a local from where you surfed yesterday afternoon. Oh, amazing. That's his spot. Do you have much to do with the Grums around here? Are you doing um, any coaching? Oh, well, I've, I've worked with Jackson Baker for, for a long time. Yeah. Um, then there's, I, I do some stuff with Ryan Callanan from time mm-hmm. to time. Um, there's, there's other sort of kids that I, I support, but done some stuff with Ocean, who's probably the best. Mm-hmm. Um, Ocean Lancaster? Yeah. Yep. How many oceans do you know? Um, is it I, Ocean Girl? Is there there's ocean? an Oceana Rogers uh, yes. and she an Ocean yeah. Curtis. Uh-huh. Yeah, Ocean Lancaster is incredible. I could watch him all day. Um, oof, he's he's so good. Yeah. Yeah, he's so good. You would you would probably um, you'd know where the level is a little bit better than me because mm-hmm. it sounds like you're psychotic with chasing <laughs> this thing. Um, in the what? most po- positive, <laughs> um, complimentary way. <laughs> But uh, as far as I kind of know, I think Ocean is, yeah, right right up the, you know, he sits at the, the table with all the best. Yeah, I think the juniors coming through Australia right now are some of the best we've seen in a long time. You know how, I, you know how every junior range kind of has one or two that you go, oh, yeah, that'll, that'll go pretty far. But I feel like this juniors... There's so many the, when you look at it. The that Av can go Brothers. Really far. Oh, the ba- Loki and Barlin, the Cullens. Yeah, yeah. they're incredible. Uh, but we're going to cross down to Elise Cooper. Elise, that last heat was incredible. You won that heat, similar to a lot of girls have won that heat today, just by the back of one strong turn. How are you feeling? Yeah, I got pretty lucky just to get um, an early wave, and I was just kind of hoping just to stay on my feet. And yeah, that yeah, I got lucky because I didn't get more than two waves that heat so (laughs) and we could see that you're down there working with Maddie Cattle any insight into what he gave you before you paddled out for your heat um yeah there's a few things honestly couldn't tell you right now just because they usually go with me it goes in one ear out the other but no Maddie's great um he's been helping me a lot over the years and he's patient and he puts up with me so yeah he's, he's great and you've been doing this event for a few years now. You know uh, the stakes of what lies on the line here at Surfest. How are you looking going into the challenges? What's your rank? Is there? Have you done the numbers? Is there a certain round you need to make? Um, honestly, I think previous to this, this year has been a bit of a write-off. So I'm going into like these events with no pressure and just hoping to, you know, jump a few spots and improve my ranking. And yeah, every. You know, every heat's a bit of a confidence boost. So, yeah, I'm kind of just chilling. And if I make the challenger, I make it. If I don't, try again next year. Unreal. And uh, your board looked really good, particularly on that first carve and the left-hander. What are you riding today? I'm just riding a Channel Island CI Pro round tail. It's just a bit of an old faithful. And, yeah, it goes really good when it's really steep and punchy. So... Yeah, it was a last minute change and yeah, it worked. Is it a regular short board? If so, um, what's the dims? Um, I think it's 5.9 and yep. something something. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, I've just got two really good boards under my feet and yeah, just kind of depending on the conditions, I just pick and choose between both 5.9. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty regular board. Um, I think just the round tail kind of gives it a um, bit of better response time and stuff. Unreal. And um, now that your job's done for the day, what are you going to get up to? Probably just get out the sun, grab something to eat and just keep exploring Newcastle. It's pretty beautiful down here. And yet this comp's starting to feel like a holiday. So hopefully (laughs) keep making heats and it'll feel like an even better vacation. Absolutely. Well, uh, look, we wish you the best. Rip and then. Hopefully you can bring it again tomorrow. Thank you. What a girl. Yeah, she's... um She's so cruisy. <laughs> she, she could win an event and be like, yeah, yeah, it was fun. You know, she's just so cruisy. But um, I've got a question for you because I'm quite curious. I've worked with a few Northern Beaches coaches, mm-hmm. but my predominant coach was my dad. But I'd love to know what, what's your coaching style? Is there anything you can tell us? Oh, gosh, good question. Um, I sort of began, I, I, um, funnily enough, um, Alyssa's, 
coach, Matty Cattle. I worked with him for Everett Hurley. And that's oh, how yeah, I sort of... of course. Yeah, so I, I've known Matty before. He was even thinking about being a coach likewise yeah. for me. But um, um, you know what? I never even thought about doing coaching until Carissa um, approached me to do it. And um, sort of I just figured it out. I sort of based everything on what worked for her. Mm -hmm. So it was always the different individual. So it's a really sort of complex question. But with the Carissa, it was, oh, it was so many different things. Um, it was... Uh, you know, from it was technical, it was it was psyche stuff, it was yeah. heat preparation, it was it was her actually growing up in Hawaii and not being very comfortable with surfing um, beach breaks like this. Oh, really? Yeah, this is this is pretty much where it started. I think the first um, event I went away with Chris was in France. Yep. France or Brazil, because it was shifting beach beach breaks with I, which I kind of felt uh, pretty comfortable on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, if it was a one wave, like a, a Honolulu Bay or something, Carissa's really comfortable. She yeah. could do really well with her eyes closed. But when there was all sorts of mystery to a lineup, that's where I'd sort of, I'd help her out the best, I think. Yeah. That's so interesting that it was something that's so common to us, beach breaks, mm. was the thing that she kind of struggled with the most. Absolutely. Even... Um, I have a role with Team USA as one of their coaches, and I was in uh, Puerto Rico last week. Oh, amazing. Yeah, me and Shane Dorian are the coaches of the team. Oh, amazing. Super random. but um, And the conditions over there were really shifty beach breaks, where it was. And, uh, yeah, Carissa was sort of, you know, questioning her, um, you know, her skill set on these beach breaks and, you know, yeah. where do I sit and, you know, can I push her over there, push her over there. Yeah, it's pretty – and even Caroline Marks, who was a part of the team, she has been around long enough to know that Carissa is someone that sort of struggles in that department. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, over the years she's got much better at it and she's yeah. won a handful of events at beach breaks. But, yeah, so it's a real sort of complex question you ask. Each athlete's different. Yeah. Um, yeah, Kanoa Garashi last year, he had his own sort of um, questions for me, which I had to sort of, um, you know, cut up and sort of spit out ideas that I think <laughs> would work, help for him, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's really fascinating working with different athletes. It keeps you, keeps you honest to, and, you know, you never stop sort of learning yourself. Yeah. So you feel like, do you feel like you take your, the athlete's strengths and then reapply it where they're feeling weaknesses and yeah. just tweak it from there? Yeah. Even, you know, Jackson Baker, he's, he's I, I, I'd probably be speaking, I, I shouldn't actually go into, you know, the strengths and weaknesses, but mm. each one of them have got weaknesses. So with Jackson, he's got a few weaknesses. So he's been, you know, sharpening up in the... In the off-season, prior to his injury, he's been working on things that haven't, um, yeah, be, been his strength. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's what I like to do. Well, it makes sense, right? Yeah. You know, if someone, you know, questions a few of their, you know, things that they've grown up doing, if they're not quite right, they're not getting the results they want, they sort of try to sharpen up those skill sets. Yeah, I feel like growing up, one of the best pieces of advice is, that I got was heats are one in the off season mm -hmm. you know they're one you you take a season you take your wins you take your losses and then you reapply them with hard work in the off season mm -hmm. and then yeah I remember I think my dad and maybe Hedgy both said to me hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard mm. so that's always stuck with me as well even not just in surfing but in more the talking commentating <laughs> journalism side of world too um, so I couldn't agree more. I feel like weaknesses, although it has that word attached to it, it's probably your greatest strength that you do mm. have weaknesses because it means you have room to grow. Well, I remember even decades ago, it might have been yeah over a decade, when Mick Fanning was, you know, uh, you know, peak performance Mick Fanning. I remember he, he one of his weaknesses was left-hand barrels. Mm -hmm. You know, it was where he couldn't kind of match Andy Irons and Kelly Slater. And yeah. I, I think then he just started working on it, working on it, working on it. Then he was... Is consistently, you know, semi-finals at Chopu, uh, always result really highly at Pipeline. Yeah, it's something that's actually really, really cool to watch. These um, these athletes get better and better at things they weren't that good at, good at to begin with. Yeah, I just think you can see the guys who, you know, we talk about our goats. You can see what they've done and and how they've all identified their weaknesses and then just twist it and add it to yourself and I think um, yeah may as well learn from them right mm. they've done the hard yards and they've got the results so you may as well they know the recipe it works yep. um, but 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm just curious to see what, what yeah. kind of coach you were. It sounds like... Look at the Dolphins. How good's that? Oh, this... I just this love this This is every this day here at Maryland. Is it? <laughs> no. I, I, you know what? Probably. Um, but that looks... That's a great shot. Yeah, that's beautiful. The drone operator nailing it. We, um, we're rolling back into the men's after this heat. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like this next round is where we start to see um, a lot more even numbers between the Oceanic and Asian region come mm -hmm. out. And this first heat is pretty much showing exactly that. It's Manojo Yahagi, Ben Spence, Jordi Liakman, and Noah Arkfield. So Noah from the Philippines, he has a crazy forehand air game. Mm -hmm. um, really good barrel rider. He's kind of... Uh, the next Marima coming out of Cloud9. He's from uh -huh. the Chagao region. Um, and then Manojo, he's really strong in the Asian Junior Series and is starting to put it together in QS events. But then you've got the two Aussies, Ben and Geordie, who have surfed this way, have been at this event so many times before. So I'm excited for you to get how ill excited the amount that I get excited about these co-sanctioned events because there's definitely a rivalry between the Australian Asian regions because mm. everyone wants to um, the Asians want to come here and take the points and be like yep we're the better region we've got the points but the Aussies want to defend yeah, their get, hometown yeah. so um, yeah I'm excited for you to see how cool the battle is between the Asian and Australasia region Geordie Lickman um, you know semi sort of local from uh, Frenchman's a really cool beach break maybe 35 minutes uh, south Comes up here quite a bit, uh, but uh, yeah, I've seen him surf down there a little bit. Uh, French, he's, he's really good. I it's was asking Jacko, mm -hmm. how, when do you stop being a Novocastrian? Yeah, like, where I, does the region end? That's why I, I said that with a with a little bit of an asterisk. Yeah. I, I, I don't think you're from the area if you're not... Uh, it's really difficult. He's definitely from Newcastle mm. because that's that sort of changes, I think, when you go past Swansea, goes mm -hmm. by Lake Mamora, yeah. Fraser Beach. Yeah. Catherine Hill Bay, I think, is a bit of a sort of flip of the coin. Yep. But uh, it is before then Frenchman. So, yeah, 30 minutes away, he is an overcastrian. That's for okay. sure. But then the local thing, I don't, he's a semi-local. Um, but he's, yeah. he's not from Merrither or Dixon or anywhere around here. But he's a semi-local. Okay, he's a semi-local. I was so curious. I was like, where does the region end? Mm. Because I feel like the Newcastle Novocastrian, it's so big. Yeah. You know? Well, the Northern Beaches is similar. The Northern Beaches is so similar. And yeah. But then in saying that, if someone asks me where I'm from, I just say Sydney. Yeah. Because well, it's just easier to say than if I say Northern Beaches, people go, oh, some people are like, where's that? So yeah. it's just easier for me to say Sydney. I even say Sydney when I'm on the other side of the world. Really? Yeah. Wow. I just... It it's cuts, just, yeah. It, it, it cuts it, out a lot. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> it just makes it a lot easier. But uh, we haven't really seen another big score locked in uh, similar to Gabby Spake, so just that one turn being the standout right now. This right here is Jada Thomas and almost got the lip to the head there, but luckily enough got around it. And then Sophie Fletcher just waits patiently for this one to stand up, carves back there, but I feel like this inside bit, the shore is not really coming into play in these heats and Gabby here almost connecting another excellent wave. She kind of got two snaps and I feel like I grew up with Gabby so I know how good she is. Yep. So I know that she'll be not disappointed but she can definitely hit it a lot she harder than that. She can do better that. than that. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a sleepy heat this one. Gabby, the only sort of owner of decent numbers, 5.17 and then a backup of 3.5. That's exactly what that score was a moment ago. It was a 3.5 there for Gabby but both Fletcher and Thomas looking for numbers to move up into the lead. But it could say that Gabby's sitting in a pretty decent position to win this one. And now the battle is on for the second spot. Four minutes remaining. 3.67 is uh, needed from Jada Thomas. Great conditions down here. And it looks like we are going to have a pretty decent sized day today. Mm -hmm. Definitely sort of paving the way to a, a cruiser, you know. Well, if, if the conditions do go a bit funky when that subtly does kick in, we can sort of pump the brakes and mm -hmm. maybe sort of pick the eyes out of the swell and wind uh yeah to come out of the gates and get two incredible days that like we have oh. is been really lucky 
I feel like the next two days look pretty great as well. Friday's mm -hmm. the only one that maybe has the question mark around So now it. maybe have a sleep in. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? That would be so lovely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, really lucky and plenty of swell to come as we, we push through this QS 5000. So much points. A couple of bucks up for grabs as well, but uh, all these athletes are eyeing the points. They want to qualify for the Challenger Series. I remember last year uh, working at this event, it was so cool as we were getting sort of closer, watching the live ladder. Mm. The live ladder was really exciting mm. last year. I remember Georgie Pitter, that was a fun one to watch. He was just climbing up, climbing up. And he was one of the only guys who came from nowhere, got onto the Challenger Series and then re-qualified yeah. via the Challenger Series, you know? So he doesn't have to be here, does he? He's, no. He's done. No, he's done, but I think he could be here. He is here. He went to a VOCA. Yeah, he's um, definitely here, but he was in the top 20 of the challenges, yes, was he? Yeah, yeah, so he doesn't have to re-qualify. But I spoke to him in a post-heat interview at a VOCA, and I said, why, why are you here? Mm. You know, you don't have to be here. And he said, "It's, it's you can't recreate those moments where you're under pressure and you need a score and there's time on it. And I want to keep building my competitive game and strategy and you can't recreate that in yep. a free surf or with a coach down the beach. You can try your best, but there's nothing like being in a rashi and having to uh, battle back yep. to get through that heat. He had an amazing heat against Nathan Joel Cook in the quarterfinals. And I'm not, I'm not even joking. Joel, uh, not Joel, sorry. George would get a wave and then Nathan would get a wave and he'd go to the lead and then George would get a wave, he'd go. And they just went back and forth for 25 minutes. And it was just that George got the last wave. They improved every single but wave. But that's exactly what he was yeah. searching for, I guess. You know, good little lead up for uh, the challenges. And look, this is a 5,000, as I mentioned. You get good cash too. Yeah, and, and great George, cash. And George would have to be, you know, a, a top tier favourite for this thing. So... Why wouldn't you? It's two hours up the road. Yeah. Well, actually, he's relocated oh, to the Oh, he's Gold up your Coast. way. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. But um, I know he was going to make the journey down uh, and get that, get those reps that he wants. So I think it's smart. Mm -hmm. I think it's really smart on George's behalf. And anyone who's requalified, I think Morgan's requalified as well yep. already. And he's here. And he's here. But um, I feel like if you're from Newcastle, I was talking to Jacko about it, you want to win this event, you know? You want to do it for your hometown. Well, particularly now that, that Jackson won it, I think Morgan and you know, Ryan, he'll uh, try to win this thing at some point as well. 40 seconds remaining, and it looks as though Jada Thomas with priority. That's the good news. Looking for a 3.67, so not a tall order. 30 seconds. You know, this is a dream case scenario to see a few waves rolling in and the P next to your name. So here we go. Sophie Fletcher... Oh. Wants to make her life harder though, but yeah, that wave kind of running off. Those rights haven't really, that has to be the real cornery rights, I mm. feel like, that have been the ones that scored. A lot of them are just shutting down. It's been the lefts that have been the standouts, but. Where is Jada? She's just right here, I believe. Oh, she's not going to get an opportunity. I thought for sure she was going to get a wave then. It looked like there were so many corduroy lines coming. But, uh, no, nah, didn't get one. So that's the current heat leader and eventual leader. And uh, a good job there from Gabby Spike winning that one. Look at these sets rolling mm. through. Uh-oh. There's definitely a bit of size out there. I feel like the swell just keeps building and building. And we're going to roll through a quick break and be back for the men's round of 96. Heat one, don't go anywhere. Craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. Maddie's last night's sleep was spent trying to look up relaxing wave sounds. Tonight's actual wave sounds.
four days. Iron Man. Outdoors. Iron Man. Whoa. Uber. Suspension. Lights. <laughs> Roof for it. Can't be a quick Recovery man. gear. Oh. The light. Hunter Iron Man, mate. And Hunter Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> can't do two things at once. Oh, <laughs> Wait. Effortlessly refreshing. Byron Bay Brewery Premium Lager. Go with it. Welcome back to the show. This is Surfest 2024, presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. Ronnie Blakey sitting alongside Mark Ocalupo as we dive now into the round of 96, the Burton Automotive Pro. And, uh, Oc, you're... You've had a little shift up on the roster because you got your uh, your boy surfing in the not too distant future. Do um, keeping a cool head at the moment, keeping those nerves under wraps. Yeah, and me, you mean? <laughs> and look at these waves. I, I I was here earlier, but now I've come back. The tides come in, but lots of swell, and it looks like lefts. Uh, wow, look what happened during the break right here, Ronnie. Yeah, nice little swoop off the top. This is Ben Spence. Surfer from uh, the west, and he's working this one over. Nice hit on the end section there. What a great finish. Wasn't it strong? Yeah. Looks like uh, North Narrabeen or something out there, doesn't it? What's going on? Yeah, Jordy Liakman, that, uh, look at the, the way he's just able to absolutely traverse across that dead water and get that final hit in. Minojo Yahagi, the Japanese competitor, not getting a whole lot out of that one. Be a throwaway number, but uh, they're on hand. Those surfers seated in that round of 64. Xavier Huxtable on screen. He's gearing up. Tully Wiley, well situated at the top end of the regional QS ranks at the moment. George Pitar there, who's a star performer, cracked the final here last year. This is going to be a good, a good round to watch unfold as we see the seated surfers uh, enter the mix. And uh, yeah, a lot on the line. We know that. There is some, some possibilities for, for some of these lower-rated seated surfers to maybe make the jump up into the top seven with a, a big win here. So uh, this is huge. Yeah, th this is huge for sure. And looking at the crew and seeing uh, all the events this year, it, you know, this year I reckon the Aussies have got a real good... They're going to have, you know, that top seven, you know, they're, they're going to they're gonna be super strong and should do really well in the challenger on calling. Yeah, it's a, it's a really uh, deep talent pool in this region. Uh, that's considering uh, a lot of those surfers from Japan and whatnot as well, who are obviously vying for spots on their own regional ranks at this venue. They're counting their top five results. So, you know, this being the second QS 5000, it's a really important one. There. And we will see um, things shift up a little bit. We may see some people fall out of the mix at the back end of, you know, those qualifying positions. And we could see a big charge from one of the lower seeds. It's uh, it's all ahead of us this week. It's it is. They'll, yeah, there'll they'll be some big heats to call for sure and have to be on my game right there. Uh, really important for these guys' careers. You know, then they're going to have a break. And, you know, because it's seasonal, right, there'll be a, only a few months and then they'll be back to Indo, really, won't they? And that's where it all starts up again. But this is their last event, so... You know, they'll go back to training, maybe have a little break, um, surf some good waves, maybe go on a trip, and then get right back into it. Oh, okay, um, you know, you, you came on competitively at a, a really young age. Um, do you remember going into events where, you know, you, you only really stood to gain from progressing through rounds and you are coming up against people who in those positions had so much more on the line and, and were a bit more experienced? And just the the difference in you, what you felt as someone who was just basically taking a, a chance on, on sections and, 
and chasing that big result as opposed to someone who was really like after a big title at that point? You know when you're in the early stages of your career? Yeah, yeah. I've been stuck in those situations, haven't I? I mean, a, a bit. Like even, you know, because it's like that when you're, you know, you, when you're fresh on tour, but I was fresh a couple of times because I left the tour. You, you'll never, you know, you hopefully won't forget what happened nah. when I came back at Pipe and had to surf against Sonny for the title, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah, so, I remember that, of course. Yeah, and, um, so, uh, and that was just a tough period, you know, after getting through the trials and and then um, drawing Sonny, oh my goodness, and the waves went, uh, it went on hold for like, oh, it was like four or five days, felt like a month. And uh, there was all kinds of, you know, calls going down and oh I bet oh my goodness here we go look at the size of this set yeah there's some uh, there's some definitely some swell pulsing in here at the moment Ben Spence has the early lead big powerful turn to finish off his last wave and he goes to place that board vertically front foot slips gets a little slap on the bum and uh, down he goes 17 minutes and 40 seconds to go yeah the reason I asked is because you've been at, at both sides of that you've been the young gun coming through taking on an established guard and then you've been the the veteran chasing like world title results and you've got these groms that just have nothing to lose but they have not only do they have something to gain by progressing through heats they can also make a name for themselves by beating one of the big names in the draw as we see Menajo here nice snap from Menajo. it's everything you say is going to be happening because i was surfing snapper just before i left and you know who i ra ran into who was out there Ryoni montero no way and he was involved in that whole world title day in brazil he took down i think it was mick campbell and because mick could have caught um could have you know uh yeah uh, gained, up. got caught up and gained enough points to make it all still on at pipeline right um but he took him down and i, I remember yeah he, he helped me a lot oh that's so cool we're going to be uh, chatting more with Ock throughout these next couple of heats and getting his take on some of the surfing that's unfolding here. But right now, we're going to have a quick word with a surfer from the northern beaches of Sydney. Gabby Spake joins us. Congratulations on the heat win, Gabby. Thanks, guys. <laughs> How you been? Um, I've been good, yeah. Just been rocked up to Newcastle yesterday and just been chilling, had a surf. Beautiful. It's uh, it's been a, a pretty good year so far uh, on the east coast. Plenty of waves, uh, and it looks like that you've been you've been keeping your performance levels right up there. Uh, how good does it feel to, to rock up to the biggest QS event on the schedule and get that early win? Oh, it feels really good. Yeah, I'm stoked to get the first one out of the way and hopefully get through more couple of heats. So. Uh, have you been tackling uh, all the events on the schedule? Um, yeah, I think I've done all of the Australian QSs. Yeah. How have you been faring? Um, I did pretty well in Port Stevens. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. And uh, equipment-wise, let's just quickly uh, break that down. I mean, a pretty typical kind of East Coast, sand bottom beaches at the moment. Have you changed anything up, or is, is that really just your go-to high-performance board? Um, yeah, I switch between two boards usually. Um, I'm just riding a Lost Mayhem round tail 5.8, so did the job out there. It sure did. Uh, I mean, I, I know you're capable of much bigger numbers, but I'm sure at this stage of the, the draw, you're just happy to get the, the W and move on through. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty lucky to get the win out there. Beautiful. Well, congratulations, Gabby, and all the best for the next round. Thank you. Yeah, another uh, strong performer in the opening round for the uh, Newcastle Racecourse Women's Pro. And we have transitioned back into the second round, the round of 96 for the Burton Automotive Pro now. And Burton celebrating 20 incredible years of support with Surfest this season. And, uh, yeah, they get right behind the, the local sporting community and a lot of the rising stars in this zone too. But, yeah, congratulations to, uh, to that partnership. Solid stuff, as we see uh, Huey Vaughan owns the, probably the best turn of the contest so far from the opening day of competition. He's, uh, he's going to be coming up shortly, but out there at the moment, Ben Spence is setting the pace, Hawk. He is, yeah, with that 5-5. Five five. Uh, Huey did have a really good air yesterday. He must be coming up in the next seat, we'd seem to think. Um, seems like he's getting ready. I saw Huey and Joel and Dad yesterday. It was funny, and... 
And I said, nice air, Huey. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, what do you this. reckon? Your brother would have went bigger and <laughs> huh? just to rev him up. And, oh, I uh, love it. But he did get an 893 for that air and it was pretty, it was, I was going to say pretty sick as the Grom would say. Yeah, mate, it, it was awesome. And uh, yeah, love what he's bringing to competition at the moment. He is uh, going to be coming up in heat three of this round. We've got some uh, big names hitting the mix. But the next heat's looking like a beauty uh, as well. There's no bad heats in this round. Uh, Tim Bain, Kaito, Kurokawa, who's uh, on screen there at the moment. Eden Hassan's going to be back out there. He had uh, one of the better heat score totals yesterday. And then Harry Martin as well will be out there in the green. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Just over 13 minutes to go uh, in this one. Ben Spence started strong. Um, he had the opportunity to really back up that 5.5, but... Uh, Took a bit of a fall. Looks like a set coming through, Ronnie. Yeah, this Got is uh, Noah Arkfeld. Wow, what a move that is. Beautiful there, right there. That was awesome for the uh, the surfer representing the Philippines. And, uh, yeah, he is on a, a mission to get himself way up those rankings. But that was awesome. It's funny, isn't it? Like, I mean... Back in the day, Ronnie, we would have been all over these laps. And look how good this one is. I mean, the guys are obviously riding them. They are, you know, the better ways. Geez, that's a nice turn there from Geordie. Geordie. Wow, that's a big score. Let's compare that to the air. You know, it's funny, you know, because they're roping laps and then the guys are just, all they want to find is one right closeout to do that and, and guarantee get a big score. I'm interested in to see what score is going to be higher because this is pretty corked out really technical and uh kind of reminded me of my son a bit and um yeah it was uh sick yeah sick yeah. and these two turns ronnie was sick too yeah that's you know he, he had a little bit of sort of recovery time after that second turn but, but that kind of that happens when you put your board on edge when you, you're going for something fully committed like that so uh he, he reeled it in he got the completion nice combination good looking wave Really good looking wave. Just uh, these surfers are finding a lot of freedom out there with these big open sections. The canvas is nice and clean. It's groomed. There's not too much feedback from the shore break out there. And, and you can just rip in. You can. The waves look like they've got plenty of grunt too. Look at the sets marching our way at the moment. Scores in for Noah, that last wave. It did go into the excellent range. Eight points. And uh, paired up with a 3.27, has him out in front. Let's have another look on the surface replay here. And, uh, yeah, he's got to love the feel of that. Highlight reel right there. Got a lot of distance. Got a lot of height. Everything the judges like. Here we go, Ronnie. Left-hander racing down the line. Ben Spence. High oh. lip line floater. Tapping it, tapping it to get some more speed. Just has to hit that white watch, which usually is uh, quite a hard move when that white watch is really thin with no power in it, and he just sunk. Yeah, he um, just sort of was transitioning, trying to get to the big finish. Maybe could have just made more of the, the first turn out of the top, but you know, Ben Spence has already shown us he has big individual turns. If he can find some big combinations of those, he'll be styling, but... Yeah, he really wanted to, to make the last section count. Squeak that one in. It was a tricky section. Kind of laid down a little bit. Just got swamped by the uh, the white water. So, yeah, looking at uh, Noah Arkfeld and, and his position on the rankings, he, he's got, you know, quite a bit of distance to cover to get to the, uh, the top end of the ranks, I believe. So uh, he might find it kind of difficult. But, yeah, impressive surfing. I mean, you've got to love that. A highlight moment for him. In 25th position at the moment. So, you know, it's not out of reach for him. One of those top spots. But there is uh, obviously some, some seated surfers above him on the rankings. They've got more points. They progress through one heat. They're, they're actually improving on those totals, being uh, a QS 5000. So... You know, you, yeah. you kind of, you've got to keep your, your mind on yourself and, and what you need to achieve in the contest. And, and you've got to kind of keep your fingers crossed that some people are going to trip over as well. Yeah, well, you know, there's, it's not a whole lot of 5,000. And yeah, like even from that 
uh, first round that they're starting in, in hay, right? The round is 64. There's big points already. So, you're right. These waves just look so beautiful, Ronnie. They're amazing. It's, uh, it's been a good day of competition so far, and we do have a few more heats that we're going to uh, roll through today. But, uh, yeah, Ben Spence, it, it, it always comes up. You can't talk about it without um, sort of touching on it. But you know, it's uh, featured heavily in a, a major Australian movie, Breath, with uh, alongside Sammy Coulter. He was one of the, the, the main stars in it. As Simon the Grumps. Baker. Simon Baker's in that one. Yeah, yeah really well, cool Simon, movie. Isn't he a cool guy? He came to Surf Lakes and, uh, and tested it out up there. He brought his kids. Yeah. Jeez, it was nice. And Jeez, he's a nice guy. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I thought Ben was, like, Good in amazing that movie. Was he? in the movie. Yeah. yeah, I mean, actually, I've seen it. What am I talking about? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah amazing. Nah. Both, both the they boys They just looked like they were full, proper professional actors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like Simon Baker's doing all that, right? He's, you know, helping them out because, I mean, if they haven't been acting in school, how were they so good? Yeah, they are. They did a fantastic job. As we get down to around about the seven and a half minute mark, and Noah Arkfeld's just on a mission now to get rid of that 3.27, but he's certainly in a great position to progress through the round of 96 here as we see Geordie now. He's thrown together a couple of nice combos already and this one might help him get rid of the 4.8 like that fast twitch release that he's got out of the pocket yeah it is quite a real quick twitch kind of move and it's funny because you know like the, it's, the sets are lefts and the insiders are rights it's it's completely two different things which is handy for a competition is now again on the, the replay trying to get rid of that 3.27 Flatter kind of wave. Didn't really sort of ramp up for him too much, but he did commit and take it through to the inside, and he, he found a little little bit of change on the inside to whack in his pocket. It was a quick twitch to lay back, wasn't it? Just pity this wave kind of didn't do a whole lot on the inside. Nah. I, lo I love just how their conditions are holding clean yesterday. The, the wind really kind of made life a little difficult for our competitors. And our commentators. And the commentators. Did you get to go in the surf yesterday afternoon? I didn't get to go wash it off, Ooh. but um, I think today is the day. Is the wind going to It's gonna come up again, the wind? You're not too sure? Or it's still early. It's still mean. early, yeah. It's yeah, fingers crossed it holds off and we, we can get through uh, quite a bit of this round. Yeah, because the waves are good. We have swell. And look at this Beautiful looking left. He's flying down the line. Will he get a section? Yes, he does. It's a wrap as the wave goes flat, though. So, yeah, if you run that left fast, you want to get your moves in because you will end up in a hole. Yeah, deep water and really not the opportunity to sort of, the wave's kind of bending away. It tends to not make the connection through to that shore break, doesn't it? So, uh, Kaito on screen going through his pre-heat warm-up, chatting with Oki yesterday uh, about what his routine used to look like back in the day prior to a heat. And, uh, a little different. I can't remember what super. I said. It was yesterday. You, you said you just were walking around the streets <laughs> looking for a number plate with a six oh, no, on it. That's right. Because you were superstitious. <laughs> it wasn't as much about the uh, the stretching. No. So you'll never know what you're going to get out of me. Love it. But you've learned that. We've been commentating together for... I know, we were working that like, out. Yeah, we're trying to work out when the first one we done. I mean, um, now I come in very randomly, but, uh, yeah. Well, it was around it was about it was uh, 2005. Pipe, Pipe or I, Chopu? 2005, I started doing um, some commentary so at the CT events. So it would have been an, a Billabong event, because that's when yes. I was commentating at Billabong events, because we ran our own broadcast, right? Yep. For people that didn't know, and then when WSL kind of took over running the events they had their own um team right that's right so, so we did yeah. a lot of trips to tahiti because yeah, billabong event oh Mundaka was a billabong Mundaka. event um, pipeline did you say pipeline uh, pipeline yeah of course so that's where we used to commentate together all the time billabong had four two there's another one that yeah I'm we used to have a few events yes we did but they were the days that's been sterling remember In brazil Sterling. We used to do Rio. It was still, it was the, yeah. what, what do they call it? The Sterling Howland, he was the producer. Producer, yes. <laughs> producer, director, Can't he was doing it. it all. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, and we also did uh, Barra da Tijuca, the uh, event Oh, we did, Rio. it was Brazil. The yeah. Long done that too, yes. 
Wow, some pretty foggy memories of that <laughs> commentating, <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun, mate, and uh, an absolute, you know, honour to uh, be able to pick your brain at different stages uh, about, you know, uh, the places that you visited, your take on the surfing. Um, you know, it's it's at a really interesting place now. Just that, you know, that used to be there was a period there where the the chess match of priority was such a factor and and priority was such a focus and you know now the uh the work that surfers are able to do under priority and and it's been this way for for some time is just remarkable you're never safe um you know it's it can be a massive advantage but you know i think gabriel medina is a person that's capitalized on you know more uh more opportunity without priority than just about anyone and, mm. and now it's it's daunting you see people almost stressing when they've got it no it's true i mean okay three minutes gabby's one of my favorites but he was a bit cold for a while but then last night in portugal oh my goodness yeah, yeah i think and a lot back. of the guys last night were surfing that good i think you know like the women are starting to show them up a little bit oh. <laughs> and they're like we better lift our game yeah yeah they, <laughs> the women are you know, just a huge part of the narrative for this season already, and um, yeah, I think I think we'll see that continue. But it's just yeah, you, you can't miss any heats at, at those events um, because something brilliant can can unfold. Now, I, I bet there's heaps of people that are watching this that did watch Portugal last night, and hopefully it'll be on again tonight. They said it was uh, if it might drop a little bit, they might might run, but then the, there's another west kind of swell coming that not big, but maybe five, hopefully six foot that will reinforce it and so they could run maybe tomorrow or Wednesday. what's Wednesday over there is it our Thursday yeah yeah so maybe Thursday but maybe tonight oh, it's a, it's so the, yeah yeah it's kind of yeah the same isn't it it's the same day but it it just tw- yeah. runs late runs into yeah, the next yeah, day yeah so uh yeah but exciting the WSL I mean the broadcast is amazing now I mean in every every way so yeah uh, it's all awesome to watch, and uh, I, I'm hoping that we kind of have a, a similar sort of swell story here. You know, we're, we're going to have potentially slightly smaller conditions tomorrow, but it's really looking good at the moment. And we've got a bit of reinforcement coming our way as we see Ben Spans a couple of falls now. And he, he actually does, I have to say, he looks so on at the start of those those waves. He's surfing with a lot of speed, but... I don't know. It looks like he's got some slip foot going on. It looks on. like he's panicking. He even turned around for that wave right there, and it was a straight closeout. Uh, you know, he he had that 5-5. Five five. He must have been comfortable, and now it's going backwards for him. That was the opportunity, too. In third spot, doesn't need a big score. Has already shown us that he can get a mid-range 5. Needs a 5.64. And Geordie sort of wondering if he should he- head down there and cover him. He's having another look. He's definitely panicking. You know, that right he caught where he fell, that was a good wave. And he knows it. Now, the, the left he had earlier, too, was a good yeah, wave. Yeah, it was. Yeah, um, so just a bit of a shocker for him. Just uh, has looked the part, but just too many mistakes. Well, I, yeah, so I didn't even see the time. Sorry, no wonder he's panicking. There's only 20 <laughs> seconds left. Yeah, he's, oh, he was panicking guy. before. He's freaking out now. But, uh, yeah, he's... Maybe found some room to move here, but he, he as we see, doesn't have priority. He's, there's enough distance that he's not going to interfere with his He's uh, on this opponent. wave, right? I believe he, he did get into it, but uh, yeah, he's our bo- he's the body forward. language is going to tell the story here. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's too stoked. Usually if you convert on a, a wave and you chase a number at the end of a, a heat, you're, you're in celebration mode at this point. Tried yeah. to whip the reverse, didn't pull it off. And uh, he's going to go down. And uh, real shame you, you do see that or you hear about great form surfers are in in free surfs and, and then getting out there and, you know, uh, appearing to look like really alive on their equipment. But just a three falls, it's going to cost you big time. Yeah, but uh, you I'll tell you who didn't that. fall. Noah Arkfeld dropped a, an excellent score on us, took the heat out. Geordie Lackman. Uh, he held on to that second position. We'll take a quick break here. More to come from the Burton Automotive Pro right after this. Holidays. Iron Man. Outdoors. Iron Man. 
Whoa. Oh my. Suspension. Lights. <laughs> Roof for it. Can't be a quick one. Recovery man. gear. Oh. The light. Under Iron Man, mate. And Hunter Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do two things at once. Oh, no. <laughs> Back home, the Wilsons always use proper dinner etiquette. Out here, the stick will do just fine. Effortlessly refreshing. Byron Bay Brewery Premium Lager. Go with it. The race course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder. It brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins. Newcastle Racecourse. Home is where the track is. <laughs> to Sydney. Upbeat. Downbeat. Feel its heartbeat. Open spaces. Open arms. A place to feel alive. To feel free. Come feel it all. And feel new. Welcome back to the show. This is Surface 2024 presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. And you're watching the Burton Automotive Pro. This is the round of 96. This is where some of the big dogs start to enter the mix. And uh, we start to see who potentially might stand up, make a charge all the way to the final, claim the victory here at Surface, put themselves up there with world champs like Mark Ocalupo, <laughs> Kelly Slater, Tom Carroll. Um, obviously on the women's side too, same deal. You know, Tyler Wright. Um, God, I've got to get the, the honour roll out and, and run through it. But it is a, a huge opportunity um, to, to get yourself onto that Challenger Series and, and potentially realise the dream of cracking the code and getting onto the CT. Well, it's everyone's dream, isn't it, uh, Ronnie? It really is. It was mine as a kid. And, and I've got a son coming up in a couple of heats, and it's his dream too. I mean, yeah, it's, the, it, it's just such a fun sport. I mean... It's tough losing, you know, but when you're winning and surfing these beautiful waves, travelling to all countries, it's just magic, you know. It's, uh, you know, and it's a sport that I still do and still love thoroughly. So, I mean, surfers are so lucky and we should be so grateful. We should be taking care of our ocean, Ronnie. Oh, for sure. And we do. This is, um, you know, hands down i think one of the the cleanest parts of the australian coastline newcastle taking a lot of pride in this area the city of newcastle uh, one of the founding partners too of the uh, surfest event presented by reflections holiday parks and, and great to have their support you know it's for us it's like great to come here and experience this event but it's just a fantastic week great restaurants always have a, a fun time checking out the town um, if you're a big fan of coffee, I mean, this is a really good place to just get into some uh, quality Java. I've been doing both. I've found a couple really good restaurants. I went out to dinner with my mate Simon Robinson to the Ship Inn. Really good food. Uh, beautiful establishment. And we... Uh, look at that wave. Whoa, that was a tight snap. I thought he was going completely under the lip, but he didn't. Kaito. And it's Kaito. Whoa. Nearly done an old school under the lipper there. Love that. Yeah, love that. But yeah, and then oh, I found a really good coffee shop this morning. The coffee was excellent. I'm so I, I really love trying to find good coffee, and I'm all about because I like my uh, 
a small cup, you know, and like the smaller the better. It must be my Italian coming out in me. <laughs> yes. So when they've got a really small cup, either takeaway or I like to have it in, but if it is takeaway, especially small cup and uh, double shot. Yeah, oh, I love it. Anyway, yeah. here we go. Fading actually off the top. He faded and he. Oh, Eden. Good line floater. Aiden Clean. Hustle. Yeah, love that. Clean. He's, Clean. He's good, isn't he? Clean rails, no catch. Judges are going to love it. From uh, up uh, around the Port Stephens area, Simon Law country. And, the uh, law, I wonder if the law's tuning in. Yeah, the law's usually uh, about. He'd have his uh, shop open. Yeah. He'd have the broadcast playing, no doubt. But yeah, it's always good to catch up with him. And, um, and Neen, does Neen work there? He's often down here too. He's Is he? Uh, Laura, I know his daughter was um, playing rugby league for oh, Newcastle. Oh, she was. Yes, she. Yeah, yeah. I was Nights. watching her. Yeah. So uh, they've had some fantastic success uh, as well. We've got just under 19 minutes to go. Big numbers starting to roll through for our competitors, or solid numbers, I should say. Eden Hassan, right where he was yesterday, in the lead once again. But right now, we're going to hear from uh, someone who really gave us a, a great turn in that last heat, a highlight moment. Noah Arkfeld joins us. Congratulations on the heat win, mate. Oh, thank you very much. Feels so good. So good. Uh, obviously, uh, for the surfers that are, have come from the different regions and are here competing, you know, there's a, a big goal in mind to get yourself to the, the top end of the ranks. Uh, top five surfers from the Asian region uh, qualify. Uh, how are you sitting at the moment and what are your goals for this contest? Um, I'm actually far behind in the rankings. I'm like number 25, so I'm just coming here just to like compete, try to do my best and get some good results. Must feel so good to go out there in such a big contest and throw one of those big airs at us. Oh yeah, it feels so good. Like I was so st stoked to make that air and I just, I usually don't really claim in competitions, but that one I just had to, I had to let it out because it felt so good. I've got Mark Ocalupo here with me. Uh, we're happy with the claim, Oc, in that instance. That was a great air. Yeah, no, nah, that was a sick air. It kind of looked like an air my son would do. I don't know if you know Jay, but uh, yeah, it was a sick air and I, I gave it big points too. Oh yeah, thank you very much. Tell us a, a little bit about where you're from, uh, what are the waves like there and can we come and visit you? <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Come visit us anytime. I'm actually from the Philippines, Shargao Island. Um, my home break is Cloud Nine. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's actually a reef break there, and it's a beach break here, so it's a bit different. But yeah, still having lots of fun here and excited. Ah, well done, though. That was a, a really fantastic performance. I'd love to come to Cloud Nine. <laughs> Such a, a good wave, but uh, yeah, a, a really good start to your run in this contest, mate, and all the best for the rest of the event. Thank you very much. What a legend, and a uh, big highlight moment for him. He'll be featuring in the highlight reel for sure, and um, yeah, we'll see how he, he fares as he, he moves on to the next round, the round of 64. But right now, out there in the lineup, 16 and a half minutes to go, and uh, with priorities, uh, Harry Martin, he surfed pretty pretty well yesterday, but I haven't seen him on one just yet. No, it's been a long time. He's Almost, you know, getting down to that halfway mark. Oh, no, that's blue. Thought it was green from a distance, but... Yeah, Kaito. Kaito. So, yeah, we were uh, touching on it before. Uh, Ock, just some of the, the amazing talent that's you know, had success in this event over the years. I rattled off some of the, the world champs, John Mick Parkinson, Fanning. Mick Fanning, number of uh, wins for him. But, uh, yeah, winding the clock way back. You know, it's just remarkable looking at the uh, the honour roll for this event. It's incredible, actually. Uh, but, yeah, it's Kelly, crazy. Kelly it's Slater. Really, yeah, Kelly. Um, Adriano de Souza. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean. Shane Powell back Sh in the day. Powley, how good was he? It just it was a real draw card, like, because it was a major event for us, Ronnie, back in the day. But even when it went back to, you know, the, it's always been big because it's a major QS. It's usually the biggest QS you can go in, or it was at one of our major events that um, the points went to a world title. Yeah. Um, but this time it's big qualification, but it still uh, draws some really big names, you know. Like Warren Smith, somehow, he's got it. He's, he's it. It's just because he's so nice, I think, that... Um, 
and the place is so nice and it just really draws people here and it's because it's so nice it became prestigious you know and now exactly. it's just an event everyone wants to win here we go there's someone looking looks pretty straight this wave though so no takers yeah so uh you know you're talking about those, those big names on the the men's side on the women's side uh pam burridge victorious here um you know, stephanie gilmore um i know that uh Jody Cooper back in the day may maybe had a, a win here as well. Pam Burridge? Said Pam, yeah. Oh, you did? Excuse me. No, uh, yeah, just just a, an incredible honour roll for this event. Uh, Freda Zamba, Wendy Botha, uh, Pauline Mensah, and uh, Pauline and, and Pam and Jody actually came and competed in a, a little heritage event here last year, which was awesome, uh, alongside Beck Woods, who had multiple victories in the event. Oh, As we see, time. Harry Martin. I mean, he's waited a long time for that wave. Incomplete turn, but you can you can kind of tell what kind of surfer he is. As we see in the red, Timmy Bain. That was a nice, clean, fast combination. Well, don't you hate it when you wait that long for a wave and the wave behind it was way better? Yeah, it's, it's he frustrating. Pulled. He's going to be so behind it now. He's going to have, like, just over 10 minutes to, to surf this heat. He's got no score to speak of, but here's the replay off. Yeah, tight snap and an extended floater. You can see Green just ducked over that wave. He took the first wave of the set, and it was just a one-turner. Still would have been a pretty good score for that one big turn because... He went big, but fell. So here we go, Ronnie. No, no takers. So Eden's out there with priority, and and Eden though, even though he's been in the lead since the the outset here, he's you know he's standing on shaky ground. It's he hasn't got a, a stranglehold on this heat just yet. He's just been bumped back in the second because Tim Baines just dropped the seven. Wow, that's a big score. Yeah, your uh, eyebrows went up a little bit then, Ock. Um, yeah, no, I, it was tight. You know, it, it was fitted in a short space, but, you know, I, I don't dispute the score at all. Wow. And Let's make that, some comparisons. So yeah. that was Eden's ride and, and from what, early on. That was know, a 4.5. 4.5? What? Jeez, they got that low, didn't they? It, it, it did. It was a 4.5. My goodness. That yeah. That is the lowest score over you know i will pick out scores but i've been you know i haven't commentated every heat but that's the lowest one i've seen thrown for for the best wave uh yeah that i you know i mean judges can't hear me but just that's a couple points shy i think Ronnie, to what the do you bottom, think? just a transition hit there not a whole lot in the first turn the second turn no. though falls out of the sky and yeah. sticks it making the comparisons now this is almost uh, three points more uh, on the scale i mean he, he no. definitely had a bit more speed in through the, the first turn. There was a bit yeah. more in his first turn, but second turn was pretty comparable. But um, big spread, big differential there. Mm, mm. Yeah, it wouldn't be easy judging. Uh, never. <laughs> I've done it at club contests, and I've been sacked there, there. And it's always good when you get sacked at a club contest because that's no yeah. one wants to judge, do they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'll judge it. Like, nah, you'll be right. Club contests usually uh, over the PA quite often. You're saying, we need judges. We need some judges down here for this next <laughs> But it's Snapper 2. I've always seemed to have a family member surfing, so you're not allowed to judge. Perfect. Well, you know, you in club kind of can. It's not Probably that not. serious. But, wow. Like, we haven't seen a barrel, but a barrel could happen because the, this wind is coming up a little bit from the northwest right now. It's going to clock around northerly by the look of it. But right now, pristine conditions, Ronnie. Amazing conditions. Yeah, really fun. And when the surfers do find a corner, uh, you, you can see they've got, you know, just instant speed. They're not having to manuf manuf manufacture that speed themselves. Um, they're, they're able to tap into the power of these rides and generate some momentum to let go of some pretty decent turns. So Tim Bain holding onto the lead at the moment. Eden sort of vulnerable there in second spot. Kaito's... You know, he's had some moments, but no big scores to speak of just yet. And he's out there, second priority, waiting for an opportunity. And, and Harry Martin, even though he's had a, you know, real slow start to this heat with just 10 minutes to go, only needs a six. So he's not out of it just yet. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how he fares. But, uh, oh, talking, uh, we've talked highlight moments here at Surfest, but let's talk 
you know, about the amazing talent that's been produced by this area. Because Hoyo. So. Well, he's commentating right here and one of the best, you know, like Hoyo really kind of, when it came to that snap, that hack that everyone does now, came from Matthew. Like he really, you know, the channels he rode and that layback hack that he had, it made him, got him through so many heats and kept him on tour for years. <laughs> yeah, I, I loved, uh, what I loved about Hoyo is that there's a, there's a, a type of surfing that he loves, that he respects, and, and he never sort of steered too far away from that in his uh, competitive approach. It was all about just big rail turns, and big uh, rail he had turns. some of the best. He did, it. like that forehand one, and then it was either that or his backhand because he had such good rhythm on his backhand. Yeah. Really tight vertical snaps, too, and really good, you know, uh, rhythm that he had. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then there's Louis for sure. Um, there's so many like Nikki Woods. My goodness, Nikki was just a, you know when I was young, he was younger than me, and he, he was winning everything. Uh, he made that final at Bells, and and then he, he won. Just, it. It's still the youngest final, I think, CT final ever. Uh, it's got to be um, Nikki Wood and Richard Dog Marsh, and uh, Nikki got the victory. I think Nikki is 16, Dog mm, was 17. Mm. There we go. Timmy Bain. Yeah, just trying to get rid of the 3.17 mm. Tim Bain. But, yeah, the list goes on and on, doesn't it? And, uh, you know, uh, aside from, you know, you, you... Well, Simon Law, I mean, you know, you, you've got to talk about him because the switch foot, Ronnie, like, you know... Is he, you know, this was a nice layback right there and he kind of, you know, got back up. It wasn't clean, but it might better a 3.17. But, uh, you know, the switch, the switch foot, like, I mean... You know, back in the day, it was Buttons from Hawaii that was unbelievable at it. But Simon Law was a, such a good switch yeah. He could do it at big pipeline. And he did in competition. Yeah. And, and, like, you know, I'd love to switch and I'm not very good. But I do it, like, you know, when I'm halfway down the wave at Snapper and it's kind of the waves kind of half finish, I'll switch and, you know, can kind of do some cutties and stuff. But it's hard. And, and, and Simon Law was such yeah. a good switch footer. And it's so good for you to switch. Have you Do you do it? Like it? Apparently, it's really good for your body because you get really strong on one side and you depend on one side and to switch, and especially for me because I surf so many rides, I can go switch and it kind of feels yeah. like it's evening my body out to some degree. Yeah, yeah. Do you, no. do you try switch? Um, look, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to just get it done. It's standing regular. I, <laughs> I haven't progressed to standing goofy. But, um, yeah, I, I agree that it, it, you know, it, it like, can definitely be a benefit to you. Like a, uh, a guru told me once to try and brush your teeth with your other hand and try that, you know, oh, like... poke my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all that stuff is good to even your mind up. What? Does it? Who, who is it? Brent Dorrington. Is Brano in the draw? Is he here yeah. to compete? He, is he? Because okay. he would have been in the first round. What, what's going on? He's looking Tell me. Psyched. Find that name in the draw now because he told me he was over it. And, Look um, at him. Might be doing some coaching. He might be because I, he would have had no, to start. No, he's in there, mate. Heat eight. Heat eight. There we go. Round of 96. 96. He's coming up. Brent Dozer. Brent Dozer. What a charger. Goldie. So I'm glad there's someone else from the Gold Coast that's min missing pumping, Kira. That makes <laughs> yeah. me feel a bit there's, better. There's a few of you here. <laughs> well, uh, Tim Baines has to uh, ramp things up a little bit here, Rock. 5.67 for that layback jam. Yep. And uh, even like now, it. he's looking for an excellent score to get the first. It's the battle for second spot with six minutes to go here. It is on. And uh, Kaito Kurokawa, he is definitely within reach, 3.28. Harry Martin needs a little bit more, but Harry hasn't even really had the opportunity to show us what he's capable of out here just yet. Yeah. Getting a bit nervy now. Jay's coming up too. To when I, oh. Yeah, Jay's feeling a little under the weather too. He's got a little tummy bug going. So I'd, hopefully that doesn't, um, you know. Mm, Cooper Davies. It. He had a, a good run going well, in this contest last year and he, he had a shocker with priority. Cooper Davies um, was last year, they served in the trials for the challenger spot and beat Jay, by, and beat Jay in the final. Oh. And there was only one spot. And... Uh, so it was funny, I was talking about my son and there goes Cooper Davies. Yeah, in the trials, it was a close final and he just picked out Jay and, and that was a bummer, that close to getting in the challenger. But you never know, he'll give it another go. 
They'll They'd have another trials, yeah. Cooper had one of those unique situations last year. Well, you year never know. He might make it. What am I talking about? <laughs> He's in this contest. Come on, tell me. <laughs> tell me. I love it. <laughs> no, he needs a big result. Needs a big result. I yeah. just did all, all the surfers that are starting yeah. this, this round uh, need a need a huge yeah, nah. result. Yeah, and they it's... need to win pretty much. But, you know, someone's got to win. You know, I'm just... It'd be great to see Jay make a couple heats and... Hopefully his tummy bug, you know, he said he was low in energy. He didn't even have a surf today, so saving it for his heat. But uh, he usually gets pretty psyched for his heat, so I'm thinking maybe this could work. <laughs> you never know. Let's see how he goes. Just over four minutes to go here, and uh, Harry's just trying to find some space in this lineup. No priority, no decent score to speak of. Been a tough one for him. Kaito's, uh, you know, he's in a position to strike for one of those top two spots. Eden's got to watch his back here. Absolutely. Second priority. Yeah, Eden, um, though, Ock, he, he's definitely sort of one of those those marked youngsters that's, you know, really starting to collect some great results, but do fantastic surfing. And here he goes, going after uh, something better than a 2.5 here. May have already done it. Clean combination. Great flow through these flatter sections of this wave. And we'll see if he can link this one right through to the shore break. Gets that hop going, climbs to the front of his board, has some momentum now as he cuts back again. Doing a lot of work on this ride and looking for a nice little finish on the inside. I, I mean, start to finish, really, really classy. Would have loved some bigger sections probably, but he's chipped away nicely at that one. Yeah, he has. You know, he might... It, it, it could be around the 4-5. Maybe a little more, maybe, but it's going to need... That. These guys are going to need a bigger score, so he's definitely put some pressure on him, Ronnie. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that's that's what he endeavoured to do with the three minutes to go here. I mean, wants to make the, the task a little harder for, for Kaito. If he can push it up a point or two, it'll really work in his favour. Here goes the surfer from Japan now. Oh, a whipping backhand hit there to finish that one off. And even yeah. though it doesn't sort of have the, the same kind of wall for him to continually work over it, think that there was a bit more size in some of those turns so probably pretty comparable right it's going to be really close between Eden and Kaito after this exchange yeah I think Kaito gets a better uh, just in that critical uh, part right here that first snap and even though it was a check snap actually you know after looking at it for the second time <laughs> the steeper section for sure you know and uh, this inside probably won't count I guess I mean I, 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 you know, I dare say both insides don't really count. I'm not, I'm not a judge, and I'm hoping they're not judging too much. I mean, because that shorey, you can't really do anything. It's just a little floater. So, yeah. what do you get for that? Like well, point, I think, I think really, five? really comparable scores. The, the story then becomes like, what are their other numbers? And Eden's got more than, you know, more in the bank already than his uh, opponent here. As Harry Mark goes down again, so. Harry's really uh, going to struggle now, but Tim Bain's not struggling. He's having a great time out here at the moment. Already has a couple of decent numbers. Trying to improve on a 5.67. Nope. He's, he didn't he's, ride out of he's that. He's flying. He's got a lot of uh, speed coming out of that board. So a minute and 20 seconds to go. And we're waiting on the numbers to come through. So Eden scores coming through only a 3.6. And that means that it's going to be really interesting to see where Kaito's number falls. The panel yet to log that number. Yeah, I'm calling he's got that score. So Eden's not wasting any time. He's going to try and, and potentially turn this into something. Racing down the line, trying to force a few turns up there. Still on his feet, but didn't really connect with that final manoeuvre the way he would have liked. Hoping that he gets a, a little bit of a, a ramp to bank into here on the outside. Harry Martin with an opportunity, but that wave just completely burgers out on him. Well, scores coming through now for Kaito. It's going to be very close. He did need a four, a low four, but he's only turned in a, a 3.87, so not enough. And Eden's going to be hanging on to that second spot going into the final stages here. Yep, don't, just don't count on me, whatever you do. I, th I think I did it the last heat. Look, it's tricky when it's compressed tricky. like this and you've got surfers trading off um, sort of similar type rides. Uh, you, you've got to have a look at what Eden scored, 3.6. He did uh, quite a bit of work 
on that wave to get the 3.6. And, and Kaito, he had less maneuvers, but maybe uh, one better turn. Uh, and as a result, got a slightly better score, but not enough to turn the heat. I, I think what happened then was the comparisons were made to Eden's great ride. He only had a 4.54 earlier on. Yeah, that's a good And they thing. were probably looking yeah. at Kaito's wave going, I mean, mm. if he had a 4.5, that, that's probably not even a 4. Yeah. Which I think is it's a good um, point. hitting the nail on the head. So, uh, you know, a tough one there for Kaito. Harry Martin, a bit of a shocker heat for him. But progressing through the heat will be Eden Hassan and Tim Bain with the, the victory. We'll take a quick break here. More to come from the Burton Automotive Pro here at Surface 2024, presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. See you in a moment. Welcome to Sydney. A place to feel alive. To feel free. Come feel it all and feel new. Adam thought he'd never get Sarah camping. How wrong you were, Adam. Wait! Racecourse is not just a place to watch the horses thunder. It brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins. Newcastle Racecourse, home is where the track is. And welcome back to Surface 2024 presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. My name is Mitchell Ross. Alongside me is Matt Hoy. Yeah, Mitchie. How, How are you, mate? mate? Good, good. It's a beautiful day out there. Ways of Pretty, pretty good, actually. I was gonna. How good is that shot right there? <laughs> looks magic. Yeah, it looks magic. Looking back at Murray there, yeah, like three, maybe four foot sets, offshore yep. winds, tide dropping. It's just gone past the high tide right now, so it looks really fun if you get on the end of one. Can the the wind uh, back off a little bit more than it did yesterday? Is that a chance today? Well, I think it's supposed to say. Might even say offshore all day today if it's offshore till now. Yeah. Midday, like I think it's it's really hot out there though, so maybe it's going to go puff up from the northeast. But stay light by the look. Hopefully it stays offshore. Yeah, be swells, a great day. yeah, swells, jacking too. It's good. So good to uh, see. four new faces out at the moment in the red. It's Cooper Davies. He's from uh, up at the uh, Noosa area. Really powerful natural footer. I saw him in the ABB last week. Getting some big numbers in. Uh, Really solid surfer. In the blue is a, a local surfer in Dom Thomas. He's from down uh, the Frenchman's area. Hugh Vaughan is in the white. And uh, Ruinchi Inouye is the Japanese surfer in the green. So four really good surfers. Big heat. How stacked are the heats? He's a second round heat. Yeah. Yesterday there was a few, you know, like yeah. pretty sort of slow heats. Today the talent level stepped up so much more. As we see uh, the man in red for that last heat. That's uh, Tim Bain. He had a really good heat. He was uh, super solid to to uh, win that one ahead of Eden Hassan. Both those surfers moving on through to the next round. So good job there from Tim and Eden Hassan. As we see, good looking left hander here, Hoy. Look at the waves. It's pretty like the, if the the banks is like I keep saying are a bit average, but the swells there and there's definitely opportunities if you get in the right spot for sure. 
Look at these lines. Yeah, oh, solid looking got... ways. Yesterday, we were surprised that it was as big as it was. Then today, we've woken up, it's actually a foot bigger. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a foot bigger every day. Yeah, been it really drops, lucky. The, 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 the size drops tomorrow, but the period gets bigger, so whatever that means. It's funny, we're looking at like a, it's pretty obvious that the majority of waves are left-handers right now. But with some of these guys, like uh, I'd like to look at Huey Vaughan and Dom Thomas. They're probably looking for a closeout right yep. as well, so they can just, you know, do a big area into the flats. I know Dom can do them. We all know that Huey Vaughan's oh. super special at sort of everything above the lip. But Dom Thomas, he can get up there too. He can. And there is rights up to the left of the screen there. There's a l little rip of right there that a few people are getting scores on it. But the lefts are definitely the biggest scores today, I reckon. Mm. Have you had a chance to see Huey Vaughan's new movie? No. Really good? good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> really good. Sick. It's, it's funny. We, we, we saw him coming, didn't we? Oh, yeah. For years. For years. And he's how old? He's only 16 now, yeah, isn't he? We've seen him coming for a couple of years. Especially at this event. Mm. He's been in this event since he was real young. Was it a semi-final finish last year? I remember he, he ripped... He went through so many rounds. Really impressive. Yeah. As uh, we have a quick break, we'll go down to interview the winner of that last heat, Tim Bain. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. How are you? Not bad. Big, uh, bad. big performance there. Twelve point six seven points. Killed it. Yeah, just kind of had a pretty of a shaky start. Kind of fell on that first one, and then got a little score on the second one. But then kind of found those two waves in the middle that got me through. So I'm stoked. And uh, where you're from, and where's your local local break, mate? Uh, from up the sunny coast in Noosa, local breaks, Sunshine Beach, just kind of beaches like this, so yeah, pretty pretty used to it. Out there at the moment, it's Cooper Davies, another strong surfer from up around your area. Yeah, yeah, I grew up surfing with Coops, so yeah, good to watch him and hope he gets a few and gets through as well. It feels like a couple of decades ago, there was only, you know, one or two really good surfers out of the, the sunny coast area. But nowadays, there's as many, many good surfers coming out of the Sunshine Coast area as any other sort of region of Australia. Why is that happening? Yeah, there's heaps of uh, surfers coming out of the sunny coast at the moment. I feel like, especially in Noosa, we have um, a couple of really good coaches like Dean Brady and Graham Endersby. So they've been kind of coaching all the younger people when they come up. So yeah, it's been really, really good. And who do you generally surf with most days? Uh, kind of both of them. I'm surfing with Dean and Eggy, so kind of switch between them. Both legends too, classic. I know him pretty well, bro. Yeah. So, hey, I saw him in the ABB the other day. looked like he was struggling. <laughs> it was yeah, classic. yeah, the big boy, yeah. <laughs> no, he moves well for how big he is, but yeah. <laughs> oh, but that, that, that was actually the sad part of watching that. <laughs> Dean Brady's one of the fitter guys, Yeah. and he's still struggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I, I unfortunately couldn't make it down there, but... Um, Fortunately or unfortunately? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Kind of both, yeah. But, yeah, it was good to watch the boys get a... I think they got a fifth. Yeah, they yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. And, mate, what were you riding out there? General shortboard? Uh, yeah, just a normal shorty. It's six oh and a half. and uh, Just a Mayhem Driver 3.0. Is that uh, the model that you like riding the most? Yeah, definitely when the wave's like this, it, it goes real well. Yeah. Cool. And uh, how you been going on the, on the series this year, mate? Uh... All right, I've got a couple fifth places and then a few throwaways. So hopefully get a good result in this one and go up the rankings a bit. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Hey, you could have a pretty average year and, um, you know, make a, a handful of heats at a 5,000 and all of a sudden your, your year turns into success. Yeah, for sure. Definitely in these 5,000s, there's yeah, so much points up for grabs. So hopefully go through a bit far. And uh, once... Well, you're done for the day, so what are you going to get up to this afternoon around the, the Newey area? I'll uh, probably find some waves. It's still offshore, so hopefully we'll find an uncrowded bank somewhere with the boys. Yeah, perfect. You're all travelling together from up there too, the Sunny Coast boys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. and then a few of the Goldie boys as well. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, mate, enjoy Newcastle and good luck for the rest of the event. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, great performance. Yeah, sick. Good bloke. Yeah, great. It's good to see the boys speak well and all backing each other and ripping mate and they're state to be here big combo too I, I actually was having a break when that heat happened but 12.67 has to be one of the highest combined heat totals of the event thus far yeah for That'd sure be top five top ten yeah so Definitely. Uh, 
Yeah. Well, there hasn't been that many big ones, has there, to get through heats yesterday and today. The, the score has been pretty low. Yep, it has. They've really been really conservative. Yeah, very conservative. Look, here comes. Look at these lines. Wow. Maybe you mind surf. And oh, you're, you're probably mate, making that. In I'm your mind. making it that from <laughs> from the cliff. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Easy. Oh, just the setup, man. Wow. Looks beautiful. Yeah, the only there problem is some Friday. of these ways, they're a little bit straight, but every now and then you get a, a corner, as we're seeing here for the, the Japanese competitor. Nice floater. Nice snap. Love Again. to get one more in here. It does. One, two more. As you go into the channel too a bit on the end bit, this one's going to get, wow. Oh, good wave. Well surfed. Yep. Yeah, we watched him surf yesterday. He surfed uh, pretty good. Looks like today he stepped it up a little bit more. That's going to be the highest scoring wave of this heat. Used his priority really well then too. Yep. Third in line. Check it out. He got caught for a moment at the beginning of this one, I think. Look how good this wave is. So that bit there, but he just bounced back into a lot of speed, right? Good snaps. Little one there. And then this bit, I thought it was going to go into the channel, flatten right out, but he kept his speed. And then last time was... Well, his best turn. Everything wasn't completely on point. No. But at the same time, it was Bit it was job time. done. Yeah. yeah it, was yep. it was good enough to, to lock in a 4.1. See, that sort of goes in, it goes hand in hand, what we're saying. That was really good surfing. You know, if you're sort of casually watching, you might think it's a pretty good wave. But, you know, the judges? Yeah. They, they're keeping yeah, it tight. They are keeping it tight. They, they just saw what we saw. A bit mistimed everything yep. on a good wave. Mm. It could have been surfed better. Yeah, so look, it was a 4.1, puts the man in green up into first position. 13 and a half minutes remaining. We are surfing 25-minute heats today, and we are going to have eight heats in this round. So a heap of action. We've seen some of the best girls surf, and now we're watching the, uh, the 5,000 males. So the QS 5,000 down here at Merriweather Beach. Huge shout-out to Burton Toyota for getting behind this one, the 20th, 20th year of support. A handful of sponsors make this event possible. City of Newcastle, Tracks, uh, Newcastle Herald, MBN News, Reflections Holiday Parks, of course. There's uh, a whole lot of uh, parks that you could choose from to have a fantastic holiday. By the coast, where your favourite surf break and go well, surfing. They're all by the coast, isn't they? <laughs> Pretty much. Absolutely. Which is perfect for surfers because that's where we want to be. That's what we do. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Go inland, expand your horizons, Brad Gerlach said to me. Actually, his father said it. Did you take note? Yes, I did. I expanded my horizons <laughs> without going inland. Down here at Mero the Hoi, where do you like to surf? Do you like surfing the beachy or is your preferred spot, you know, with uh, one of the, you know, the, the rights behind the rocks? Yeah, Rocks Bowl is my favourite. If it's on, it's all our favourite. Mm -hmm. it's, it's our go-to spot. If the rocks is there, everyone's happy in Merida. Even the goofy footers. You would have had a couple of good stories growing up, seeing MR and Luke Egg and Nicky Wood and those guys out here. Yeah, hundred percent. I grew up with all that. That's my era. Well, MR's a bit, you know, a bit before that, but yeah, we had a good time. How was it um, wanting to be a pro surfer and growing up in the same sort of area as you know one of the greats in MR? Oh, it's epic. You just see. Him do it. Well, you didn't get to see that much, so it's not like you're doing it now. He's red on a good-looking wave. Oh, it was a good-looking wave. Like when you won terrible. Bells, for example, do you get a phone call off I did. MR? Yep. I did get a phone call off MR, actually. He actually come to the board at the celebration. Wow. Yeah. As we see Hugh Vaughan here. Well, he, see, we, th we thought he might be hunting for these rights. Wow. Pretty average-looking wave, but gosh, he surfed it good. Surfed it really good and pushing through the inside. Hopefully, Look at the gets a little speed he get through that. Yeah, great surfing there from Hugh Vaughan. I saw a, um, a post he put up, I think it was from the ABB, and one of, I don't forget who said it, maybe uh, one of the, the Santa Cruz boys. I don't, I don't know if it was Rat Boy, maybe. Some, someone said it. He said, You look like Butto, but. With mm. a not with a two thousand style, mm. two thousand and twenty four style. Jason Buttonshaw. Yeah. Yeah. Same sort of look and same sort of you know, a little kid ripping and doing what they do against much older people. For those people out there, um, who was Jason Buttonshaw? He was like a child prodigy from the Goldie. 
Him and Sam Watts, I remember going to the, I think the 86 stubbies. Mm -hmm. We were 15, all, we're all pretty much the same age. We are all 15 and they made the main event. Mm -hmm. Smoking people are pumping Burley. Wow. It was crazy. I don't know who, I think uh, Butto might have beaten someone in the first round that he shouldn't have beaten too in the main event. Then got rolling. Yeah. Yeah, in a as a 15 year old. Mad. He sort of came and went though, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Sort of pitted out early 20s, maybe not even. Yeah. yeah. He did the tour for a bit though, but a legend of bloke, classic. And Sammy Watts too. That mate, Sammy Watts was sort of the same sort of thing. So a big compliment when you say. Oh, he was, yeah, that was the best. He the two. guy. He won an Aussie title in WA, I think, 80, maybe it was the same year, 87 maybe. You say like to win an Aussie, I mean, you said he won an Aussie title. Was it a big thing back then? Because right now it's kind of watered down a little bit. Biggest thing ever. So that was school, the biggest. Schoolboys and um, Aussie individual titles were the biggest thing you do in Australian surfing. At wow. that, well, besides winning. World titles. Yeah, well, oh, well, big comps, you know, besides winning, what are they called, ASP comps. And, but hey, is it Dolphins then? Yeah, the Dolphins have been hanging around as Huey goes for but that Ezra was broke. That was your stepping stone to go on the tour, winning an Aussie title. Uh -huh. You won an Aussie title, you're pretty much like, oh, you're going on tour. Oh, pick, go. It's a nice little barrel there. Really pinchy, though. Don't think there'll be too many barrels today. You can see he got in that one, Don Thomas, but, uh, yeah, couldn't squeak out of it. Really tight little barrel. Maybe when the tide drops right out, and if the wind stays yeah. offshore, I reckon there'll be a couple of barrels in that bank. That's the million-dollar question. If the, the, the wind, wind. yeah. Pretty slow heat for Cooper Davis. There's no wind at all. You can see that flag on the beach there on, on the bottom of your screen there. There's not a breath of wind right now. Just saying, yeah, Cooper Davis. Look at the scores. He's a real good surfer. But uh, can't get out of the gates at the moment. A couple of throwaway scores. Looking for a 4.27 with pro at the moment. A couple of lines rolling on through. A decent number coming through for uh, Huey Vaughan. It was a 4.1 for that right-hander. Surfed yeah. it good. Yeah. Just a bit of a flat wave, wasn't it? He surfed that wave up. That was probably a three, that wave, if you and he surfed, surfed it, it in normal. Four, yeah. yeah, fully. Look at these lines. The swell's pulsing right now. Must be good on the coast sense. today. Or even down around, sort of, you know, down south Look Newcastle areas. Set, yeah, yeah. I think the waves would be super good yeah. all over the joint today. We're lucky enough to be here at Mare of the Beach. Dealing with a Nori swell, so uh, not typical right-hander conditions here at Merida. Still super fun, punchy, sort of peak break conditions. That's a, per that's a perfect example right there of how lined up the bank is. Mm. Um, no opportunities on that wave. See that in the centre of the screen there was a bit of a, a section there. You just need to be in that perfect little pocket to roll in and just smack a section. Well, here, here we go. go. You said someone was going to go right and try big air. No. That's Dom. I think, I think yep. that was Dom Thomas. Quick yep. wave there. It's funny, if he he had a bit cleaner of a section there without the whitewash, that was going to be a decent number. He's made uh, a few runs in this event before. I think it was last year he made a handful of heats. Really good surfer. Splitting the peak here. I love it. Yeah, here Here's we go. priority. What's he got? Oh, that one. I want to say it's the third wave he's done something similar where you, you skip that first section to get to the next and unfortunately it's just a little bit too quick. And uh, yeah, Coop just couldn't get around that one. So it's going to be another throwaway score as uh, we have a look at the replay. Here we go. See, down the line, hoping for something to stand up. Yeah, just no. didn't do it. Use of priority then too. Mm. Here's the Grom too. Huey just... He knows what he's looking You said he was going to look for those little rights to do. It was too obvious. Sort of, yeah. Him and Dom, I think, are sort of, sort of searching for the same thing. Yeah. Similar type of ages. Uh, both really trying to uh, shake up the surf world. Get a big result down here at Merriweather in the 5,000. Heaps of points up for grabs at the moment. Under six minutes remaining in this one. Eight heats of the round of 96 today. So uh, still four heats after this one, slow uh, scores, only fours and threes at the moment in this heat. And the waves look so fun if you get them, it just, it's just so hard to find that that corner, as you said. How many times have you surfed waves that look perfect four foot and you've gone out there and had 
the worst surfing life. <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Especially right where they're surfing. Yeah. It looks so good and then get out there and you don't get a thing. Just a... Yeah, the oh, well. Beach breaks. Yeah, just beach breaks. Eh? You can't do much about it. And there's no rips running out pretty much the whole mm. beach. Usually there's a few, like... The beach is really straight. There's usually a bit, bit more curves in the beach, but there's just no rips running out anywhere to make that wave peak mm. up. And the ones with a bit more of a corner there, they're nearly too small to be able to catch in between the sets. Yeah, because you know we're near them. They're breaking 20 metres in from where you're sitting. Yeah. So uh, a big... Perfect condition, but difficult waves to surf. Yep. Looks good, hard to surf well. Yeah. Yep. Surfer in blue is the current heat leader. Have a look at this wave. It looks like that wind's puffing up too, just right now, look. Pretty deep on this one. It looks like horrible positioning. Could be wrong, but yeah, just... Yeah, there's that wind, I think, Koi. Yep, just hit like right now. That's the beginning of it. So it will pick up. It will start puffing. As we see, Cooper down the line needs to get something on the board. Right now, he'd be happy with a two and a half. This is a good looking wave to get started. To start it. Oh, oh, that was a good turn. I can see what you're saying. He just needs to He's get a wave that opens up. See, one turn, turn, that was so easy for him and his talent. Like, his skill set is, uh, is all over, stuff like that. And uh, Bob's your uncle. That's going to be a big number. So, yeah, great surfing there. As we see Dom Thomas up and riding. He's going for his own big vertical snap. And that was a pretty good uh, manoeuvre as well. So a bit of an exchange happening. Mm, the boy's just trying to find that double combo. One turn only on those last two waves. It's difficult. Mm. So scores coming through. There it is. The high scoring wave, just like that, belongs to the man in red. Cooper Davies, 4.73. Wow. Isn't it funny? Like, in his mind, he's probably thinking he needs to get a wave and do two big turns. Well, here it is. He doesn't have to. He needs to get a, a simple looking wave and, and do one turn to get... Uh, you know, into the sort of a progression state of this round. You don't need to get 12 points in these rounds. Well, look, well, look what the scoring is. Seven, that's winning. 7.77 7 is winning yep. this heat. 4.73 is the highest scoring way for one turn. So 3.4 there for Dom Thomas as well. So look at that. The situation has just been flipped on its head. Huey Vaughan's got in a fourth spot. Wow. Doesn't need much, but, but gosh... It's hard to get though, isn't he? He's got to get the opportunity. It looks like it's gone flat too after that set after set at the start of closeouts too. The good news is he has got priority Huey Vaughan on screen. Looking for a 2.5. So uh, needs to needs to get moving and it looks like he is paddling up the beach. He's spotted something. It looks like there's a few... Oh, this first one. A few ways. You, you think that this wave has a bit of a shoulder on it. So It looks like it has, doesn't it? I love Dom Thomas how he's just yeah, like, you know what, gone, I'm no. going. This is, yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. I'm paddling up here. I'm going to... Well, he has to... F look at this one. He's getting has away. has to fake him into a... Well, he's fourth priority, Dom, so he's yeah. actually doing the right thing, getting out of the way yeah. and hoping to find a peak up the beach by himself. Oh, he's, he's doing it. Okay, here oh, we go. I've just lost priority. He makes his oh, float. He's getting the score. Oh, of course he makes that. Full butter. That looked like full butter. Wow. <laughs> And, just uh, his hair, everything, his, his that was size. That was a big floater. I he's like how he's sticking to it here. He'd love to get a little sort of uh, cherry on top. He can finish it off the inside. And another oh. backhand floater. <laughs> that is... And he's Dom. Oh. So it's all happening here. Big oh. combo. Wasn't it? What a good little exchange here. So these guys are in second and fourth spot. Oh, he should have... No, he should oh, have done it. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> it was one of those, no, 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 yes. Oh, I well, thought, that was good. I thought he was crazy going for that too, but gosh, he's got some confidence on him. Just come in, mate. You've minute. only got a minute. Oh, this could change it as well. Too big to, oh, it gets hammered. No. Well, he's done. Exchange at the end. Cooper needed a 1.87. Well, if he, he finished that turn, I think he's getting a six. Yeah. Because he like did a big turn beforehand. It looked like it, didn't it? And all of a sudden, the Japanese yeah, surfer, with 40 seconds remaining, I'm claiming he needs a score here. 100% he needs a score. So here we and go. And he's got one. He's got a wave. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. What <laughs> he's a gone finish. For he's not making it. No. Wow. 
Here we go. This is Rez last one. Good first turn. Second turn. Oh, huge turn like that other one he got a good score on. He just, just lifted gets, a tad late. Just comes down the lift and comes up. Stuck. He needed that too. Yep. Obviously. Here it is. So Huey's gone into the lead with a 4.4. That's kind of what we're anticipating. So he's going to win the heat unless Dom Thomas can uh, pip him. But right now, Dom's looking for a 4.37. So he got it. That's going to be close. Yeah. Is he definitely got I, it? I think so. I think that's the best way of the heat. Okay. It? Well, the... well, it has to be. It yeah. has to be right there, right? It has to be just under. Yeah. So 4.37. So that heat is over. As uh, we wait for the score to get locked in, we'll go to a quick break. And uh, well, here's the... let's have a quick look before we go to the break. Little carve. This turn was big. That's a big turn. And this is the one I said, I oh, don't do This is the best way of the heat. Little air reverse. The judge, just rides out of it. The judges disagree, Hoy. It was only a four. What? So he doesn't get through. That's tight. That is tight. Forgive him. I, I, th I think that air reverse that he didn't ride out of too cleanly. Yeah. Sort of soft way that I thought he got yeah. that though. Anyway, Huey coming up from the beach. Uh, big win there from Huey Vaughan. As we go to a quick break and come back with more action down here at Surface 2024. The race course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder. It brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins. Newcastle Racecourse, home is where the track is. Welcome to Sydney. Upbeat. Downbeat. Feel its heartbeat. Open spaces. Adam has taken a few losses at work this week. A loss out here, a little easier to take. Back down here at Mirror of the Beach, Surfest 2024, presented by our good friends at Reflections Holiday Parks. A glorious second day of competition. My name is Mitchell Ross, along with me, Merryweather local, former pro surfer. Once upon a time, he won the Bells Beach event. Once upon a time in Merryweather at Bells. <laughs> it's Matt Hoy. As yeah. we see, Dane Henry who went absolutely viral a couple of months ago with some of the best surfing we've ever seen. I don't know if you... Is that those? Is that him? That's from him. up at D-Bar? Yeah, yeah, well, I don't think it was D-Bar, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Those huge yes. airs? Yes. Really? Yes. I thought it was at D-Bar. Maybe it was, but it was D-Bar. There ah, you go. I see. But that's the guy. You got it right. Really? Yep. Okay. Well, this will be good to see then anyway. They were huge. Did he do another one the other day too? He keeps doing them. Yeah, right. He's got it on... He's, he's locked it in. It's Just, amazing that... They, they were huge. They were like the biggest airs nearly ever. Isn't that funny? Anyway, we'll uh, catch up with, with Dane and his aerial antics in a moment. But at the moment, we're going to cross to the winner of that last thing. Huey Vaughan, congratulations, buddy. How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling pretty good now. Yeah. <laughs> was that nerve-wracking, that uh, last exchange? Did you understand how tight it was? Yeah, 
it was pretty nerve wracking there. Yeah. I didn't really know how close it was or anything, but I think I only needed like a two when I went in the wave and then, yeah, I was just happy to make it. But don't you hate it when you're just cruising through a heat and um, you know, I think it was maybe three minutes to go and the, the situation changed and you went into fourth and you're like, oh, really? Yeah. It was so, you're like, okay, so I do have to do something here. Yeah. I didn't, I think I only needed like a small score, but I don't know. It yeah. was, it was so nerve wracking and... But you needed a 2.5, which is a small score, but at the same time, you actually have to get a decent wave and do at least one big turn. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I just wanted to get a wave. It went pretty slow in our heat, so yeah, I was just happy to get one. And uh, what, were you, what was your plan going out into that heat? We were thinking that you're probably going to look for the rights to try to get some sort of big section. Yeah, that was, prob that was my game plan, just like try and go the rights, but I went one at the start, but I don't know, it didn't really didn't really work out for me but I was happy to get the last one yeah anyway it's uh, been a big few months for yourself buddy how's um how's fame going with uh, <laughs> after dropping that that movie yeah it's it's been pretty sick yeah heaps of um I don't know just heaps of people coming up to me and yeah I was just everyone stoked, stoked on it yeah yeah uh, unreal and um so what's your mission down here in Newcastle this week was it last year that you, you went on a went on a roll and made it to the semis? Yeah. I don't know, I just wanted to come surf and hopefully there were some fun waves and, yeah, just surf my best. Well, mate, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you down at Mary of the Beach and, uh, look, we can't wait to see it all happen again tomorrow. Yeah, thank you. Good luck, mate. Thank you. Little Huey Vaughan. What would you say he is? Is he a free surfer, is he a comp surfer, or is he the, the both? Well... I haven't seen the clip, but I heard it's mental. And he, what he just did, what I've seen him in competitions, he's unbelievable too. He's got an old head on his. To do that, like, and not, I mean, he said he felt the pressure, but he still came up with the goods mm. at the end of the heat, you know what I mean? He did it last year in a couple of heats, I remember. He was just, didn't get too stressed and just nailed it at the end. So, good shot fun. there. Jarvis Earl and uh, Huey. Yeah, the future of Australian surfing right there, right? Are they, if they're not the, what was it, Mark Warren and the boys, what were they called back in the, <laughs> the day? The bronze dozzies. That's <laughs> these two. Exactly, it's not the same. Wow. <laughs> the, the epitome of the Aussie Grom surfers, right there. If you Classic. had to tell a, um, a person just dropped on planet Earth what a surfer looks like. The, right there. <laughs> what a grommet looks like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Aussie this, grommet surfer, perfect. This is a cool combo, this. This is him, eh? Yeah. He can act. He surfs good as well. Yes. I mean, yes, really so, good. Yeah. I know what you mean. You know what I mean? It's not just. Gosh, some people how are good. He looking through this dead section. He's a grom too, eh? How old is he? Yeah, he's young. That was a four point six seven. That one thought it might have been a bit higher, but uh, he's actually his best international friend is Jackson Dorian. Oh, they're in the heat together. And they're in the heat together. So I'm sure they're... And I'm sure they both know Jay. Exactly. <laughs> oh. This is a crazy heat. Yeah. Mates on mates. Classic. Mate versus mate. Yeah, four big names in this one. And it's funny, Jay Ocalupo all of a sudden is the, the oldest statesman of this heat. You know? Really? It only feels like yesterday that, you know, Jay was like a 16-year-old grommet. Now it's, yeah, now it's Jackson and, and Dana. Wow. Still wait to see Jackson and Sean catch a wave in this one, but I tell you what, Jackson Dorian yesterday was really impressive. He was. I thought Solid he was great. as. Yeah. Just his wave knowledge too and how he read the waves. Remember that one wave, he, he didn't yep, overforce his, overforce the wave, but he tore the bag out of it. Interesting to see there on screen, two of the surfers sitting uh, north, the other two sitting south, sort of a bit of, bit of space between the groups. The wind has definitely turned, but still, this is probably, I would, I would go as far as to saying, these are the conditions you want before the wind really picks up. For sure. For these type of surfers, they like a little bit of a, a coping. That's for sure, and they're going to get it. If they get it right and they're all on their forehand, definitely this wind's better. Even, yeah, like for the left, like you said, look at this one. It's still clean on the face. Oh, this nice is... turn. And all of a what sudden, a you talk oh. everyone else up, and the other guy... <laughs> the other guy rips the bag out of it. That was going to be an eight if I you know. made that. That's, just... that's disappointing he fell off on that one. That was going to be a big score as we look at the replay of this one, Hoy. Yeah, nice first turn. Throws the tail this turn. Big arc. 
and then he just gets a bit too late. He, oh, he sort of held back a bit. That's a big score. I don't know if he... He didn't hold back, but he sort of just didn't hit it at the right angle. Maybe a bit of backwash as well, a little wobble as he sort of went up, but yeah. But it bottomed out that wave too. It was a hard wave, hard section to hit, that's for sure. It's funny, like, you see that section and as difficult as it is, you dream of getting them because it's the easiest way to get a big score at the same time. Yeah. You know, if he if he landed any sort of lip line manoeuvre on that, it's going to be a six, seven, maybe even an eight. Maybe, yeah, high but, with that. Yeah, score gone begging there for the man in green. Three, well, he ends up, three, yeah, three. It's exactly. Doubles, if he, at yep. least doubles if he makes that turn. Yeah. Just over 15 minutes remaining in this one. You can see, see three of the four surfers on screen. And we've got a bit of a set coming. These sets generally a little too straight. We'll have to see what these ones do. It looks like red was having a look, as was Jackson Dorian from Big Island over there in Hawaii, doing these events to uh, get some practice under his belt. He's going. He's committed. There we go. Oh, with priority too. 15 minutes down and he wasted priority on that. That's a, that's a bummer for Jackson Dorian. What he'll probably do now is get on out there and maybe sort of sneak away yeah. from the other three guys and it could work out. But, uh, yeah, not a great start there from the Hawaiian. Definitely get away from everyone. Yep. If in fourth priority, you don't sit anywhere near anyone. That's what I'd be doing anyway. Especially in like waves like today, you just go down to the right or further up to the left. Oh, he's going to get it inside of here, though. No one even look, looked I, at this. No one even looked. That's... Oh, yeah, what's he got? Just needs some steep. Yeah, he's going to get it, I reckon. This is those rights into that... Into where the little channel is, where the rip's running out. One turn, that's... There mate. is a wave there. There yeah. is a... 100% there's a wave there. There's a rip bowl there. It's just in between the sets. Mm. Those mid ones. You've got to paddle in the rip, though, so... Uh, this is the wave that he found with fourth priority. It's not going to be a big score, but uh, who knows? It could be a backup number. He's got caught in the, the yeah, lip for a second there. A pretty small score, I'd mm. say. Is Jay Okalupo, of course, the son of Mark Okalupo, member of the commentary team down here at Merriweather. Looking for an end section here, Hoy. He's looking for that rip bowl right. He's found it all the way to the shore. What's he got to finish? Oh, we can't. The weird thing in the road then. What was that? It was a palm tree. Palm tree? <laughs> <laughs> Tropical Merriweather. I have no idea what that <laughs> was. What, what was that? Was it that swimmer? Maybe. What's it? Oh, it's a priority board. Okay. What is that guy doing there anyway? So you can see that there's like that right there. It's a bit mm -hmm. fat, that one. But there is actually a couple that come from the nor'east and bowl along that bank. But it looks really hard to find now that the tide's dropping as well. Mm-hmm. Well, is that it? <laughs> There's the left. That's more lit there. Look, see that one? That was a good right. Yeah, there was mm. a left off that too. Just the mid-sized ones are mm. hard to find though. It's the long straight bank from the other end of the beach to this end of the beach pretty so much. So Nori swell today, right? Yep. And when are we thinking it goes south? Is it Friday? Friday that suddenly hits yep. and then, yep. Saturday looks good and then Sunday looks like it could be four to six foot mm -hmm. and proper proper swell but the wind would be from the south but still Merriweather's not too bad on the south mm. smooth faces and there could be some running running rights on the sandbank at the back as we see good looking wave here big oh, calf that was nice wow. finish it mate finish it okay he yeah he's looking really good that first calf was something as we Wasn't see it? Jay Okalupo he's a this was his last wave, sorry. A 3.5 was uh, the number, a 3.2. Got a couple of turns on the outside. Went a bit flat in the middle, mm. didn't it? And then the priority. Nothing massive down the end. Hence the low score, 3.2. Jackson Doring got a 2.5 for his, his manoeuvre. And uh, this was a 4.23 for Dane Henry. So all four surfers oh. getting busy. That was really cool. Upside down. Through the tail. Mm. Yeah, so consistent uh, first 14 minutes or so for Dane Henry. He's out in front, and we are waiting for Sean Gunning's last ride. There it is. Much smaller than I thought. 3.63 for Sean's left-hander. Didn't like that carve at all, did no. they? 
I thought it looked pretty good. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty good that turn, but uh, I guess the end turn, he, he sort of stumbled a little bit, a little stumble, but uh, yeah, the judges, 3.63 in second position at the moment. If you didn't fall on that first one, eh, would have. that was the one. Here we go, Jay Ocalupo up and riding in the blue. On his backhand, that probably doesn't go left that often up the Goldie. Seriously, how much would he go left? <laughs> Not much. Not much at all. I wouldn't. No. How I don't does it think feel? I'd ever go left if I lived up there. How do you think it feels for those guys watching the waves up there now? Oh, that'd be. <laughs> wouldn't be happy. Always the way. No, always the way. The whole coast would be good. There's a lot of swell around. Yeah, mm. there is. It yeah. has been. That last swell that was huge here from the south, and then there's going to be another one on the weekend. Now, this swell's proper, isn't it? Here we go. Red up and riding. What's he got? Nothing. Pretty sure Dane's from the sort of Cabarita, uh, Kingscliffs kind of area there, a little under the Gold Coast. I'm sure he gets his fair share of waves up the Gold Coast. And there. It's some great mm -hmm. spots to surf around there when they're, when they're on. They're really good surfers. You see Jackson Dorian, one big turn. With priority again. Okay. It was a really tr tricky wave, that one. It looks like he had to get moving really quick. That wave closed out. We've got nine and a half minutes remaining. Dorian looking for a 4.46 to move up into uh, a qualifying position. Still no one needs big scores, do they, do they to advance? No, just it's need a, a decent wave. Yeah, a decent wave, exactly. Really stacked heat, this one. So much talent. You can see uh, that the winds change a bit. Closing, you can see how straight the bank is looking there. It's mm. Like there's the whitewash behind is just pretty dead straight. Look I it. thought that rip might have like peaked it up a bit, but it hasn't really, hasn't really done it like it normally does. I think between um, yesterday when the wind, when the the tide sorry started to go out, we did see the that left rip bowl become a little bit more obvious to the left of the screen. Yeah, I thought you'd see the sand sort of bubbling a little bit more. I think it will happen again over the next hour or two before it sort of gets really sort of affected by that nor'east breeze. This is classic summer conditions down here at the moment. This is a typical summer day down here at Newcastle. We generally get light winds in the morning and that nor'easter just kicks on in. And uh, surfers like Jackson Dorian, they sort of rub their hands together when they see a nor'easter because that's air sections on rights. Yep. The rights are looking real hard to find though, aren't they? Yeah, you can see, you can notice yeah. a couple of the guys are sort of identifying those rights. I think Sean Gunning's the only one that's got his nose locked into the left-handers. Yeah, it's pretty obvious as we've got uh, just under eight minutes remaining that we will see some ramps on the rights. Yeah, Jackson's actually gone down the beach. <clears throat> well, down the beach, south of the competitors there as you try and hunt for those rights by the sound of it. Did you ever, when you were competing, Hoy, did you ever have um, one clear plan in your mind before uh, paddling out but were smart enough to understand that you might have to go into a new plan halfway through it if the first one wasn't working? I had or do no you be plan. stubborn? <laughs> or you had no plan at all? No, nah, not really. You were pretty... Um, pretty sit there and wait guy oh yeah well i got taught to sit there and wait i wasn't at the start i'd be scrambling and then i just went you know what why you just gotta especially man on man and with priority there's no use scrambling hmm. but in four man i didn't get to like i didn't surf that many here we go no like at the end i didn't surf that many four man heats for ages for 10 years maybe i only surfed a couple wow. you know what i mean I didn't yep. do the QSs. I only did it one year because I thought it wasn't going to make, you know, the CT. And then went to Brazil for a month. Nearly killed me, mind you. <laughs> but, yeah, I didn't really surf that many man, man on man. Oh, four man heats. Just uh -huh. in the ones in Australia. And that's about it. Uh -huh. So my strategy at the end, because I got taught by the old guys that just sit and wait. There's no use going to... Wave that's not going to get you the score. Was sit Damien Harpin your biggest oh, influence? The, yeah, the Ice Man. Yeah, he was the one. He would sit and wait. He wouldn't go a wave. If the, even if 
the, a wave came and he knew he couldn't get the score, he wouldn't go. He was that sure of what he could. Yes. he needed to. Yeah, and he taught me. Well, a lot of them were the same too. He would not even. You know when these people go, oh, I'll just go this wave to see if I can get the score. If he needed an eight and knew the wave was an eight, he would not go. It's classic. As we see the. Oh. Oh wow! How's your hemi? <laughs> How's your knees? He liked that. He did like it. That was a big turn. It that was a real it. difficult turn. There wasn't it. He. He was out of control on the way down, but ended up controlling it. How does your 53-year-old body react to that? Break. I would have snapped it on <laughs> something. Ripped the shoulder out. <laughs> tweaked the knee and done an ankle. <laughs> quick, we just saw a quick wave there for Jackson. Uh, oh, he got hammered the then beach. too. Everyone's getting right. Yeah. One more, one more. Oh, he's quick, man. Isn't he? He's a really good... Well, now I see yeah, it. Surfer, After yeah. watching those hours, I'm like, all right, you can do it all by look. They just got... Oh, oh I step. broke a leggy. Yeah, that's Jay. Oh, no. That's a big... Sw- There's a bit of a gutter through the he got ha- too. He got hammered on the one before it because his board was too insane when he was on it by the look. And then looks like he bailed out on the next one and his leggy snapped. So four and a half minutes on the clock, just under oh, five. Man, torture. He's not getting back out, maybe. Probably not. You just need to... I could be freaking down there. Mm. Probably, on a day like today, you probably, maybe... There he is. There he is. Oh, no, it's one of his friends, is it? Yeah, it looks like Jay's buddy sort of getting a board ready. What's the the issue there? Is it a, is it a snap leg rope? Kian Martin, his body, buddy's got himself a board down there. Got uh, the backup board. But, it, yeah, it looks like he's going with a backup board, so... Yeah, good mate. I think he will get out. He actually came in really quick there. Yeah, he did. He got washed in. Yep, so that was about a... Got to run the beach, too. He's got to run up to that right. He can't paddle out here, mate. Or maybe he could get back out and just be off the rocks. Don't go in too far, kid. You can get... I know. You can get done for it, eh? I don't know what... The, oh, yeah. I don't know what the actual rules are with that these days. So he needs to start over again, uh, Jay. Looking for a 3.76. He's... Uh, the, the wave for the green. Good Sean line. Gunning. Oh, wow. <laughs> big turn. The judges said 3.33, so not a big score here. He lip launched it and then went lay back into the... This is a good turn here too, first one. I thought oh. he was going to get another one in too, but just wave just went too quick for him. Wasn't a score. Did they give him that score? Is that the one? No. So hasn't come in just yet. Yeah, right. Unless uh, they deemed that was... That was a one. Yeah, I think... It'd be more than that. But uh, let's see. We've got three minutes remaining. Really tight still. I know we're banging on about it, but it's a tight heat. And Jackson Dorian in the white. This kid, if he gets any smell of a wave, he'll uh, get the score required. Doesn't mean much at all. He's a 4.46. So uh, you can see Jackson on the right well, here's part a good of the bank. Wave, I reckon. And this is Sean Gunny in second position. It looked like it was holding up a bit better. And no, but it just... It's all right, though. Two, two good turns. I could better one of his scores. There we go. Jackson Dorian up I and right. he's looking for. Big section. Oh, nice turn. You got to get back out there and get another one. That could be the score, but two and a half minutes remaining. The beauty, He'll be out there with two minutes remaining. Yeah, he's going to get another opportunity for sure. That was a good lip line. That was like a floater, old school floater, wasn't it? Lip but it line. had that flair. You know, yeah. he kicked the tail a little yeah. bit. That yeah. was a good manoeuvre there. Pretty good exchange. So... Let's see what happens. This was uh, this was Jay Okalupo's oh, yeah. board. Oh, was that that, board? that was the leg rope snap. You can see why it snapped. Two turns there. Is that going to be his score too? We'll see. And uh, this is the wave the Hawaiian was looking for uh, a big section and just blast it. So he liked it too, Jackson Dorian. Scores are getting locked in. 3.9 for green. So he consolidates yep. on second position and... That's Still fair enough. yet to get the last score of uh, white. What do you reckon? Um, needs a 5.03 now, so the situation has got a little tougher. Do I think it's a 5? Uh, I think it's a 4. Maybe just under. First judge has said 4.5, second oh, yeah. 4.7. Wow. 4.73, really close. Now needs a 2.8. Wow. There's one, 80 one. seconds remaining. <laughs> this is exciting stuff here. So Dane Shane would be losing his hair. Oh, you think? <laughs> Absolutely. 
Yeah, one minute remaining. So Jay in fourth looking Where? for a, a 4 3 3. And then there's Jackson Dorian looking for 2.8. Current heat leader up and riding. Big section, huge turn. Well, that's better than his first turn, isn't it? You think? So his was only a one. They, they must have said, the judges said that uh, last left wasn't complete. As we see. Oh, here we go. This is it. Jay Ocalupo. Oh, big that turn as big. well. That was a big turn. He only What's needs he a 4.33. Need? I think wow. that's the number. 30 seconds remaining. Is he going to get the score? Then we've also got Jackson out the back. There he is on screen with 25 to go. This wave here has to be it. Maybe the next one, but uh, I think he has to catch this one. One big manoeuvre, and it's job done. Here we go. Up and riding. Big oh. lip line. Oh, oh that wow. was this. Wow. That was it, though, wasn't it? Easily. Wow. That was easily. There was nothing behind it, though, either. That was a big turn. What was there? It looks like Jackson. That was a flurry at the end of that heat. Everything went on in there. Broken leggies, people were swimming in. Oh, hitting lips. Wow, that was a... Last bit of that heat just came on. So I guess the number we're looking at is uh, the man in blue, Jay Ocalupo. Was it enough? Scores are about to get locked in. Last of Green was a 2.7. Last of Jackson Dorian was a, a 1. A 0.93. So we're looking at oh, what's happened the here? man in blue. Oh. This is it again here, Hoy. Have a look. Yeah. Big turn. It's Smack really the, big. Smack the lip. Come down with the lip. That's a 4.33 requirement. As uh, Kean Martin, the board caddy down there, doing a great job. I tell you what, he did really well, Jay Calupo, to get on out there and actually yeah. get himself on a wave. Swam in, got a new board, paddle back out. Yep, still uh, wait, waiting for the number. How about whilst we wait, we'll go to a quick break and uh, come back with more action down here at Surface. 2024 presented by Reflections Holiday Park. Well, sorry. There's the number. It's a 5.4, Hoy. He so got you it. get it. There you go. So we'll go what? to break. Jay Ocalupo into Best the next Best of the heat. Just like that. <laughs> Maddie's last night's sleep was spent trying to look up relaxing wave sounds. Tonight's actual wave sounds. Holidays, Iron Man, outdoors, Iron Man, whoa, Uber, suspension, lights, room for a can't be a quick recovery gear, oh. oh. under Iron Man, mate, and under Iron Man. <laughs> can't do two things at once. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait! Effortlessly refreshing. Byron Bay Brewery Premium Lager. Go with it. Welcome back to the show. What a show it's been as the waves continue to pump here at Merriweather. The Surface 2024 presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. And we are now moving into Heat 5, the round of 96. Exciting finish to that last one. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, meet... 
the lineup for this exchange. It's Ty Richardson out there in the blue. Tane Dobbin is going to be in the red. Harry Phillips in the white. Joshua Stretton is going to be in the green. You can see that uh, that wind puffing up just a little bit. Ronnie Blakey sitting alongside Jess Starling. Jess, uh, been, been some fun heat, some good turns laid down too. It's been jam-packed. I mean, the women's kicked off the morning in a pretty spectacular way. A lot of high scores for one manoeuvres, Ronnie, yep. this morning. Now I feel like, you know, the men are getting out there. The tide's changed. The wind's popped up a little bit, but I feel like it's pushing the faces back down and creating some more steeper sections. Yeah, it's uh, definitely going to have an effect on the conditions here for sure. But uh, let's check in with the winner of that last heat, Heat 4, Dane Henry, getting the W. Congratulations, mate. How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling good. It was um, pretty tricky out there. Had a pretty slow heat to the start, uh, slow start to the heat. And, um, yeah, kind of ended up getting it done with a couple turns. But, yeah, it was a grindy one, but stoked to get through. Have you been down here all morning, mate? Um, I had a surf super early and then kind of went back, had a cruise back at um, my mate's house and then went for a little surf to the left and, yeah, then straight back into it, so... Because that, that wind did kind of start to, to kick up a little bit. And yeah. uh, just prior to those, your heat, those heats before, it was just absolutely just pure glass out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, which presented some challenges for you guys. Yeah, for sure. Um, I feel like with the glass off, it kind of, I don't know, it kind of slowed it down a bit. Like the start, the, the first half of my heat was like the wind wasn't up yet. And now like I've seen a fair few waves come through, which is um, sick with that wind and there's definitely a lot of opportunities for some big manoeuvres to go down for the rest of the day. Yes. Dane, you pretty much set the social media world alight a few weeks ago with those two airs. I know we've spoken about them before, but you're looking like one of those competitors who could do some real damage in this event and kind of shake up the Challenger Series rankings. Where are you sitting? How are you looking coming into this final event? Yeah, um, I don't know. I've kind of had a cool little run on the on the QS right now. I did. I uh, got a quarter in the early comp and then a semi down at Port Stevens and I didn't end up doing a Voca but yeah kind of been free surfing a whole bunch at home and getting a bunch of clips so um, feeling really good with like momentum wise and my boards are feeling really good I've just got my magic synergy 510 round rounded square under my feet and yeah I'm feeling really good keen to keen to get into a couple of big heats and to get in that heat with like Jay Ock um, Jackson Dorian and Sean Gunning straight away was a huge one because you know, this, it's round two and you expect to have like somewhat of a kind of cruisier heat, but that was a super gnarly one to get straight off. So yeah, it's definitely a bit of a confidence booster to get the win in that one and move through. Yeah, huge. Yeah, I feel like it, pulling heats like that, it's almost an advantage so much earlier on because the heats do get harder the further down the draw you go. So yeah. getting that one out of the way, surely that gives you a little bit more confidence knowing that you're probably going to have hard heats like that for the rest of the draw, but you're winning those heats. Yeah, 100%. Like, it, it kind of backs up your, your surfing and your feeling. Like, I've been feeling pretty good. And, yeah, it's really cool to get a win over, like, these boys with such high caliber. And, yeah, I'm just super keen to, super keen to get on with the event. Dane, uh, mate, coming into this last event, I mean, it, it's such a big one. We've only got two, two QS 5000s, so that's where the big points are. And someone can make the, the monster jump. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously you're aware that you need to do big things in, in this contest but you know is everyone back home aware are you, your family and friends tuning in kind of yeah you know is do, do you feel that pressure um honestly i i feel no pressure like you know it's my <laughs> last year of school and i'm just like i'm really here for the experience i'm like i love surfing with like heaps of crew and like i'm out of the grom comps now it's sick to get in these big events like it's it's mental to come and get the experience and try and just just showcase my surfing and yeah, it's, it's really sick to come to these co events. And um, I got my mum, dad at home. I, this is the first trip, first comp I've done by myself and here with my coach, Adam Dufner. And um, my nan's back at home and nan and pop, I'm sure they're cheering pretty hard. So yeah, hi to them. And um, yeah, I, I'm sure they all know what's going on with the rankings and all that, but I'm not too worried about stuff. I'm just, I'm just really keen to be here and try and showcase my surfing the best I can. Awesome, mate. You must just be stinging for a big right ramp. Oh, yeah. I just saw, before <laughs> I got on this, I saw, like, the biggest ramp I've seen all week. And I just, I don't know, I kind of lost control. I didn't, couldn't really speak. So I'm super keen to get a big punt, try and get a big backy in the comp. And, yeah, it's definitely a goal of mine. So it's happening. Don't you worry. Oh, bring it on, mate. <laughs> bring it on. We love the confidence. Great yeah. performance. And, uh, yeah, best of luck in, in this last major QS event. Sweet. Thanks, these guys. What a legend. And, uh, yeah, he's been surfing so well. And, and, you know, there's 
for aspiring pros at the moment, you know, you, you want to focus on your events, but you know, you do have to like make sure your surfing's evolving and, mm. and you're not just like kind of collecting heat wins and progressing through rounds and, and climbing the ladder without your surfing going to the next yeah. level. Because from here, it just gets harder. You yeah. know, you've got a tough draw in the second round at the last regional QS. Like, so imagine what the, the first round of a Challenger Series event might be yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. And I think the cool thing about Dane is, you know, he said this is his first year out of the Grom Comps. And for a lot of people, that year is a hard year and they don't know how to comp- not that they don't know how to compete, but they don't know how to find their way on that next level. It probably takes a good two years before we start seeing those Groms in the higher rounds. But Dane has so effortlessly transitioned. I feel like it just didn't mm. even feel like it was hard for him or it was, yeah. I don't know, it just didn't seem like the same kind of obstacle that we've seen for other people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. People come at it from different ways. Um, you can get the attention of, um, you know, peers and sponsors by being, you know, really competitively savvy and, mm. and earning big results consistently. But honestly, the, the, probably the, the greatest way to sort of really put the focus on yourself is to blow minds in free surfing. And, and the moves that he was laying down on the lead up to these events... Um, you know, it's not just like his his peers at the moment looking at them. It's like the world's best surfers, yeah. CT caliber surfers, are seeing those clips and, and they're blown away by them. So, you know, he's got a bright future, Dane Henry, and uh, yeah, I, I think we'll see his heat score totals grow as he, as he moves through the rounds too. I don't expect him to be putting two wave totals of nine point six together no, anymore. No, no, I, I I don't think so either. Actually, when I looked at the total, I was like, oh. But you see, it's cool though. You see Dane's name and you already ex- you think more, yep. you know, which I think is a real testament to who he is as a surfer and a competitor at such a young age as well. Hasn't even finished school yet. Wow. That's just wild to me. But in this heat, the Nova Castrian, Josh Trenton leading the way, 4-7 and a 2-8-3. Yeah, I think there's, um, there's still room on the clock and on that leaderboard for a big shift up. I wouldn't even be surprised if Harry, Harry Phillips caught fire and, and threw himself into the mix here at some stage. He's had just the throwaway one-point ride. But uh, the swell lines continue to, to roll through for us here mm. at the moment, Jess, and you know, no, no one can really come in saying, hey, I, I didn't have opportunities out there at the <laughs> Yeah, moment. exactly. That is definitely not on the cards today. And this guy here, Tane, he's got a really cool demeanour and style about him. Oh, that was unfortunate, not making that last turn. And so does this guy, Ty has to be one of the best competitors, I think. He is really, you speak to him post-heat interviews and he's really calculated um, and he thinks about things in a really logical way in heats instead of kind of, I think instead of going off feeling is how I put it, he goes off uh, decision making and he's progressing through a lot of rounds just by being not only an amazing surfer but a really smart competitor too. Seen some replays here at the moment. It was a, a real shame for Tane. He wasn't able to ride that finishing uh, turn, that final manoeuvre. He, uh, he was kind of building speed as he transitioned down the line there. Yeah, Tane, we don't see him go left too often. His backhand is incredible. I don't know if you've seen much footage of Tane's backhand, but spray goes flying every time he does a turn. As we can see, some of the men getting ready to surf their heats. I saw Xavier Bryce in there. And Falby was down the end. And uh, yeah, it's just action after action, basically. Heat after heat, we're rolling through bigger names, higher scores for sure. So here we go, Josh Stratton. He is from the Port Stevens area and recently relocated to the Gold Coast. Yeah, right. Well, that's a, a pretty decent wave there for Josh. Already leading this heat, only looking to improve on a 2.33. And chasing him down the line here is going to be Harry Phillips starting to make his move. And we mentioned that this guy's got some weapons, doesn't stick that last kind of vert thrown up there, but incomplete. But he could uh, definitely make a charge here. Still, still time to turn this one around as we go to some replays now. Yeah, I love this wave of Josh. I love the body talk through the upper body of getting himself back into the power section. And then I'm not sure if that end turn was a rider or not. From memory, he kind of falls off the back right at the end, but... This was looking like a great wave. And then I feel like the wave probably didn't match the power he put into that turn. So Harry Phillips probably kicking himself on that end turn there. But I still think he's going to get a decent score based on those first two turns. 
So we've still got uh, a few more heats coming your way this afternoon. And hopefully these conditions hold. As you can see, the set waves continue to roll through here, finding some space just to load up and let one big individual turn go or, or finding something that's steep enough down the line to, to put a good combo together. It's proving a little difficult uh, since that wind came up. It just feels like the surfers have a little less time to, mm. to get those turns done. The uh, onshore wind just sort of helping push those wave out, the crest of those waves over a little. Yeah, we basically... I'll get uh, it done, though. Yeah, that'll be fine. I mean, they've definitely surfed worse conditions. We've had magic all morning this morning, and I think, yeah, the wind's slightly puffed up now, but if it, these guys, they're used to surfing conditions like this, and like they say time and time again, if you want to be the best, you have to be able to surf in all kinds of conditions, and, yeah, this is just the next challenge for these guys. Jess, you've been in uh, the, the situation where you're competing here mm -hmm. at the, the final regional QS event and then we know that many of these surfers you know that don't graduate um, to the Challenger Series are going to have some time to go and work on things but how welcome is the the break after that kind of grueling um, regional QS taking yeah. into consideration that, that many of these competitors were over in Asia competing as well? Yeah it's a it's a long season and then it's rapid fire events by the time we get to the back end we start our season in Asia we have three events over in Asia then we come back and we have five events here and they're back-to-back -back weekends there's not a weekend in between that we don't have an event so by the time you get to Newcastle it means so much to get here but if it's not your year and the Challenger Series wasn't on the cards for you it's so welcome that break you know it's you you learn so much on the road you grow so much not only as a competitor but as a human as well because a lot of us are managing pennies how do you make one dollar into three so i can get to the next event same thing you know they call it a qe grind it's not just the waves but getting from event to event too so i think a lot of people are pretty happy to go home to mum's cooking after <laughs> after newcastle but um yeah it's everyone will i'm sure have a fun little time at the end of this event and go home and come back better for next year most definitely let's have a look and see if Harry Phillips can finish one off here, he started to warm up and again throws it up there. You can see that what he's trying to do. He's got limited space to get those turns done. Mm. So he uh, kind of, you know, pushed it to get up there as quick as he could. But, you know, even moving at a, a pretty rapid pace, he wasn't able to get there. I feel like he buried his nose slightly at the start of that turn there, which maybe affected the speed he came out of that turn with. So getting back up to that second one, I think he looked a little bit rattled, thought he might have gotten there a little bit earlier. So, yeah, the wind definitely playing a, a bit of factor right now, but I love the attack mode that Harry's in. I feel like when he does connect on whatever wave could be the next one, the one after, it's it's going to be good. And I, I, feel, I feel like Harry's going to put himself in those top two in the next nine minutes, 20 seconds or so. I like it. Yep, and uh, we've seen glimpses of... of you know, brilliance from competitors today that still didn't manage to get themselves into that top two. And, you know, there was a, you know, I don't want to single anyone out or, or put the highlighter on anyone, but, you know, m mistakes made will really cost you at this level. As Tane Dolman, you know, you talked about his backhand. Well, that was a pretty strong forehand performance. And right behind him, Joshua Stretton. Just swings that board, the tail whips, and uh, he just over-rotates a little. Goes down on that outside rail. It's a really punchy section, that one. It's, it looks like it could hurt if you fell in the wrong spot, but this is Ty Richo, just flawless as per usual, just couldn't get a second section. But love how he grabs the rail on that first floater. That turn, though, really pushes all the way through, and then does he get the make, Ronnie? I don't think so. Nah, nah, incomplete. And uh, he, you know, he really was on his way to, to potentially climbing, you know, maybe even into the lead with the, the combo that he put together. It's still enough to get him into second spot, Tane. 3.6 for him. So Ty Richardson's pushed back to third. He's after a 2.87. Harry Phillips now after a 3.2. Anyone's game still. You know, it, it's... It, it only really sort of um, makes life super difficult for these competitors when they're, they're looking for a six-point ride and, mm. and there's not a whole lot of room to move in the lineup. But uh, one turn and, and one high-quality turn when there hasn't been a, a whole lot of big individual manoeuvres, 
could see your, your bank a six point right at this stage. So even we'll Huey Vaughan with that one massive backside floater, you know, he's definitely taking taking that strategy you were just talking about. One massive turn can still be a high score. So we go Harry Phillips. That's a better looking first turn for Harry. It's just that second section has got him on those last few waves, but. I just feel like he's building rhythm. I don't know. I feel like something good's coming from Harry. Ty Richo, he's one of those surfers who rarely makes mistakes, I feel like. Yeah, he's, uh, he's done pretty well with that section, really paying attention to just the details, stepping on the tail of the board, getting the nose lifted as he sort of free fell through that final manoeuvre. Uh, Harry uh, was only after a 3.2 to get himself up into second. As we uh, continue to look down the draw and, and coming up next, we're going to have Mikey Clayton Brown. He's going to be surfing out there in the red jersey. I have plenty of support out here. Yes, plenty of support. And he's going to take on Jimmy Hill, Xavier Bryce, and Connor Lee, another local surfer in Connor from Redhead just down the road. But I'm not sure how much you've seen of Jimmy Hill, but he's a 16 year old man child. <laughs> I've seen some of him as a nugget. And he's so impressive. He had a pretty good result in the Port Stevens QS. I think he got second or third. Um, Geordie Lawler obviously taking the win at that one. But Jimmy Hill, I was likening him to the next Wade Carmichael, Mikey Wright-esque Australian Just surfer. Full power nugget. Full man child. <laughs> Love it. I'm pretty sure he's not even driving yet. He looks pretty psyched. So we've got uh, six minutes to go. Jimmy on screen there. Nice more stucker. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what he can do. Just having a chat to Brent Dorrington before heading on out, leaning into that experience. Probably not a bad move. Yeah, I feel like any coach with experience, I saw Matty Cattle made the, the effort to get up here and support some of his athletes. I just think... Those guys who are willing to sit on the beach and watch the conditions and give you feedback, especially in heats like this, these early heats. We talked about it earlier. These are the scariest ones. They're the ones that are the most crucial. Uh, anyone who is willing to give you that feedback and spend the time analysing the conditions down here today is so valuable to have in your corner. And it's definitely those little one percenters that set you apart from the rest of the field. So I love the focus that Jimmy Hill has and getting some extra insight in for his heats. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting conversation, you know, where you don't see many surfers just doing it on their own these days. Generally, they've got someone there as a sounding board. Did you mm. ever work with Matty? Yeah, I worked with Matty Cattle a lot um, through pretty much all of my QS years, actually. True and I always travelled with our dad, and um, dad was our eyes and ears. He was the man who helped us get to where we were, and then... Um, as we got older, Dad was like, okay, it's time for you guys to do this on your own. And Matty Cattle was the first guy to come to mind for us. As we see the back end of Tane Dobbin. Oh, wow. you called it. You called it, Jess. Impressive stuff from Tane. And uh, he's about to bank his best number, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Four minutes on the clock, needs next to nothing to make a big jump up the uh, leaderboard here. And when you look at the numbers for each of the, these competitors, no one's broken into the five-point range. So I see Tane Dobbin jumping up into the lead here. Yeah, definitely. That wave was just beautifully surfed. And then Ty Richardson getting a few down-the-line turns. And I saw Josh Stratton with one big backside rear too. So it feels like maybe these guys being like, oh, get me out of this four range. You know, give me something more. So we're loving the determination. But, yeah, I want to see a replay of this wave. This was incredible. Yeah. I haven't broken into the fives because they all keep falling off. But uh, not on this one. Tane, just a really nice combination. Hammered the bowl. Uh, I mean, didn't ride out of that final move, but I think the, the work was done. This turn from Josh was lovely too. Really nice release at the end of it. But I feel like Ty got a lot of work done in this wave. There was beautiful flow and rhythm, uh, but no real nice green face. Yeah, it felt like he was chasing it, chasing the section a little. So Tane gets himself a 5.1, not enough to get into the lead. Joshua Stretton still hanging on to that number one position and has a score on the way as well, which will likely better the 4.3 for him. So he might, uh, he might just extend that lead. But Ty Richardson and Harry Phillips playing catch up here. 
And at one point we were saying, you know, Harry's looking sharp. He he looks on, but just wasn't able to stick his final turns. And now there's a bit of pressure starting to mount on him to, to turn in the, the required score, 4.71. Yeah, I'm curious to know that if, if Harry had have made his second turns or maybe had better momentum down the wave to do bigger second turns, that maybe it would have been a different story. So that's a pretty cool thing to take away from Harry. Um, it just, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like one of those heats where he hasn't quite got it together yet. We were talking coaching before, and I wanted to just pick your brain. You know, uh, often you, you were talking about it, and we touched on it, the, the coach will do a whole lot of time down on the beach mm -hmm. during the day. And as a competitor, sometimes you, you can kind of burn out on just being yeah. around the event. Yep. It sort of zaps your energy. Um, so is that sort of the, the big benefit for you? Someone else has got an eye on what the, the patterns are, where the best Absolutely. waves are? Absolutely. I feel like every athlete has their their routine, right? A lot of people, for me personally, I didn't want to be down the beach until three heats before. That was more than enough time for me. Some people like to be down there all day. Some people rock up five minutes before. Hello, Kai Warner. Um, but even if you look at Duffy, Adam Duffner, he's down here with a full crew. He's set up a tent down the beach. He's been here since the early morning surf and I'm, he'll be here until the last surf paddles in, filming his athletes, helping them mm. before and after the event. And I feel like if someone's that willing to put the time in to help you succeed, you're kind of kidding yourself if you don't want to work with someone like that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, watching Mick Fanning and his coach, Phil McNamara, they would go for an early surf before the contest. Phil would stay at the beach. Mick would go home for breakfast. He'd come down and they'd have a full debrief. What are the, uh, what are the scoring trends? Where are the best waves coming? What's the tide doing? What's the wind predicted to do? Um, what's scoring well? What turns are they loving? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just basically like a, a quick download mm. prior to your heat, but you obviously didn't have to um, watch all that data go in. Yeah, it's incredible. I'd, if I was working with Maddie, I'd come down the beach and he'd be like, okay, this bank has scored this many excellent scores and this bank has scored not as many. We're going to choose this bank. Mm. The lefts were scoring more, like he had it down to a fine art. Like yeah. It was. All the work was done for you, and then we'd set a plan, and we'd go out, and all you had to do was execute the plan. Yeah, and uh, Jake Patterson, in, back in the day, as we watched this one come to a close, I'd, I'd watch him sort of say, on average, 13.5 points is getting the victory. Mm -hmm. So, like, to give yourself a, a solid base, work towards that total in the opening stages of the heat, and if you get it, then really start to surf out of your skin yeah. and, and, and push it higher. Uh, 25 minutes uh, on the clock uh, has passed now for the, the surfers in heat five. And uh, it was another relatively low scoring heat, but it did have some great surfing in it. It was Joshua Stretton getting the W, getting the win. Tane Dobbin held on for that second spot. We take a bite of Ty Richardson and Harry Phillips. Do not go anywhere. More to come from Surfest 2024, presented by Reflections Holiday Parks in just a moment. The race course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder, it brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins. Newcastle Racecourse, home is where the track is. Welcome to Sydney. Upbeat. Downbeat. Feel its heartbeat. Open spaces. Adam has taken a few losses at work this week. A loss out here, a little easier to take.
Holidays. Iron Man. Outdoors. Iron Man. Whoa. Ooh, bar. Suspension. Lights. <laughs> Room for a Can't be a great Recovery mate. gear. Oh. Good luck. Under Iron Man, mate. Hang the hundred Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> can't do two things at once. Oh, <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We are now into heat number six, the round of 96. Jimmy Hill is out there in the blue. Mikey Clayton Brown is going to be in the red. Connor Lee in the green. Xavier Bryce in the white. What a lineup. Couple of scores already logged for our competitors. Nothing mind blowing, nothing huge. So you haven't missed anything just yet, but uh, this should be a good one. This is going to be a great heat. I, um, I'm going to keep my eyes pretty close to Jimmy Hill. He's been a real standout dark horse for me in the last few events. Uh, as we see Xavier Bryce up and riding from the Northern Beaches, surfs for Long Reef board riders, and he's all style, I feel like, Xavier Bryce. Mm, that was a good start from him too. I think he'll maintain pace with, with Mikey and Jimmy. Um, so we'll see. I think it's going to be pretty comparable, that score. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be Connor Lee probably. Playing a little bit of early stage catch up here. Yeah, I feel like this is a this is going to be a bit of redemption event for Mike Clayton Brown. He's he came into this event last year looking pretty good to qualify for the challenges, um, and lost early. So I feel like he's come in for a bit of redemption. I wouldn't uh, be surprised if he came in guns blazing in this one. But this is Jimmy Hill. That was just the three eight three from Jimmy, and then this was Mikey's three six seven. So small scores to start off, but. Everyone looking pretty determined to make this heat so far. Seen a lot of these guys, uh, Jimmy and, and Mikey, representing their board riders clubs in some of the uh, the great board rider uh, board riding events that we've we've had recently here in Oz. But yeah, both uh, performed really well. So you know, as far as their their competitive touch goes, they're they're right where they should be at the moment. And that's why I think we're uh, we're predicting good performances from these competitors. Looks like Connor throwing his hands up. Maybe a bit of a board change. Yeah, might have buckled his board. But some good size set waves, and they look like they might even be just a, a little big for this lineup at the moment. All this sandbar, they're going to shut down. So that'll kind of work in Connor's favour as he does a board change. You'd think on the inside. This wave here for Xavier Bryce, I loved it. Got himself a five, really beautiful first turn. I just love, watch this, he had his foot forward and then pushed it back at the very back of his grip from transition to turn. So he's really in tune with his body on the waves. And then, wow, strong wave there for Mike Clayton Brown. That was a four, seven, three. And then this is Connor Lee buckling his board on this one. Yeah, it looked like it. Something happened there. Um, there it is. There's the crease just uh, at the front of the board. So he'll be back out there shortly. But, uh, yeah, great uh, little replay there of Xavier Bryce. I enjoyed that wave. Really crisp hits. Mm. Uh, well, well chosen manoeuvres. A variety in there and uh, the best wave of the heat so far. So he's up in that top two right where you want to be. Yeah, especially with a five as your opening wave. I feel like the heats that you start out with at least a five, it's just a momentum builder from there. Um, it's, it's one of those moments where you go, okay, that's a five. You know, okay, that's good to know. Uh, what happens if I push a bit harder? What's that going to be? So that's a really nice um, start to the heat for Xavier Bryce. I hope that he builds momentum and gives us an eight or something by the end of this heat. But this is Jimmy Hill flying down the line on this one, but... Yeah, jumps out of there. It's maybe a bit of a straighter left, that one. There's some that corner off quite nicely and others with the swell that just closes out along the beach. He'll get back out there. Plenty of time remaining here, but let's check in with the winner of the last heat, Joshua Stretton. Josh, a tough lineup. Everyone had their moments, but there was sort of a, 
a tricky end section to each of those waves and everyone's trying to figure out how to how get that final turn done and uh, eventually you did it. It got you the win. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. It was pretty fun. Wasn't too bad out there. Nice. Mate, uh, you're from not too far away, just up the, the track. Do you do you feel at home when you compete here at Merriweather? Yeah, definitely. Spent a lot of time out here, so I'm super comfortable and waves are pretty fun, so I'm happy. Awesome, mate. Uh, and what about the hometown support? Do you feel that making the uh, the trip down here as well? Yeah, for sure, since, especially since living up on the Gold Coast for a while. I um, haven't seen everyone in a, in a hot minute, so it's been good to come down and catch up with everyone and um, get a few waves. Yeah, Josh, talk, me, talk to me about that. You've moved to the Gold Coast for surfing pretty much, and I want to know how that transition's been from Newcastle to Gold Coast life and uh, coming back if you feel like it's the right decision. Yeah, the transition was pretty good. Um, had already a couple of few friends up there and had a good support network, but um, I actually just moved back home two days ago. So I just missed everyone too much and missed family. <laughs> and um, So, yeah. How did you um, did you find the lineups? Uh, because when I go to the Gold Coast, I don't find it that welcome. <laughs> I don't feel like anyone's trying to make me feel at home. It's pretty intense. I mean, if the waves aren't fully, fully pumping, it's kind of hard to... I don't know, sometimes find a bit of motivation to paddle out with a thousand people. So, yeah. but, um, but no, it's been fun. It's definitely a good experience. And, and since you've been home, mate, have you, um, you found uh, some, some de decent conditions to get you in good form for, for this event? Yeah, it's been fun back home. I mean, I was only really like moved back like two days ago, so I didn't really have any time. I just essentially moved back, slept, and then came straight here. But I think home will be pumping this weekend, so I'm pretty keen. Awesome, mate. And just just quickly, uh, how's your how's your run been through the um, the Australian QS events so far this year? Um, I haven't really done too many of them. Uh, last year I had a pretty bad injury, so I just sort of wanted to take you know a bit extra time and reset for potential overseas events. So um, this is sort of my first proper run at an event, so I'm just sort of taking all the pressure off and having a lot of fun. So beautiful. Yeah. And what did you do to yourself? Uh, I did a fair bit of damage in the knee with MCL and a grade one tear to my ACL, and it was just a bit of a back and forth for uh, pretty much up until this time last like la this time last year was when I did it. But it's only just come good now, so it's been super up and down. But I'm happy to be back in the water 100 percent again, mate. And uh, winning heats here uh, at Surface, congratulations and welcome home. And yeah, thank you. All the best in the next round. Sweet, thank you, heaps. Joshua Stratton there getting the job done coming back from injury and looking sharp and you know what he had some big committed turns on some uh, some pretty chunky sections out there too so you know that tells you that you know as far as he, his confidence goes in attacking waves with that knee he's, he should be sweet so we'll see how he fares in this contest that last wave from Xavier Bryce I love the tempo on that wave a little chop up at the end too it was like a cool little claim I guess but then then there was Mikey Clayton Brown so those two surfers looking really fired up in this one but Zave I feel like is a a bit of a free surfer in a in a rashy right now he's he's the kind of guy who give, gives me that free surfer go and travel the world you know drop really cool edits kind of kind of vibe but he's showing that he can get the work done in a rashy right now too I'm loving the tempo of his surfing and um, it's just beautiful to watch too. G generally speaking, you know, there, there's those just all-out animals who uh, just compete just so fiercely that win fans for, for that approach. But I think for the most part, you know, the surfers that, that kind of are able to compete and, and have that look or approach about them uh, in that, you you know, you would watch a free surfing editor of theirs as, you know, as much as you'd watch a heat of theirs, yeah. like they're the surfers that win the most fans. So uh, Xavier Bryce just definitely has that that clean style, and you know it doesn't sort of look like competition forces him to rush his turns or, or get no. desperate. No, I agree. I think that's you just put that so perfectly. Sometimes people get in the rushy and feel like they have to force their surfing, um, where I feel like Zave has a really nice balance between. Yeah, getting the job done, but also making it look so effortless and free surfy too. So, yeah, I think he's definitely impressed me this season. Um, but I also wouldn't be surprised if he was like, no, nah, I'm just going to go and travel and <laughs> get clips. He's just that kind of cruisy guy. Uh, but, yeah, I hope he stays in the comp rashy for a while because he's been quite entertaining this heat. 
Oh, eyeing one off there, Jimmy. Having a good look at that left. It looked like a pretty good one, but maybe he just wasn't deep enough to capitalise on that first steep section. 13 minutes to go here. Burton Automotive celebrating 20 years of uh, partnership with Surface this season. And uh, we want to send a big shout out to Kim and the team at Burton Automotive who've been supporting the local community here, including charities, uh, sporting organisations, and in particular Surfest and, and the competitors in the area that uh, live in this zone. Uh, they've been supporting them for over 60 years, so massive uh, partnership there. And uh, obviously they've got a, a number of um, different outlets that you can check out. Uh, Maitland and Port Stephens Toyota, Hunter GWM, Port Stephens GWM and uh, Hunter 4x4. So, yeah, get, get in there and get behind the business that gets behind this event. Yeah, I had Jacko in here uh, a few heats earlier and we were talking about Burton Automotive and he said, I wouldn't be where I am in my career if it wasn't for them. Wow, yeah. huge. Now, Good to see Jacko. He's looking fit despite the broken foot, but um, yeah, he's on a mission to get back to his best in time for the Challenger Series. So uh, hopefully he can get that done. But uh, right now, just under 12 minutes to go. Connor Lee had the board change. It's really held him back in this heat. Finds himself in fourth place, but he's worked his way back to the top end of priority now. Yeah, Connor's the opposite of what we are just talking about with Xavier Bryce. Connor's really gone down that free surfer road. Um, so he's been given the local wild card, I believe, in this one. Here we go, Mike, just teeing off two really nice turns on a set wave, so a good size wave. Uh, but, yeah, Connor, I feel like maybe feeling the pressure of the Rashi. He definitely doesn't feel the pressure when he's free surfing. A lot of us don't, and he's taken to that free surfer lifestyle. Please ride out of this wave. Wow, Xavier Bryce. That was pretty impressive, wasn't it? Hung on. Wow. That Worked was his way really through that nice. white water. Got a little caught up in there for a moment. I, you know, we've seen some pretty unbelievable uh, versions of the air reverse so far, but this, you know, won't stack up against what we saw from Noah Arkfeld, I don't think, but still the way he flipped his board out and, uh, you know, got pretty tweaked through the air. Just didn't complete that much of the rotation in the sky. That wave of Noah's was incredible, and he... He's from that Shargao region in the Philippines, and he's kind of likened to the next Marima coming through. And they actually had a semi-final together, and it was just an air show between Marima and uh, Noah. So I'm hoping that you know Noah can keep bringing that because I saw that out of the corner of my eye. I was had a heat off, and I was like, "Wow, Ronnie's gonna love that one in oh, the booth." Mate. <laughs> we were eating it up. It was awesome. He was buzzing too. So numbers coming through as expected. They're, they're pretty impressive for Xavier Bryce in a, uh, a heat that hasn't really had too many big explosive individual turns. He plants that reverse, gets himself a 6.5 and gives himself a pretty healthy lead here. Mikey Clayton Brown, he's in that second position at the moment, chipping away quite nicely himself. And it's left Jimmy Hill and Connor Lee chasing pretty reasonable numbers. Jimmy needs a 6.17. Connor just really trying to get something on the board here. This wave, a lot of foam on the face. Some frustration on show there for, for Connor. He kicks out of that one. Yeah, just like I was touching on before, I feel like he's a, you know, we said some people feel the pressure of the Rashi. Potentially that's how Connor's feeling. I haven't seen him in a competition since this time last year when he was in the surface and he did pretty well in the surface last year jimmy hill now up and riding a bit of foam on this one but super <sighs> deep bottom turn and pays yeah. off on the top so just yeah. he doesn't look his age and he doesn't surf like it either super impressive from jimmy man so much authority in those turns i mean this is you know really surfed hard on that section even transition then uh, and then surfs up over the lip, over the pocket, plants that move and gets on out of there. I'm um, expecting a good score for Jimmy. Is it going to be the 6.17 that he needs, though? I, I think so. I really liked it. Two strong turns on a set wave. I mean, we've seen a lot of high scores thrown for, uh, you know, those progressive movers like we just saw Xavier Bryce get that 6.5 for. But, I mean, if you can lay down two really strong turns on those bigger sections. Jacko talked about it earlier, that type of surfing 
translates beautifully through all the different phases of the WSL, whether it's the QS Challenger Series or the CT. He said, if you can find yourself the biggest section and hit it as hard as you can, I, he said, I don't care where you are in the world, you're getting scores. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a good point. And Jacko has kind of come at it from a couple of different angles. Big power turns is what he generally relies on. But, mm. you know, like most surfers who compete at the top end also has airs that he can call on if need be. Um, but, yeah, I, I love Jimmy Hill's approach. It's just a, you know, we're, we're going to see a couple of different ways you can go about getting a solid number here. Okay. Big individual turn or a, a nice big powerful combo. So waiting for it to drop. I think it has dropped. No, it can't be three. Surely it's not the three four three. <laughs> Surely not. Well, let's see. Uh, Jimmy Hill's not banking on it. That's for sure. He's going to keep going. Seven minutes to go. Loads up. This wave shuts down though. Yeah, you might be right. Three point four three. I thought it had a little bit more in it. Wow, I did too. Um, I was surprised. I, I thought it was actually going to be much better than his first wave, the three point eight three, and really yeah. give him a chance going into the. The final stages, chasing a, a smaller requirement. I, I wasn't sure it was going to get to a 6.17, but <laughs> it, it's definitely below where I thought it would land. I was so far off. <laughs> yeah. No, I was calling it the 6.17. So, yeah, the judge is just not giving it the nod. So Jimmy has to push harder, which is going to yeah. be good for us. I can't wait for that. Yeah, I think you've got to um, keep in mind too, or we have to keep in mind that you know, Mikey Clayton Brown's been doing some pretty good work on mm. the left. He's had some pretty chunky sections, and maybe Jimmy's ride was pretty comparable to Mikey's five two seven. Yeah. And um, they were saying, you know what? You feel like Mikey had a little bit more in his. He, he definitely had a, a cleaner sort of projection hit off a, a closeout section. So I think that's where the comparisons are at the moment. I think it'd be uh, dangerous to sort of compare. Jimmy's previous ride to maybe the, you know, the five that we we saw from Xavier Bryce because I, I felt that like they should have been a little bit closer. Yeah, I agree, and I think I've been travelling with a few of the judges last year, going around the Asian regional series, and then now this year here, and it's I was sitting with some before actually uh, up at breakfast and. When they sit and talk, they actually talk about the waves. Even when they're not judging, they're just still judging. No, they do. They're going, oh, that was that was in the 5-5 five five realm. And mm. I love to sit there and go, and they go, Jess, what do you think? And I was like, oh, maybe a 4-5. And then they explain to me why that wasn't a 4-5 or why it was. And um, a lot of the time, I'm pretty off. But they reckon if you live within that one-point range of – or point Spread. five, Yeah, they, that you're, you're, you're on the right track. The average will do yeah. its work, uh, basically. But, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one. It's, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, every individual uh, forms their own opinion on, on how they see it. And, um, yeah, there, there may have been quite often a, a couple of judges that agree with you, but, you know, the average will kind of bring it down a notch. But yeah, I've, uh, I've had plenty of conversations with judges mm. over the years commentating events, usually... Um, and they're explaining to me why my opinion was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's all part of it, you know. It's, it's inevitable sometimes. We all, we all are uh, attracted to sort of, you know, very different aspects yeah. of surfing and we, we like different things. Yeah, I feel like it's cool to pick their brains about the way they see waves uh, where I just get excited about surfing. So mm. sometimes I probably have even though I'm 21, some grommet energy um, when I watch surfing. And I think it's more than what it is, but it's really cool how they can pick apart waves and know exactly what it is. And, yeah, there's a reason why they're doing what they're doing and why I've chosen what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually find that, too, there's more controversy when the conditions are, are kind of as they are. Mm. And uh, there's there's sort of more of that, you know, it's, it's sort of less about the... You know, the, the big moves, the big dynamic turns, and especially if they're not thrown down. Like, right now, the benchmark is by far Xavier Bryce's air reverse. Yes. Like, it's just like yep. the one high-quality turn that's been laid down. The De degree of difficulty is right there. And then when you look at the other rides, you're like, uh, well, at most beaches, you know, there's a good surfer that can do that kind of surfing. That's why the surf, all the scores are kind of average. 
and, and it's going to get compressed into that average scale until one of these surfers uh, finds a, a little bit of room to, to do something that mm. will truly blow our minds. So inevitably, you end up with a lot of comparable rides. And then when you get into the nitty gritty, you know, you, you sort of form your own opinion on, on where you think that number should actually be. And, you know, the, the truth of the matter is it's, it's not far off. Yes. Usually um, off the pace. You might not agree with it, but it's, it's usually right there. Yeah, I feel like that's a, a better way to look at it than what I've probably been looking at it for the short time I've been doing this. But I think... Yeah, as per, you're so right. In conditions like this, it, it surfing does get repetitive. Um, and so even if you needed, say you needed a three, a three probably isn't as easy as you think in conditions like this because there's so many threes out there. Yeah. Um, and how do you make a three better than a three, you know? So I think too, um, you know, with throwaway scores, here we go, loading up at the moment. Is Xavier Bryce in the white, can't get to the ramp in time. But uh, with throwaway scores is probably a, a really good way to sort of illustrate what I'm saying. With throwaway scores, someone will get up and just kick out of a wave and generally they might get a, you know, a 0.6 mm. or a, a, a 0.7. And uh, if you get to the end of the heat and the throwaway scores are, are what you're deciding the heat on, mm. there is going to be definitely some arguments on, on, you know, who kicked out of their wave with power and got a point seven <laughs> or whatever if that was to decide the heat yeah it, there'd be so much controversy involved in that it's yeah, like when exactly. the when the scale gets compressed that's when people have differing opinions yeah and generally so uh we, we've seen so many heats that have had mid-range fours um you know low fives and uh, as a result we've been a, a little off in sort of some of our predictions yeah. of where those numbers are going to be and that's okay <laughs> ah, yeah it yeah. happens yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, we're not getting paid to give scores out, that's for no. sure. One minute remaining here, and Xavier Bryce still has the two two very healthy numbers. He, he's looking to improve on a five to extend this lead. He's eyeing off something at the moment. This wave might be ramping up. Unbelievable, the surfer's ability to, to just whip that board out of the lip. Can't, can't stick that one, though. I always... I'm not sure about you, but when I watch surfers land in the flats... My mind, I always just go, oh, ankles, knees. I just always, oh, yeah. <laughs> always sure. really feel the pain through watching it. Uh, but it looks like these guys scrambling to get in position. There's 30 seconds on the clock. No takers on this one. We keep our eyes close to blue and green. But, yeah, there's nothing of real consequence coming through right now. You can see Jimmy Hill has created a bit of space between him and Mikey. So Mikey's... Not too worried. Sorry, that's actually Connolly. So Connolly needing an 8-6. That's one of the highest scores of the event. Mikey yeah. Wright and uh, keeping... Mikey Wright. Mikey Clayton Brown keeping Jimmy, Jimmy off that last one. So smart competitive surfing there from Mikey. Yeah, look, um, just doing what he had to do. The pressure was on Connor early. He did have a, a board change. He had a busted board. He had to get back out there, get himself to the top of priority. And it just felt like he'd lost total rhythm with the lineup. So uh, not a great performance for him. Jimmy Hill had some moments, but ultimately fell short. The local boy, Mike Clayton Brown, holding on to that second position, and he does still have a score on the way. Doesn't go into his top two, though. And Xavier Bryce gets the victory here in Heat 6. We're going to take a quick break. More to come from the Burton Automotive Pro right after this. Craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. Maddie's last night's sleep was spent trying to look up relaxing wave sounds. Tonight's actual wave sounds. Holidays! Iron Man! Outdoors! Iron Man! Whoa! Uber! Suspension! Lights! <laughs> Roof rack! Can't be a quick Recovery man. gear! Oh. The light! Hunter Iron Man, mate! Hang Hunter Iron Man! <laughs> <laughs> can't do two things at once, oh. right, <laughs> Wait!
effortlessly refreshing. Byron Bay Brewery Premium Lager. Go with it. And welcome back to Mirror of the Beach, Surface 2024, presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. Mark Ocalupo, how are you, mate? I'm real good. Yeah, real good. Uh, I was just, uh, had, Jay had a heat, so it was a sketchy heat for him. He broke his leash and had about five minutes left, scrambled his way back out there and got the score. So I am happy. Uh, Everything no that could that. go wrong went wrong. Yeah, pretty much. Until I mean, the last wave. Yeah, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I know until the last wave. You're so right, Rossi. Here we go. Is that Tycoolis? Yeah. Yeah, right there. Um, and and um, it did. And, like, what I did, Rossi, is because, you know, we're looking from above up here and all the competitors are. So I went down, and I should have done it earlier because I went down beach level and it looked so different. I was like, the, I imagined how I would surf out there. I got to ground level and I was like, there's no way I could surf the way I thought I could out really there. Really fast? No, fast and full. Mm. And, like... Fast, full, and just those conditions, like a real slow ground swell too. Like it, it was tough out there, man. I, I mean, I've been commentating all day. I did not realise how tough it was, especially on that high tide. He was pretty much on the high, I think, mm-hmm. too. Tides going out, waves are getting a bit, bit better. You're the local, tell me. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say because this is a bank that we don't generally surf. You know, we try to surf, um, you know, the the rock shelf and stuff. But yeah, today it's not really. It's doing just that. the swell so north. This is mm. the biggest area by far. Like. I'm staying up at Newcastle Beach and it's like heat about two foot smaller, like up at Dixon Park. Like here's like four or five foot everywhere else. Is that the case with the North Swell? How big was East End? Did you see Newcastle Beach today? Yeah, no, it was only like three, four foot. Yeah, wow. I think, I, I have a feeling the swell's picked up a lot in the last few hours oh, though, as well. Okay, okay, okay. I think yesterday morning it was the same. It was only a foot in the morning, then it was, you know, three foot. It's been funny. It's been like a building swell most days. But uh, yeah, so good job there from your boy earlier and uh, now we're moving on through into heat seven the round of 96 quick wave there for the man in blue Tyler coolest 3.17 and uh, a couple of low scores for for brock and marlin as we go down and have a chat to the the heat winner of that last one how are you xavier yeah good thanks what's going on how was it out there um pretty tricky there's like a few bumpy ones but there's diamonds in the rough out there Every heat is hard these da- these days, but gosh, that one looked like a pretty tricky one on paper. Yeah, definitely um, some good names in there. I've surfed with all those boys, and they all ripped that hard, so felt good to get a win amongst them. Have you beaten them every time? Literally uh, every time? <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> Mate, you're from uh, down the northern beaches, right? Yeah. Similar kind of waves to what we're seeing today, what you're surfing now? Yeah, yeah, really similar. I felt pretty familiar out there with, like, Feel my local beaches, so... Is yeah, it Long Reef? Good. Yeah, Longy. Pretty good wave, hey? Yeah, yeah, shout out to Long Reef. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Oki, any questions for uh, the winner of that last one? Well, yeah, I mean, y- did your f- board feel big enough? Like, I, you know, I was watching Jay in his heat, and he got a set, and it didn't look big enough. Um, yeah. It, how about... did it? Because it, I got down a ground level after, you know, your competitors area, so yeah. these guys are sitting so high, yeah. and when I went down and watching ground level, I'm like... Wow, it looks different down here. It looks hard, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, don't know, I was riding a little swallowtail out there that, I don't know, maybe a little bit undergun, but held really well. So thanks to Luke Short for making me good boards. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well done. Yeah, cheers. Appreciate it. Yeah, good stuff, mate. And uh, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. Good surfer. He's another one of those, uh, one of those names that kind of been knocking on the door for the last few years. If something breaks right, he could... Uh, he could part, you know, pay the way to a bit of a career in it. Really mm. good surfer. Yeah. That was a hard heat, that one. It had a couple of locals in uh, Mikey Clayton Brown, Connor Lee and Jimmy Hill. Semi locals. Wow. Nova Castrians, Port Stevens boys. Mm. You claim them all in the general area, right? Well, yeah, I know. It was a conversation <laughs> me and uh, uh, Starling had before. What, what is, like, what? Where's the radius? Yeah, exactly. Where is the radius? <laughs> it's funny, you know, like, uh, um, at Snapper, like, you know, the radius is not far. And, like, you know, definitely, you know, there's a lot of, you know, different board riders club close. You know, there's Kira, there's D-Bar. Um, wow, how was that turn there? That was sketchy. That just looked sketchy. Lucky, he, you know, he didn't go through with it because that would have hurt. That was Quinn Bruce there. 
Of course, yeah, Queen's Queen, up around your way. Queen's up my way. So, yeah, the reason he's here is um, he won, won the Open Club Championship that uh-huh. we had. Um, we, you, know, you know, most ball riders have that. We have it at the end of the year, but we had the waves weren't good at snapper. So we only had it about a month ago. And the prize money was like three grand. And um, he decided to do the QSs with it. Yeah, so that's why he's here. He hasn't it, done here for a while. No, he hasn't done QSs for a while. So Quinn won the club championship. He beat Joel in the final. Um, Joel had a nine, uh, and Quinn had a couple high eights, surfing really good. Oh, so he's so found that's some a, form. He's back. Yeah, so that's the reason Quinn's here, yeah. So he, he got through his first round, and, um, yeah, that's the Quinn Bruce story. Has he got a, a, some sort of chance at going further? Is that, And he wants to do that? Does he want to get into the challenges? Or Well, I guess he'd love to, but he, this is his first event of okay. this whole season. He hasn't done anything. <clears throat> um, yeah, so he just sort of used the money and come down. I think he'd done a vocar. Um and he's doing this. Uh, I mean, three grand's only going to get you so far. <laughs> That's very true. But, but I'll tell you what, it must, you know, if you beat Parco out at Snapper, I don't care if it was one foot, four foot, five foot, it must give you a bit of um, bit of confidence to think you could probably step it up and go even further. Quinn's been a good surfer for a long time. You know, he, he really has. Uh, hopefully we can see it in this heat. Is he born and bred at Snapper? I'm pretty sure. Around there yeah, somewhere? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Jay Phillips is probably... I actually just talked to Jay Phillips, captain, uh, president of Snapper, and I had to ask him how the waves were. And oh, why? Why did you ask? Why did I do it? It's true. He said <laughs> it was pumping in the morning, so crowded, but then he set, waited for mid to high tide, and he said, I was pretty much the only one out there, Ock, and I'm like, oh, great, yeah. I actually spoke to Jarvis Earl before, and he only just got to town because he just milked it. He stayed out for as long. And he said it was the best he's ever surfed it. I know he's a lot... He's young, he's yeah. He's a lot younger than you, but... Yeah. Oh, well, crazy. then you get the debate about the old Kira and the new and the new Kira, right? Because the old Kira was a completely different wave, and the new Kira is a very fast kind of running freight train when it used to not be like that. It used to be a lot thicker. What was that cyclone maybe, was it about five years ago? Omar, was it Omar? Yes, it was. It was uh, well, Jarvis was there at an Omar, and no I said, way. was it better than Omar? He said... Yes. Oh, Wasn't yeah. as big? Yeah, I'm not sorry. as big. I'm sorry, I'm still I just don't want to hear this. Yeah. You know, as long as Jay keeps getting through heats, I will not, I won't, I will take it. Yeah, and I'll take one for the team. Um, I already have. <laughs> Mate, how many. No, ro- hey, <laughs> Rossi, no one is going to miss me up there, I promise you. <laughs> I'm sure they're hoping this event goes for a few weeks. <laughs> here we go, someone's flying down the line here. Wow, good looking style here for Ty Coolis. He's that classic goofy footer, looking really, really comfortable on his board. Unfortunately, he didn't get a major turn in, but uh, the style, the flow, it's, uh, it's there, looking really good. Yeah, you know, this left bank, you know, it's been a lot of lefts today, and it seems like you'd like to be goofy because mm. it's fast and, you know, like the wave doesn't really ever slow down and it's hard to kind of, um, you know, tee off back end when the waves are like that. Is it... A, the, the question I'm about to ask you, it sounds kind of a little bit a little bit silly, but did you ever have a sort of preference of what way you'd like to compete on? Were you more comfortable on your back end or your forehand? Yeah, well, it, it oh. changed. Yeah, when I was, um, you know, like a young gun coming out of Cronulla, I, I did like my forehand better. Mm-hmm. But then in my second time on tour, I'd always, already lived on the Gold Coast for a long time and surfed rights forever. And then my backhand got way better. And so... The majority of the tour definitely backhand is uh-huh. my advantage, like, like by a big percentage. See, it know? goes without saying, I think, that the people would say, yeah, they'd rather your backhand, I yeah. think. But yeah. it's funny. You watch a, half, a lot of these competitors, and even Mick Fanning, for example, like, his forehand something, but his backhand is, is incredible, you know? Incredible. Like, even though he grew up on the, the point breaks of the Goldie, I reckon a lot of people would say they'd probably rather watch him when he's back in. No, I know, but they worked on it. And Joel too, you know, they worked on it. At a young age, their back ends were not that good. But, you know, like once they win in, started winning events and started competing away from um, home, um, you know, they worked on it. And it didn't take them long to get a lethal back end, mm. you know. And they had to work on their back end tube riding too, like, you know, because Pipe and, and that and Andy Cho and Poo, Kelly. Then they started hanging out with Andy and Kelly, and they learnt from um, you know Bruce and Andy, and uh, and then they just perfected backhand barrel riding too. Mm. You know, so it didn't. It come, you know, it doesn't come easy coming from the Gold Coast. You get um, really at that one way. You know, um, you know, just you're only going right. 
And when when is the last event you surfed? Or have you have you been throwing the rashi on even club rounds or anything? There was some heat yesterday with three people in it, and you I thought about it. Really? <laughs> I did, but the waves were small, and I was like. It's not about me anymore. It's about Jay, right? But you've just you got know? it in you. Is it always ticking? It's always in me, yeah. <laughs> and I have to remind myself, it's not about you. It's about Jay. It's Jay's turn, you know. And uh, I'm going to compete, though, this year, Rossi. Uh, there's been a... Because um, Jay Bay's not on this year. Yep. It's a specialty event. Yep. And I've been invited to that. So no I, I'm way. really looking forward to that, yeah. How special? Like, what it, names are we getting again? Well, we're getting, like, Joel and Mick and Kelly and Sean Holmes. Remember Sean Holmes? He yes. used to take down Andy. So a couple of local guys. Uh, yeah, like, um, not a lot of us. Yeah, so I think it's about a dozen. You Same know. sort of window, like that timing? Same window, yeah. Wow. Mm, so I'm looking forward to competing again there. And because I haven't been back to J-Bay for ages and... I got a few trips this year, so I'm taking the missus to the Maldives, and I, that'll be good for. There's a private island, and there's a perfect left for her. So yeah, kids club. Perfect. Yes, yeah, she, she deserves it, man. Quick wave there <laughs> for uh, Marlon Harrison, obviously going down in the final manoeuvre. A couple of low scores here, nothing of substance. A couple of threes, a couple of twos, as we see Quinn Bruce utilising priority. Nice big turn there. Would love to get another one up into the, the lip. There it is. Pretty decent surfing there from uh, Quinny Brutes, the natural footer. What is yeah. he, about 26 years old? Yeah, something around there. The first turn was good, but oh. I think he should have just went r at the next round one. He tried to get down the line, but he was never going to get there. So so the second turn, we'll see the replay, but the second turn should have been vertical and would have been a much higher score. Mm, but still, and I think it will be one of the better numbers of the heat. Big snap there. There it is. Quinn Bruce scores yeah, Did you see what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And Marzi. What's your Ooh, relationship like with Marzi? Well, well he's bloke. my neighbour. <laughs> Direct neighbour. Yeah, no, he lives on top of me. Like, he lives on the, <laughs> he lives on the, he's on the penthouse and I'm one under him. We look over Snapper, over Rainbow. Um, and yeah, he's, they're, they're, he's, they've lived on top of me for about, oh, four or five years now. I've been in that place for 10 years. No way. Yeah, so he's my neighbour. <laughs> Unreal. My Good little surfer. Him and Piper, they're very close and his dad, Harry. Um, yeah, very lovely. And Mum Mel, yeah, we're all yeah, super, um, yeah, super good family. How good is he? He's got he's a chance. He's good. Yes, yeah. he's very good. He's got a chance for sure. Like, you know, he's um, he, he's very committed. Uh -huh. You know, and he surfs great. You know, definitely needs to kind of maybe fill out and get you know more. You know, but he's still growing. What I'm, mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to say. They all are. Jay's shot up. Like <laughs> he's taller than me now. You is know, that officially happened? It officially happened. <laughs> You know, so they're all growing, you know, and they're, they're, they'll, um, you know, just have to adjust with new boards and, and uh, you know, they're all going to get really good. I just noticed there's no sticker on his board anymore. Looks really? Like I did not know that. Unless it was a white sticker. It looks like he's got a real clear board, Marlon Harrison. I did not know that. It's usually quickie. Mm. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I, yes, I noticed that too now. Yeah. That's the first time I've noticed it. Uh, good spotting. Sp spare real estate on the nose. Good spotting there, Rossi. One of the better surfers, better up-and-comers in Australia, Marlon Harrison out there in the red. So it was a 4.07 for his last ride as we see... A Quinn. Good, a good looking wave here, Ock. Quinn, come on, get up there. Oh, beautiful snap from Quinn there. That was kind of what I wanted him to do on the last wave, and he's done it. So I think he's got a semi-good score there already. So look at this replay. Quinn's always been really super smooth, and he never usually do does double turns. It's always just complete elongated turns. Um, and there's Marzi. Whoa. Ooh, that was a nice big. turn from Marzi. Yep, yep. It looks like he's got that, that perfect technique on his back end, real top to bottom, square. Yep. Solid stuff there from uh, the current heat leader. Good carve down into the perfect position and a big backside blast there. For Marlon Harrison, I think that's going to be a good number, that one. So a nice exchange there between Quinn Bruce and Marlon Harrison. I'm sure they surf a couple of state rounds together. No, or it's Snapper. They're in the same club, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Marzi and Snapper, yeah. They surf <laughs> against each other all the time. I mean, Quinn's a lot older, uh, but, you know, definitely it's always on, you know. Like, we don't have many um, comps for the Open, uh, no? you know. We don't. We should. We're starting to more now. Like, Jay Phillips has actually come up with it. When Snapper's really good and if it's Sunday, we can chuck the 10 up and just kind of have a make-up contest for Open and whoever wants to go in. The council let you do that? Yeah. yeah, That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. And, uh, 
you know, people hate it because we're in rashes mm-hmm. taking waves off people. But, you know, um, you know, it's the way it is. We have a lot of junior comps. Um, one every month, and it, it's there's got so many juniors, it's ridiculous. So you don't have a club round, like Mayor of the Ball Club, yeah. for example, they have like one a month? We don't. Room. No, we do not do that. The only one usually we've been having is the club uh, open club championship. That's when everyone comes out of the woodwork. But that's what you said when the Quinn won. We don't do anything like that down here. And no, I don't think... Don't. No, we no, just have, okay. you know, 10 throughout the year. No, no. So you just have one moment. Yeah, one moment. One grand final. Yeah, that's it. And you're <laughs> the open club champion for one event. That's all we do. Yeah. The other ones are just muck around ones, yeah. Wow, do you go in that? I do go in it. I made the semis. Okay, yep, cool. Yep, I made the semis this year. Who yeah. knocked you out? Uh, probably Joel. I, no, actually, um, mm, good Thomas Cavallo, maybe. Or yeah, oh. it, they're hard. They're hard events. Um, really hard. Sheldon, you okay. know, yeah, big names. You got Reef Doig that here goes in them. Yeah, sick. remember Reef Doig? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Half Balinese surfer, half yeah. snapper surfer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. a couple of good scores in. It was a, a 4.93 for Marlon Harrison. So that is the high point of the heat thus far. Quinny Bruce has had a 4.47. Still yet to see anything of uh, much more, much scoring at all from Brock Cooper. It was Quinn that knocked me out. What am I thinking? He's, oh. he's right in front of me. <laughs> like, it's a, the name staring at me. But I am backing him in this heat. You know, the snapper boys have got one and two at the moment. Things are looking good. I know Jay Phillips is watching. He's had his surf today. And things are looking good. Jay's so invested in the club. You know, he's been president. Always has been, always Always will. has been, always will. Yeah, I think he's our longest running president, you know. Um, I, I, yeah, uh, it's been a while now. Feels like it's been Bruce Lee forever, then it went into... Yeah, Rab. Rab at yeah, the beginning, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, Rab's Ooh, the godfather, isn't he? Yeah. As absolutely. we see, surfer in blue. Good looking wave here. Oh... Getting low, that is Ty Coolis. Nice surfing. Hey, I tell you what, in that um, in the heat before where your boy was out there, I thought you were the one that was taking the board down. The, his back. Did you really? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I, well, I wouldn't have you done it. I saw it was. No, um, but I was ran. It Keen Martin. It was Keon Martin. Yeah. yeah, they've been travelling together. But I like I ran from where I was as fast as I could. I've got a stub toe, <laughs> and I'm like ah. But then Keon, Keon had it. He's like, you want to do it? And I'm like, no, no, you do it. I don't want to run in the sand, but he's faster than me. <laughs> Keon, yeah. Keon got semis up at Avoca. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Jay was um, his caddy there because Jay lost early. And now, yeah, so they, yeah, they're really good mates, yeah. Oh, yeah. sick. Yeah. It's cool, hey, to, you know, obviously you don't want to snap a leg rope and have to do some sort of run around <laughs> and don't. swim in. But when you see your mate on the shore and he's psyching you up and he's saying, you know, only, you know one turn, one turn, yeah, one turn. No. Well, Tian done a toss and flicked the board and it, and it spun and yeah. actually landed right near him. So it was a really good toss. Again, Jay, you're like, Jay had to sneak through a big set, just got through it, and he just got to that big lap. So. To be fair, I thought he should have done the runaround. I was like, oh, really? run at the beach. Yeah, right. I was like, he's blown it. But, but he's, um, he's been suffering a tummy bug. So, okay. yeah, he hasn't had much energy. So, I was, yeah, so that didn't was want impressive. Jog. No, no, no. <laughs> I was very impressed with that effort. He's on the hydro lights this afternoon, I'll tell you what. Oh, wow. Okay, here we go. That is Quinn Bruce. Big turn there. Lip line floater. That's going to be a big number. He slipped to third, so it needed to be there, Rossi. Yeah, I wonder what he's going to get for that. And I wonder what he needs. It can't be much. We haven't got the two scores. He needs a 3.78. Oh, okay. Yeah. has to be a 3.78. Yeah, you'd seem to think so. So what happened, the situation did change because the blue got a score. And uh, now watching a replay... I love that lip line. You know who loves it more? The judges. They generally love that lip line floater. Yeah. Oof. That was a big turn too. It's but turned into... You know, and you know, it was a big turn too. And you know what they're completely different is um, than someone else tried a lip line floater is if you get on top of the lip and float, they hate that. Yep. But if you're on that lip, under the lip and ride that lip, they love because it's way more critical. It's so true. Yeah, if you get on the top of it, you might stop for a second. Yeah. I mean, you have to come through the trough or something. Yeah, yeah you yeah, get penalised. Penalised. Mm. Yeah. This is Marlon Harrison, who's been arguably the surfer of the heat, looking really crisp. Won a handful of events as a, as a little grommet. He did. He, he was on fire. He was winning everything. I remember it was, yeah, your boy was amongst the crew. Uh, Winner Vincent, Jarvis Earl growing up, always battling. Yeah, it came through at a really good time, Marlon Harrison. And right now, he's been pipped in a second position because Quinn Bruce just locked in the highest number of the heat. 4.3, 5.43, sorry. 
Big score. Three minutes. Just a little over three minutes remaining in this one. Tycoolis is the guy. Like, it's, mm. uh, he doesn't need much. Dare say uh, fourth, he might be out of it. But, you know, it's on between Marlin and um, Tycoolis right here. Um, where are they situated, Rossi? Yeah, it looks like there's a bit of distance between all four competitors. And if you had to say one thing about uh, Marlin's performance right now, and, and it's not like you can mix it up an awful lot, but he's had the similar type of wave a lot. He's had that one turn, you know, big turn, but it looks like the judges have sort of, you know, put him at, you're not getting much more than a five at the moment. So if he can try to do something maybe a little bit different, if you get in two turns or maybe even a right closeout. I was thinking right, yeah, exactly. I was thinking trying to find a right. There has not been many. These guys have been hunting them all day. All the natural footers that can do big airs, uh, that's all they want. And they have been rare today, those rights. Absolutely. It's crazy. There was one heat earlier where it was Huey Vaughan and Dom Thomas, and it was so obvious that they're going to look for the rights. <laughs> yeah. Is your name there, Ock? There it is. 1998. How many times is the question? Uh, twice, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Household names there of Australian surf or worldwide surf. Yeah. Such a good comp to win. I mean, everyone just loves it. That march coming to Newcastle and then, you know, they just get drawn back and then you get all of such good winners on the list and then everyone wants to win. It starts becoming prestigious, right? Yep. That's a big float up. But I remember the years, like, growing up in Newcastle, I remember... You know, the, the, the early days when it was on at Newcastle Beach and when Warren Smith got all the world champions together. Yeah. Like, literally, all the world champions. I know. Curran, yourself, you Carol, just Slater, such, Andy. I know. Lane Beachley. It was just incredible. You try to do that now. It's impossible. I think it is. Yeah. Well, it is. And I don't know how Warren did it. He's just such got a, such nice mannerism that you can't really say no to Warren. Well. He takes care. Mm-hmm. You know. Like Martin Beautiful Potter. place to stay, whatever you want, you know. So you always got treated well when yeah, you came here? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, you're obviously from Cronulla as a, yeah. as a grommet, so not too far away not from Not too here. far. You know, um, my mum uh, came, took me up here at, for junior events, and, you know, we used to stay at the... It was before Knowles, it was a travel lodge, and we yep. stayed there, and, you know, um, you know, it was... A lot of events there and you know the major event that i won was there uh on main beach and i think it was like a it was for points for the world championship you know what no i mean way. yeah it was in the australian yeah. leg yeah, yeah. Robert, just a i was pretty young when i won that i was against tom curran in the final i remember yeah yeah no way yeah. here we go big uh, opportunity here for the surfer in white been really quiet on this one off with 20 seconds to go had a shocker you could it's fair to say had a pretty average heat there because Brock Cooper is a lot better than, uh, you know, the 1.86 total that he put together on that one. Ty Cooler still looking for a 4.73. Third priority is his problem. And the clock, it's about to uh, wind on down. And it looks like the Snapper boys will finish in first and second in that one off. So. They will. Everyone's happy. I mean, well, you know. Everyone's a Snapper. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, another great heat as we go to a quick break and come back with more action from down here at Surface 2024 presented by Reflections Holiday Park. Holidays! Iron Man! Outdoors! Iron Man! Whoa! All bars! Suspension! Lights! <laughs> Room for a Can't be a quick Recovery mate. gear! Oh. The light! Hunter Iron Man, mate! Hang <laughs> Hunter Iron Man! <laughs> <laughs> can't do two things at once, oh. <laughs> Back home. The Wilsons always use proper dinner etiquette. Out here, the stick will do just fine. Effortlessly refreshing. Byron Bay Brewery Premium Lager. Go with it. The race course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder. It brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins. Newcastle Racecourse. Home is where the track is.
Welcome to Sydney. Upbeat. Downbeat. Feel its heartbeat. Open spaces. Open arms. A place to feel alive. To feel free. Come feel it all. And feel new. And welcome back to Mirror of the Beach. Four fresh faces out in the lineup. Nathan Cook is in the red. Brent Dorrington is in the blue. Kaylin Orchid is in the white. And Ches Bros is in the green. A couple of throwaway scores. And uh, once again, Ock, a couple of familiar faces for yeah, you on this one. definitely. Brent Dorrington, Brano, uh, local boy on the goalie, is in uh, D-Bar Board Riders. Uh, he's been doing um, QS for a long time, but hasn't done one for a long time. I was surprised to see him down here because I think, uh, oh, you know, I see him in most surfs I have, but I think it was a few months ago we talked about it, and he's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm over it, not doing any events anymore. So something's... Um, <laughs> But it's like you. It's always probably in there yeah, somewhere. Yeah, I know. Something, something happened and he decided to leg it down here. Uh, it's good to see. Has he been surfing? He's ripping. been ripping, yeah. Hasn't always, stopped. Always, yeah, yeah. He actually is taking his kids surfing a lot now, so if it's small, he won't be surfing. He'll be pushing uh -huh. in. I'd nearly say, and it's a huge call, for me, he might be one of the best surfers to never qualify. Yeah, you could be right. I mean... Definitely when it comes to um, charging waves like pipe and, and slabs, you know, he, he is, he, oh, he's a gun. And, Crazy. He, and he rips, you know. He can do airs. He can do it all. So you're right. I, I don't disagree with that, you know. He's a big call because a lot of really good people call. that has never yeah. qualified. But I think he'd be in that conversation. He's so good, so much talent. And, yeah, as you said, too, he charges like a maniac. And, uh, anyway, another... Great performance was Quinn Bruce in that last one. Hey, Quinn, we've got Oki up here, mate. You're, uh, you're Snapper Rocks bro. Yeah, Quinn, Thanks congratulations, <laughs> man. Cheers. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I just told them the story how you won the club championship and uh, kind of, yeah. you know, helped you get down here. So, you yeah. A couple of rounds, you got through a couple of rounds, eh? Yeah, yeah, a couple of tricky heats, but uh, that's what competing's about. It's, um, it's been fun. It's good. There's a little bit of swell, so... Yeah, coming. Looks like it's pumping at home, though, so it's a bit hard to see that on the, I on know, the phone. I don't <laughs> even talk about it. <laughs> Mate, are you enjoying yourself being, uh, you know, back in the, the QS grind, having fun? Yeah, yeah, it's great. I usually be on the job site, so it's good to have a little break and surf heats, what I love doing, so, yeah, really enjoying it. You haven't done it for a while, um, Ock was saying, it's funny. Is it something just that's always in your gut that, you you know, you want to throw on the rash and put on a performance? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you're like at work, watching it on your phone and seeing your mates make heats and stuff and you're always like it's what everyone wants to do so it's good to have another break and do a surf a few heats and you're kind of thinking you know what i'm better than that guy that i'm watching yeah. on the phone I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you doing with yourself uh on the job site um i'm a renderer so rendering up in uh the goldie unreal plenty of yeah. work huh oh heaps too much <laughs> keep that property boom going so you can yeah. get work and yeah. uh after this event what are you thinking of doing um, just super keen to keep surfing. I mean, I'd like to keep competing if the opportunity arises, but just really enjoying surfing at the moment, which is, which is the main thing. Well, it looks like it. You put together a really, uh, really impressive performance. Who are you down here with traveling? Uh, just with my mate Jacob. We're just crashing in my van, just driving around, driving break to break. So it's good fun. Oh, <laughs> sick. Well, uh, good stuff and looking forward to seeing it all happen again tomorrow. Yeah, too easy. Thank you. Well done. Cheers. What a guy. Best surfer at Snapper Rocks at the moment. Well, he Officially. is. Yeah, no, he is. Yeah, <laughs> he is. He's, uh, you know, you're only as good as your last event. And, uh, yeah, he's the club champ. Um, we saw Nathan Cook get a nice wave. We surfed it really good, too. I'd like to see that replay. Here we go. Asking you shall receive. They take care of you down here, don't they, Ock? <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone's going, what are you talking about? <laughs> I am, too. <laughs> I think it was Brent Dorrington got an incredible wave, no, I thought. No, no, no. Okay. There's another one. <laughs> this is a replay of the whole, the whole heat. Like, Please trust don't. Trust me. Don't throw me under the bus like that. This is what I saw. Wow, that's Breno. Gosh, that was a good turn. Did he make it? That's a number. 
Yeah, there you go. And uh, there better be another yeah, one. There better Nathan be another Cook. one, otherwise I'm in big trouble. No, you got it right. A six point six seven. It yeah, did happen. It did happen. Yeah. For a second, I thought you were going crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, I go crazy <laughs> every other day. <laughs> so, yeah, massive number. And I think there's going to be a big score for Brent Dorrington as well. So, great surfing to start this one. And here it is, Ock. Thank you. Uh, here, here it is. It was a nice floater, and I love this. Really threw a lot of spray there. And then it's just all round, like, that board is just throwing spray. Really thick. Uh, good surfing. He's a good surfer, isn't he? Is that classic annoying goofy to draw in a heat? In don't, the, want, don't want to draw him in a heat. And he's so much respect goes into it, because I would use the word annoying, but it's an annoying person to surf against, because he's got so much uh, ammunition, so much power, and he's so fast. He doesn't stop. No, nah, he doesn't. He's a machine, and he'll do it in any con kind of conditions, too. He'll get you in little rights. He'll get you in lefts. Yeah, little rights is scary with yeah. the <laughs> back end. <laughs> bang, that windscreen bang. wiper. Yeah. Throwing spray everywhere. So a big number, 6.67, and Brent Dorrington got himself a 5.33. So blue and red out of the gates quick. Nice ride uh, for the man in white as well, a 4.17. And uh, Shez yet to get a big number on the board. 17 minutes remaining. I believe this is the last seat of the day too, Ock. Last seat, yeah. So we'll uh, get to have a couple of hours off and hopefully be watching Portugal, everyone, like... I uh, was listening to, you know, the post show and, and they're thinking they might run tonight. If not, there's another little pulse coming, so not till Thursday. So it's either going to be today or Thursday. They're going to finish that event down to the quarterfinals of the women, the quarterfinals of the men. So it'll be a one-day event. Uh, surfing's been so good over there last night. Oh, my goodness, like Gabriel Medina was on fire. Who else was on fire? Saw a lot of good surfing. Did Who you watch? Wins Who wins? Who wins? Well, John John's out. Um, so John John was winning. Yeah, I thought he was. <laughs> well, that's why I had my yep. money on. <laughs> no, but uh, unfortunately, yeah, no, I think it's Gabby. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I really do because of Tal. I lost too. Mm. Um, uh, but I'm forgetting. What am I Ethan's doing? Still not in? yeah, Ethan's still in. What am I doing? Not back in the Aussie. Jack, yeah, Jack lost to Gabrielle. So um, Ethan's still in, and and I totally retract everything I said. I believe like Gabby could win, but I want Ethan to win. Yeah, you know who was surfing good too was Jake Marshall. Yeah, he I know he's a good. he's a yeah he's a little smoky and he's powerful. I think Yaga Dora is a smoky too. Crosby Colapinto. Yeah, Pinto was I think surfing he's got Gabrielle, good. has he? Yeah, there's some good heats and um, in the girls. Yes, um, if you're a surfing lover, you're just kind of stoked right now watching this and then watching Portugal. You like you, it to start maybe an field. hour or two early. Yeah, I know. <laughs> maybe a little earlier than 6.30. Yeah, because I, like, you think I'd want to have a sleep after this, but I'm, I get too excited about the call. That's how, that's how frothy I am. I, I can't even have a nap. I just want uh, more surfing. So it's a 50-50 that it's on. It's 50-50, I think, yeah. So don't okay. get too excited, but... Get 50% excited. But be, yeah, <laughs> but be ready. Here we go. Nathan Cook looking on the inside. He needs a little backup. Can he get it? Looks for the air, maybe? Nah. Oof. Gosh, he's surfing fast. That board looks like a skateboard. It looks like a little mayhem or something. It, it looks, looks really good. good. Really good. Yeah, he's surfing really well. It's funny, you know, that second turn that sometimes everyone's too late for and you think, why don't you just try? Because it doesn't matter if you fall. Mm. You probably save time if you fall. So right there, just get up and ride that lip. Probably would have made it, you mm. know. Like, um, don't hesitate because, you know, straighten out. Straighten out is getting you no points and... You know, you might have a 20% chance of making a wild rock and roll floater, but if you make it, you've, you know, you've got to score. You score. So, yeah. why not? Jess Starling, our uh, fellow commentator, said uh, her, him and Georgie Pitter had a massive heat down in the vocal last week, sharing seven and eights, you know, back and forth. They said they were ripping. So, yeah, Cookie's in a bit of form right now. Nice quick way there for Chez Boys. Not going to be a massive number. Maybe in the 80s. Where they love big, long floaters. <laughs> we were getting big scores. That's Sanger. Yeah, yeah, Sanger invented that. Michael Sainsbury. From, no. from Evoca. Mm. Yeah. Mark Sainsbury. Did I say Michael? I think you did. Yeah, sorry, right. sorry about that, Mark Sainsbury. Yeah, the, the, so he actually invented the floater. He did? That's crazy. I know. Just imagine. Mm. Here we go. So from White. Nice looking section. Just a little late on that one. And uh, everything sort of went out the window with the timing on that and nothing. 
of uh, substance will be locked in. 2.93 for the last of red. Yeah. As we see a big set rolling on through. Yeah, big thanks to Warren Smith, though, for having me again. Like, uh, I was down here. I think I saw you. Uh, we done, had a gig at uh, Dixon Park Surf Club. Samba, 20th birthday. 20th birthday for Samba. That's right. And I came down, and um, I talked to Warren. And I was like, oh, I'm pretty keen to come down and commentate. He's like, if you want to, you can. And, and then I thought nothing off it. But he rang me, um, you know, about a month ago. And he's like, if you want to, you're on. And I'm like, yeah, I'm coming. Um, yeah, got That's me a so nice cool. place to stay. And, yeah. That's unreal. So you love doing the commentary stuff. Because, of course, you did the Usher Carpa. I did, yeah. And I do like commentary. You know, I actually talked to Joe Trappell the other day in Hawaii. And um, I was like, he's like, you're coming to Bells? And, like, you know for a bit of guest commentary maybe you know I did go down last year but I mm. competed mm. Yeah, against Curran I didn't really commentate because we'd done a heritage heat but he said um, I was keen on some guest commentary and they said WSL were keen because I love it but I don't think I'll go because um, I'm a bit busy yeah but anyway was that because you're the, the face of Kia um. <laughs> <laughs> Kia's been great <laughs> though, I mean I, we shouldn't really it's, we've got a different car sponsor here so excuse me for that but yeah, I was stoked um, to be in that ad with all the legends. And So what is taking up the most of your time nowadays? Yeah, well, I have surf experiences that I do too. Uh -huh. Like, for, So if someone books a place through Airbnb on the Gold Coast, experiences pop up you can do. I meet them at Kira Surf. Um, I suss out them and their level, and, um, and they'll take them surfing accordingly. It's great when they can surf because I, I get to surf too. I'll surf like, usually at D-Bar off the wall or snapper um, or rainbow with them if um, it just depend on their level but if they can surf good I can get on their inside and you know pretend I'm going to wave and, and, and pass it over to them so they can usually get a, a wave that they usually probably wouldn't get you no, know and they love it you know I like meeting new people I love doing it um, so I do that doesn't keep me super busy but you know um, how often does that happen though oh, it might happen once or twice a week um, a sometimes lot. Yeah, it is a, it is a, a bit. I Isn't mean, that funny that it's a new um, way of you know making an earn? Yeah, I know. It, it's funny. Like, it, <laughs> I love doing it. And it was like, it's kind of WSL Incorporated too. Uh, it, it was, um, I've been doing it for a few years. And I like it. I think Jamie O'Brien does it in Hawaii yeah. now. Um, he does it with Turtle Bay. Yeah, I think that's might be through Airbnb too. I'm not too sure. But anyway, it's good. Um, Apart from that, you know, just lots of kids to, you know, my my partner just does most of the, uh, you heavy know, most lifting. of the heavy lifting. But I do like, like you know, um, you know, I, I love the kids and you see the little ones. You know, we've got a lot. There's nine between us, but those two little ones, wow, we, they're a, a, a cyclone. In just ha, what's the youngest? Four. Wow. Yeah, he's bit. Yeah, his nickname's Bam Bam. Yep. He can mess some stuff up big well. time. Yeah, yeah. If he doesn't get his own way, you'll know about it. Has but he got he's so strength? cute. Yeah, he's a mini me. He's got my little <laughs> white. He's got my little tree trunk legs, and he's like got my coloured eyes, and he's got attitude, man. Wow. <laughs> big time. So, how are you surfing four hours a session at Snapper? Yeah, well, uh, Jess doesn't particularly like that, but um, <laughs> maybe four minutes. Jess, here and there. Jess has been getting waves. Jess surfed today and yesterday. The waves are pumping, so she's getting hers back. Kids go to kindy. Yep. Um, yeah, no, just three days a week. Um, Jasper's five. He's in his first year of school. Yep. So, but um, yeah, kindy three days a week, so we can surf together on those days, and we usually try to. Jess is pretty busy. She's got a a clothing um, yep. business that she does at markets. Like What's that? Organic cotton. It's called Designs by Dust. So it's uh, really comfy, light dresses um, and shirts that you can wear. Uh, yeah, and it's all... She makes them by... Um, she makes the... But she cuts and sews and dyes them all by herself. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, so there's some, there's some markets that will only take people that do that kind of stuff, you know, kind of organic yep. stuff. And she does markets at Coolangatta and... Um, or down at Kingscliff, Salt, and like up at Broad Beach, and um, yeah, so she's busy making those dresses. So she does that, and 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 manages my yeah. nine kids. Like it's, she's a superwoman. She really is. <laughs> and you're down at Merida for the week doing. And she the surfs commentary. good too. Hey, she surfs good. Like <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, epic. Here we go. Nine minutes remaining. Brent Dorrington up and riding on his backhand. Big snap there. If he gets another one in, this is a huge number. Oh, that was good. Can Through you ride out, ride out? Oh. Get down. 
he did it. He did really well. I thought he actually was going to fall off. He did. It looked section. like he. Yeah, hey, Rossi, it's true. He looked like he went too far out the back. Yep. And it was powerful. Let's look at it. How good's a roll in? Roll in's a great look. Nice turn here. And look at this. He jams it so hard that he almost went out the back. But what happened was it was a double lip and it was thick. So it pushed him back in. That was well I, done. That was one of my favourite turns of the day, funny enough. Um, I love the check turn going into it as well. That was brilliant surfing from uh, Renault. Looking for a 4.28 to move up into the lead there. So he will get that number. And uh, there it is, a 5.17. So Cookie has been moved into second spot. The judges have seen a lot of rides today. And I don't really think they saw what I saw or what we saw. That kind of double lip bang. They, you know, I, I was going six. One seven, maybe. Uh, you think it was just under Cookie's first long left? Mm. You got to sort of yeah. guess, compare the you two. You do, yeah, you do. I, that was a long time ago, though. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. And uh, good to see the conditions have yeah. held out today. You know, we did get the the wind change maybe an hour or two ago, but it hasn't actually affected it anything like it did yesterday. Nah. Yesterday got much worse. It did. But today it's still. Look at that. What a shot. Here we go. Big opportunity here for the surfer in green. Nice turn. Has he gone back too far? No, this, he's surfed that wave really well there. Chess boys. That's going to be a good number. I don't think it'll be the 6.87, but it's going to be, you know, good enough to get him back in the heat. If yeah. you give him a four and a half, then he's, you know, only looking for maybe a six. Yeah. High five. Yep. Back in the heat for sure. I thought, nice, he went too, I thought he went too far back there. And he just made it, didn't he? Yep. He I, surprised me. I like it when that happens, when, you know, that intricate, just too far and you just make it around. That's a way, I, I, you know, I'd always, I always like to surf. Just fade enough where you can just make it just to that uh, snap right next to that um, wash, you know. and Really tricky in conditions like timing. this. That are oh, tricky. For, hard to predict. Yeah, tricky to do it out there. That was good surfing. 4.37. So no, that's not enough. Well, he wanted more. But, uh, look, we didn't think it was the you know the highest six required. The good news, only looking for a 5.24. That is. Not much of a tall order. So surfers in third and fourth both looking for mid-range fives with six minutes remaining. But uh, the danger man is definitely in red, looking to ditch a 2.93. So once uh, Nick Cook does that, the situation is going to get blown out for uh, surfers in third and fourth position. This is the final heat of the day. Early knockoff, off. Yeah, we have had early knockoffs. It's been nice. You're going to have a paddle? Well, for a jog? Uh, so you see my toe, like, I'm just... What'd you do to it? I stubbed it. I like I, I, Today? Yesterday. Okay, and it's a real deep one, like it, because I've stubbed my toe that many times. The skin's that thick that you can't peel it back to see how bad it is, and it's bad. Um, like and if not I surfing s bad. Well, it just a flap. I don't know. Actually, the flaps that thick. It might. You know, when you when it flaps around, it just really yep. hurts, man. Like it's like. Could you glue it back? I could get glue out, but I don't know now if it's going to get infected or not because I couldn't clean it. Like it was just too thick, and I've got like I. Because I cut myself and everything so much, I have like those alcohol, alcohol swabs. Yep. And I couldn't get in there that far, so I just put so many band aids on it. I've got 20 band aids on it because I could, didn't want to like ruin the sheets with blood. It was bleeding mummified everywhere. It. So I mummified it so there's no blood. And now I don't know what's next. <laughs> I don't know what so to maybe do. Not a surf. Maybe not a surf. I'm, if I don't surf for a couple of days, maybe it might just grow back in yeah. together, you know what I mean? Gel yeah. back together. Um, Otherwise, I don't know what to do. Anyway. Here we go. An opportunity here. Whoa, he's gone over, steered it. How's the drive he got out of that turn? He's got so much speed. Yeah, I guess he didn't expect it. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's pretty powerful out there. Yeah, looking for a 5.24. Not going to be the number, as we see Nick Cook on the inside of the surfer in white there. Or Nathan, Nathan Cook, sorry. Yeah, Nathan, he wants to better a score, and there's not a whole lot of time, and these guys don't need much, so scary times for him. He's sitting with White, needs the 544, but there's another person out there, and it's green, mm -hmm. needing slightly lower. So you can't sit on two people, Rossi. <laughs> you can hope the winner, <laughs> for some reason, sits on him, though. Have you ever teamed up in a heat? To sneak on by, surf with like one of your friends? No, or? not really. Um, 
Kind of always backfires. Yeah. They didn't have priority back when I was there before. I was over at the ISA Games over in yeah. uh, Puerto Rico. Oh, were you? And um, there was a bit of that going on. Was there? Yeah, there was. And why wouldn't you? Yeah, well, like yeah. Brazil needed to sort of... Oh, okay. They needed to win. So if, if Gabriel didn't win that event, he wouldn't have been in the Olympics? So How if does the, that work? If the male... If the Brazilian male team didn't win yeah. the total point score... Oh, total points. They would, no, he wouldn't have been. He wouldn't have been in. No, and, f- and France was so close because France were just going... They were doing really well. Yeah. Like Jean Derue and... Um, yeah. There was a few of Marco Mignor, as we see, Brent Dorrington. Um, that's how you snap a board, usually. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, th- th- those guys were really close. So the funny thing was, though, if Brazil won the... Um, the total point score for the males. They actually had the same scenario on the women's as oh, well. They? And they got it, they won both. So the thing about it though, that was the, the talk, and I don't officially know, but it was always sort of mentioned over there. So if they did get the points, then it was out of whoever finished higher, Gabriel or Yago, in the event, then they would get that third spot. But it was Gabriel that beat Yago. Oh, so yeah, right. So that's what the. That's what oh, everyone was So there was, was a contest in a contest. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, that is incredible. So first it was actually watching Felipe not throw it and actually lock in because he had to do it for his, his country to get them an extra spot. Even in the women's, that was a sad one. Is Felipe doing the Olympics? Well, I don't know, but right yeah. now he's qualified. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, know exactly yeah. the situation. But yeah. in the women's, this was a tough one, so... The Aussie girls, Sally Fitzgibbon obviously won, right? She won the... But they, the, the Australian team didn't win the total points. So she didn't get a spot? No, because Brazil, they got maybe... Is it Tatiana got second and, okay, okay. and Luana yeah, Silva? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, they, yeah. yeah, Sally missed out by 35 points, which is... She surfed a million heats, won the contest, didn't get the spot. No. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so that was a tough I one. I just don't understand it. I mean, they're trying to qualify for Chopu, but it's that wave over there. There's nothing like Chopu. I don't get it. Mm. I mean, they could have that contest at Chopu because there's nothing going on at Chopu. The waves might be three, four foot for two weeks. At least they're surfing a wave that resembles Chopu if it's not big. I'm I mean, not defending them, but if they had that event at Chopu, it would go for three years because they had yeah, 15 right. repetitions. charges. <laughs> it would just keep going. No, so that, no they, you can't they, do that. They no, double no, bank no. it, triple yeah, bank yeah, it. Yeah, right. No, you can't do that. No. Yeah. Anyway, a minute to go on this one. Anyway. And okay. <laughs> Brent Dorrington out in lead. Still uh, Nathan Cook and sitting in second position, holding off Ches Boys and Kalen Orchid. As we see, a little bit of action. 45 seconds remaining. It's funny to say, Cookie looks as though he's had something better than a 293 as a backup, but he hasn't. He hasn't, no. He opened up with that 6.67 in the first Oh, hang on, is he going to get away with it? He's a big section. Oof. Maybe not. Um, that's, we've got to see that again. Did he get another turn in? Because 524, that is close, Rossi. I, I mean, I'd like to see if he did get a first turn because I don't know if it's going to be enough, just that last turn. It was good, though. It nearly and I've like been it. wrong a lot of times during this event, and it's only the second day in. I hate to say it, but it nearly looked like that one that he probably should have claimed it. <laughs> he, probably yeah. should, he probably should have put up his arms. Four like, seconds. Someone else is up and riding. Oof, that was a big turn. That uh, was Kalen Orchid. So the, uh, the score we're waiting to see is uh, Chez Boys. It's going to be... Uh, going to be tight. So looking for a pretty big number as we check out the replay. It was just the one turn, Ock. Just the one turn. We needed something earlier, I think. Some sort of check turn. Then that. Yeah. Then we've probably got a... Well, there it is. A 4.7. Yeah, we were right for once. I was right, yeah. Yeah, I was close. Anything beforehand? A little check? Obviously, the wave didn't give him the opportunity, but... Uh, yeah, if it was a bigger wave, same turn, like a much bigger wave, I reckon, he could have, but uh, yeah... For today's standards, that was a medium-sized wave. It was funny because my son, same thing happened. Jay got, um, after he broke his leash, he got out there and, and done one turn, but it was a, it, the wave was like twice the size. It was a much bigger wave. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that was a great day again. Uh, love commentating. You know, thanks to Warren Smith for having me. Going to be back tomorrow. Rossi, how are you feeling? Well, good. It's only the second day of competition, so we've got, we've got a lot to go. You know, we have. Well, it's great that this swell's coming from the north, and then it, it'll stick around enough. You're the local. To prove me if I'm not right, but um, uh, or if I'm wrong. Sorry, but then we're getting a 
fairly substantial south swell yeah, so on I Wednesday. Think, yeah. On, yeah, on Wednesday, but I think it really pumps up on Friday. Fr- oh, sorry, yeah, Friday. Friday okay. kicks in. On, yeah, so it's going to be a lot different to what we're seeing today. Yeah, it'd be more rights, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it should be really fun. Yeah, so two swells in one, two swells in one um, window. We've got to be happy with that. Absolutely. So uh, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy the show. And we'll, we'll be back tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock to bring you all the live action. We'll see you then. Surfest 2024 presented by Reflections Holiday Parks. Have a good arby. Welcome to Sydney, a place to feel alive, to feel free, come feel it all and feel new. Adam thought he'd never get Sarah camping. How wrong you were, Adam. course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder it brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins newcastle race course home is where the track is the race course is not just a place to watch the horses thunder it brings generations together to share memories and experiences that are close to our hearts and runs in our veins newcastle race course home is where the track is Welcome to Sydney.